Chapter 1151 Combination Ability Hermit's injured arm didn't recover the entire time. In fact, Hermit was good at healing. He was the one who had previously treated Buzz's injuries. Nevertheless, his injuries had yet to recover. Although the bleeding from his severed arm wasn't fast, the drops of blood slowly dripped to the ground. Clearly, it hadn't healed. Hermit felt as though a strange force was constantly corroding his wound, preventing it from healing itself. He didn't dare escape because of the existence of this power. Hermit had a vague feeling that the force was like a time bomb that could explode at any moment. Although few people had seen Hermit's true appearance, a person with a severed arm standing at the door of the lounge and bleeding profusely attracted the attention of many students. The news quickly reached the Cape family. Buzz's heart skipped a beat when he heard that, and his expression changed drastically. He hurriedly rushed to school. He didn't dare go to the lounge directly. Instead, he checked the situation through the surveillance cameras and watched the previous surveillance footage. After he had seen everything, the shock in his heart was unimaginable. Ordinary students didn't know who Hermit was or what kind of existence he was, but Buzz knew very well. Despite being the powerful and terrifying Hermit, the young man didn't even move his hand. Just by looking at Hermit, he had blasted off one of Hermit's arms, forcing him to obediently stand at the door as a guard. What terrifying strength was this? Due to Clown Mask being at the terror grade, ordinary humans couldn't see it, much less the recording. Therefore, Buzz didn't see Clown Mask appear. All he saw was Hermit's arm suddenly explode for no reason. Who is he? Ming Xiao actually has such a teacher? It's no wonder he could rapidly rise in just a few years. Who is this person? He definitely didn't contract a guardian. He doesn't look like he is fused with a guardian or dimensional creature. After the observation, the clothes on Buzz's back were drenched. He was already somewhat glad that Ming Xiao had injured him, and not the other way around. If he had angered such an existence, he didn't know what the outcome would have been. Just the thought of a person that even Hermit didn't dare disobey was terrifying. Thankfully, Beryl has hit it off with that person. He shouldn't make things difficult for our Kate family, right? Buzz didn't dare be negligent. He immediately got someone to seal the area near the lounge, preventing students and teachers from going there. Of course, he stayed far away and pretended not to know anything. Beryl stood in the lounge, feeling uneasy. She couldn't sit or stand. Her palms were sweaty from nervousness. In her eyes, Ming Xiao was already an extremely powerful existence. Hermit was an extremely terrifying expert, but in front of this young man, who looked to be in his twenties, they didn't seem as grandiose as she imagined. So Professor Ming actually has such a powerful coach. It's no wonder he's so strong. However, this person doesn't look much older than Professor Ming. Could it be that he's actually an old monster that's over a hundred years old despite looking young? That's right. That must be it. Beryl thought to herself. Zhou Wen ignored Beryl as he studied his essence energy art. Previously, he had circulated the small perfection of wisdom, God-fiend era, and heaven-opening scripture of the highest elder at the same time. The heaven-opening scripture of the highest elder had always taken on a supportive role, so there weren't many changes. However, when Zhou Wen used Great Brahma and Clown Mask at the same time, there was an unexpected change. Zhou Wen kept using Great Brahma to lock onto the micro crystal. At the same time, he used Clown Mask's spatial teleportation ability to teleport the micro crystal behind Hermit. The powers of Great Brahma and Clown Mask acted on the micro crystal at the same time, producing a special effect. Even Zhou Wen never expected the two powers to combine. After Clown Mask's spatial ability combined with Great Brahma's karmic synth flames, it formed a spatial coordinate on the injured Hermit's arm wound. Zhou Wen could directly teleport his powers there without any intermediate processes. However, the only power that could teleport there was Brahma's karmics and flames, nothing else. Even so, it was already extremely useful. As long as he was hit by Zhou Wen's strike and his coordinates marked, the subsequent karmics and flames could be acted on his wounds until he died. Zhou Wen was experimenting to see if there was any possibility of further fusion between Clown Mask and Great Brahma. If they could cooperate further, they might be able to produce even more terrifying powers. Just as Zhou Wen was pondering over it, Ming Xiao's body suddenly emitted a powerful sword intent fluctuation. Furthermore, his body began to undergo a strange transformation. His skin, that was originally like milky white jade, became even more crystalline. A strange energy fluctuation gradually spread from his body. Slowly, Ming Xiao's body became more and more transparent before disappearing from sight. The sword intent also vanished. Eh! Zhou Wen looked in surprise at the spot where Ming Xiao had vanished. He could sense that Ming Xiao had reached the stage of terror transformation, but even so, Zhou Wen should have been able to see him with his Wheel of Destiny activated. Strangely, Zhou Wen couldn't see Ming Xiao. He seemed to have really vanished. However, Ming Xiao soon appeared in his vision again. At that moment, 
Ming Shou had returned to his normal human form. He was even more normal than before. Coach, this is your wife, right? Ma'am is really amazing. She really enlightened me with one sentence. I finally understood the profundity of time and completely absorbed the mythical serum. If it wasn't for her, I don't know when I would have been able to completely absorb it. Coach is indeed a coach. Not only is he strong himself, but even his wife is so strong. Ming Xiao said excitedly. Just as Zhou Wen was about to explain, Tsukuyami smiled and handed a sword to Ming Xiao. Take this as a gift from me then. Thank you, ma'am. Ming Xiao happily received the sword. He didn't really think that the sword was good, but he was just happy. However, when he truly experienced the power of the sword in the future, he would realize how precious it was. Ming Xiao, you have to thank this student. She took a huge risk to inform you. Zhou Wen hurriedly changed the topic, unwilling to harp on this matter. Ming Xiao looked at Beryl in puzzlement, unsure what had happened. Zhou Wen recounted what had happened. After Ming Xiao heard that, he thanked Beryl. As for Hermit, Ming Xiao didn't do anything to him. Instead, after getting Zhou Wen's permission, he released him. Zhou Wen could roughly guess what Ming Xiao was thinking, so he didn't ask further. However, after seeing Ming Xiao, he missed his friends and family even more. Looking at Tsukuyami, Zhou Wen gritted his teeth and decided to take her back to Luoyang. Chapter 1152 Divorce is very common nowadays. In the family in Luoyang, a guard reported to Ntianzua in the study. Overseer, Miss Yu has been cooped up in her room the entire day. She is not responding to Nani Yu at all. Madam isn't home, so Nani Yu is afraid something will happen. Overseer, she would like to consult you on what to do. Why isn't she eating again? Didn't I tell you that she likes desserts? And Tianzua said as he got up. Nani Yu said that she bought all the best desserts in Luoyang and even hired the best dessert chefs. However, Miss Yu won't eat anything. She didn't eat anything last night either, much less come out today, the guard said. She hasn't eaten anything since last night. How can she? As Ntienzwa spoke, he walked out of the study and quickly walked towards Yer's yard. Yer, why didn't you eat today? Is the food at home not to your liking? Shall I take you out to eat? Ntienzwa knocked on the door and said gently, I'm not hungry. I don't want to eat. The door creaked open and a girl about seven or eight years old walked out. She was as beautiful as a doll but her expression was cold. It didn't look like an expression a girl her age should have. You have to eat a little even if you don't want to. You are still growing, so you have to eat more. If you are sick of Luoyang's desserts, I'll invite the famous dessert masters from the south over. They will make desserts that will be more delicious. And Tianzua said with a smile. Yer shook her head. Uncle, I'm really not hungry. I don't want to eat. How can you not be hungry? Wait in the living room. Uncle will personally cook something delicious for you. My signature dish. I guarantee you that you will like it. And Tianzua said as he headed for the kitchen. Yer sat on the sofa in the living room and held her chin in boredom. Although the family's life was very comfortable and everyone treated her well, she still liked the life of adventuring with Zhou Wen. Suddenly, a figure flashed and two figures appeared in the living room. They were Zhou Wen and Tsukuyami. Zhou Wen really couldn't shake off Tsukuyami, but seeing that she wasn't a dimensional creature that killed at will, after much hesitation, he took her back to Luoyang. As he didn't know why the Yan family had created a fake Zhou Wen, Zhou Wen didn't directly walk through the main door. He decided to teleport to the spot where he had eaten with Ouyang Lan to see if he could bump into her. After completing the teleport, he didn't see Ouyang Lan. Instead, he saw Yer sitting on the sofa in a daze. Although Yer was much older than before, he could still make out her former appearance. Furthermore, she had a unique aura that others couldn't sense. Zhou Wen had spent a lot of time with Yer, so he was very familiar with her unique aura. When Yer saw Zhou Wen, she was first taken aback before she jumped up from the sofa in pleasant surprise and threw herself into Zhou Wen's arms. You said you would take care of me, Yer said angrily before opening her mouth and biting Zhou Wen's neck. Zhou Wen felt a pain in his neck, but he didn't dodge. However, Yer didn't really want to injure him. All she did was leave behind teeth mark without tearing his skin. It wasn't what I wanted either, but I was locked up by someone else. I couldn't come back to find you even if I wanted. Zhou Wen explained. Who was it? Yer bit her lip and asked. We'll talk about that later. Zhou Wen stroked Yer's head. You've grown taller and grown up. you become even more beautiful and adorable. Yer narrowed her eyes like a kitten and leaned her hair on Zhou Wen's hand. She rubbed it gently as though she enjoyed his touch. Your uncle has made you. And Tianzua walked in with a bowl of piping hot glutinous rice balls. He was wearing a white shirt and military pants. He also wore an apron and was covered in flour. There was even a pinch of flour at the tip of his nose. 
he looked completely different from his usual dignified appearance. However, when he saw Zhou when hugging her, the gentleness on his face immediately vanished as though he had instantly returned to the cold and arrogant overseer in. However, he was wearing an apron and holding a bowl. His face was covered in flour, and his bearing was rather inferior to his usual self. He didn't look as arrogant as he usually was. Seeing Zhou when turn his head, and Tianzhua immediately pulled off his apron and threw it at the guard beside him. He placed the bowl of glutinous rice balls on the table beside him, and wiped his face. His expression instantly turned arrogant and cold. When did you return? And Tianzhua asked Zhou Wen coldly. Just. Zhou Wen answered. And Tianzhua said coldly. Since you're back, stay at home for the next few days, and don't cause trouble. With that said, and Tianzhua glanced at Yer, who was in Zhou Wen's arms with a smile on her face. He turned around and left. When he reached the door, he paused for a moment and said, Yer hasn't eaten much in the past two days. I prepared a bowl of glutinous rice balls for her in the kitchen. Give it to her. To throw a child at home and be away for so long without returning. Aren't you afraid the child will go bad? With that said, and Tianzhua walked out of the living room without looking back. After leaving the living room, and Tianzhua instructed the guards beside him. Give Sheng a message. Tell him that the person is back. Does the order need to be transmitted? The guard asked. There's no need. He knows what to do. And Tianzhua took a few steps and seemed to recall something. He said to the guard beside him. Go to the kitchen and get a cup of freshly squeezed orange juice for you. Heat it to 43 degrees. Yes, overseer. The guard accepted the order and left. Zhou Wen sat on the sofa and watched Yer eat the glutinous rice balls. Having not seen her for five years, Yer's language skills had improved significantly. Although she still didn't like to speak, her occasional words weren't as simple and stiff as before. Zhou Wen could also tell that Yer's personality had become more cheerful. Clearly, the Yen family had taken good care of her in the past five years. Yer had a good appetite perhaps due to Zhou Wen's return. She quickly finished the bowl of glutinous rice balls and licked her lips as though she hadn't had enough. She felt that the glutinous rice balls today were especially delicious. With Zhou Wen by her side, Yer didn't wish to speak. As long as she was by Zhou Wen's side, she felt at ease and didn't need to say much. However, Yer's gaze at Tsukuyami seemed to carry some hostility. She's Tsukuyami, my friend. This is Yer, who's no different from my sister. Zhou Wen hurriedly introduced the two of them to prevent any trouble. I'm not an ordinary friend. I'm Zhou Wen's wife. Tsukuyami deliberately emphasized her identity, as she said with a smile. Divorce is very common nowadays, Yer said expressionlessly. Chapter 1153 Battling the Planet Devourer Again Their gazes met in the air as those sparks were flying. Young Master One, you're back. And Shung came in at the right time, interrupting Tsukuyami, and Yer's staring showdown. Ah, Shung. Zhou Wen was overjoyed. On the one hand, it was a long-awaited reunion, but on the other hand, he was grateful for Nsheng's timely arrival. If they were to really fight, Zhou Wen was afraid that Luoyang would be reduced to ruins. He got Nsheng to sit down and have a chat, but Zhou Wen didn't ask about the fake Zhou Wen. Nsheng didn't say anything about him either. All he did was talk about his family. At night, just before Zhou Wen went to sleep, he found a bookshelf in his room. Zhou Wen pulled out a book to take a look. It recorded a lot of information that Zhou Wen wanted to know. And Sheng had secretly sent him a message about the book. After some reading, Zhou Wen roughly knew why the Yan family had a fake Zhou Wen. After Zhou Wen had been imprisoned, Wang Mingyuan secretly visited the Yan family and told them that Zhou Wen would go missing for five years. He got them to create a fake Zhou Wen in these five years to replace Zhou Wen. They were not to let others discover any flaws. However, there were no records of the person impersonating Zhou Wen. How did teacher know that I would escape in five years? However, Wang Mingyuan was now in the dimension, so his guesses were useless. The book contained information on another thing that Zhou Wen wanted to know. Oh Yanglan had been investigating the former principal's expedition team for the past five years. She had made some discoveries some time ago, and Oh Yanglan had already rushed to Netherworld City. She wanted to find Chu He, who was trapped there. She wanted to confirm some of her guesses. If those guesses were confirmed, the disappearance of the expedition team was very likely related to the trajectory holy temple of the six holy temples. Zhou Wen was shocked when he found out that Ouyang Lan had gone to Netherworld City. Ignoring the fact that there were breakout dimensional creatures everywhere outside, Netherworld City itself was an extremely terrifying place. It wasn't easy to enter and come out alive. I've told you about the situation in Netherworld City. You should know how dangerous it is. Why didn't you stop Sis Lan? Zhou Wen sent a message to Nsheng. Soon and Shun replied, You know Madam's temper. Even Overseer couldn't change her mind. However, you don't have to worry too much. 
Overseer sent many experts from the Sunset Army to accompany her. If Netherworld City were to be explored, Madam wouldn't be the one entering personally. With the information you gave, there shouldn't be much danger. I'm just afraid that the present Netherworld City is different from the past. Joe knew that Netherworld City wasn't simple. If he could suffer all the punishments, he would be able to see the real Netherworld City. What do you mean? And Shung asked in puzzlement. Joe Wen told and Shung what City Lord Netherworld had said. And Shung heaved a sigh of relief when he heard that. Don't worry. No one among them can withstand all the punishments. Nothing will happen. And Shung explained the current situation of the Federation to Zhou Wen. It was similar to what Zhou Wen had previously gathered. Earth could now be divided into five factions. The Federation President and some of his supporters, the League of Guardians, the Holy Spirit Association, the Overseas Factions, and the local wealthy families like the Infamily. There were also some powerful freelance hunters, among which some were very powerful existences. However, compared to these large factions, an individual strength was still relatively weak. The six hero families didn't decline, nor were they completely controlled by the League of Guardians. Their branches extended into the various factions. Even if one side collapsed, the six hero families wouldn't be completely destroyed. In fact, there were many members of the six families in the League of Guardians. Although the Zhang family nominally objected to their family members entering the League of Guardians, there were still some Zhang family members who joined the League of Guardians. No one knew if those people had really been expelled from the Zhang family. This is the foundation of a large family. As long as their model for survival isn't destroyed, as long as the supply chain for resources persists, it doesn't matter even if a few geniuses and powerhouses die. They have the ability to create more geniuses and powerhouses. All they need is time, Ashen said. Shouwen knew that Ashen was right. The reason the six families were strong wasn't because a particular genius was strong, but because they already had a complete model for the family's survival. They could obtain endless resources and nurture all sorts of geniuses. To overthrow such a family, killing a few geniuses and powerhouses was useless. Unless the entire family was thrown into a situation of certain doom, they would eventually rise again. Just like the Kate family, many geniuses had died because of Zhou Wen, but they remained standing. According to Ensheng, the antelope and chick were by the fake Zhou Wen's side. Only by doing so could they fool the people who were paying attention to Zhou Wen. Therefore, they weren't in the family, but guarding Chess Mountain with a fake Zhou Wen. After chatting with Ensheng, Zhou Wen took out his mysterious phone and entered the game again. Snow Valley's goo mother hadn't respawned. Zhou Wen didn't choose to head to the Sapphire Sky either. Instead, he chose to head to the Endless Sea of Stars dungeon to see if he could kill the planet devourer. He also farmed the Constellation Sea, but he still failed to obtain the final 28 Lunar Mansion skill. After leaving the range of the Constellation Sea, Zhou Wen summoned Banana Fairy and Demonic Neonate. Not long after, he sent spatial fluctuations as the gigantic planet devourer appeared above them. The jellyfish-like planet devourer emitted intense starlight, but ordinary people couldn't see it. In its body, there was a vortex that resembled a black hole. Everything that approached it was sucked into the black hole. The moment the planet devourer descended, the terrifying suction force descended. Banana Fairy directly used the supreme in wind at the planet devourer. With the augmentation of three realms best wind, this surge was extremely terrifying. However, when the supreme in wind reached the planet devourer, it was sucked in by the black hole in its body. Banana Fairy fanned out supreme yawn wind next, but the outcome was the same. They were all sucked into the black hole. Banana Fairy frowned slightly. The fan in her hand which was transformed from the banana leaf showed a half in and half yang state. At the instant she fanned at the planet devourer, in and yang combined into one, transforming into boundless wind that swept towards the planet devourer. Chapter 1154 Singularity Universe Boundless wind swept toward the planet devourer, but it was unable to blow it away. Its body was like a black hole. No matter what kind of force surged at it, it would be swallowed into the black hole. This had nothing to do with the strength of the force. This was the characteristic of the planet devourer. Joan felt a headache come on. A dimensional creature with a black hole body couldn't be injured by typical forces. It would be useless no matter how powerful the attack was. No wonder it can devour planets. Joan could only teleport with Banana Fairy to dodge the planet devourer's suction as he pondered over a solution to kill it. The planet devourer was also spatially powerful. It constantly teleported with Joan, hoping to devour him. Thankfully, Joan, who was wearing clown mask, could teleport infinitely. The planet devourer couldn't catch up to him. With a thought, Joan teleported to a tiny planet. After the planet devourer teleported over, it devoured the tiny planet. Joan took this opportunity to teleport to another tiny planet. Joan thought that since the planet devourer was a dimensional creature, surely it couldn't devour matter indefinitely. Therefore, 
if he could use these small planets to feed it, he might have a chance of finishing it off. However, Zhou Wen soon realized that his idea was ridiculously wrong. After the planet devourer devoured the tiny planet, not only did it not show any signs of being satiated, but the range and suction force of the black hole increased. Only then did Zhou Wen realize that he was backwards in his thinking. The more matter the planet devourer devoured, the stronger it became. It didn't seem like satiation was possible. Since I can't satiate it, I'll starve it to death. Teleportation required a large amount of essence energy. With the massive size of the planet devourer, the energy expended from teleportation was even more terrifying. After repeated teleportations, Joe Wen could clearly sense that the planet devourer's black hole had weakened significantly. The suction range and strength were shrinking. It's indeed effective. Joe Wen was delighted as he continued wandering the endless sea of stars with the planet devourer. The planet devourer had expended quite a bit of energy. It suddenly stopped chasing after Zhou Wen and instead rushed towards a small, nearby planet. Clearly, it wanted to devour the small planet to replenish its energy. Zhou Wen naturally couldn't let it do as it wished. He teleported to the tiny planet. The clown mask on his face emitted a strange aura as the surrounding space distorted. Zhou Wen pressed his palm on the tiny planet, hoping to teleport it away. Unfortunately, he quickly realized that although the clown mask was powerful spatially, it was still too difficult to teleport a small planet far away. Before Zhou Wen could successfully teleport the tiny planet, the planet devourer had already devoured it. All Zhou Wen could do was teleport away. It doesn't seem realistic to forcefully teleport planets away, but what if I use the teleportation ability of the sky-stealing sun-swapping art? Zhou Wen didn't give up on his plan as he thought of a way to achieve his goal. Zhou Wen circulated the sky-stealing sun-swapping art and engraved it on the Wheel of Destiny. It was a point, the universe's singularity. The singularity was the beginning of the universe as well as the eternity of the universe. It looked like a point, but inside, it seemed to be a pocket universe with countless stars revolving. Back when Zhou Wen condensed the singularity life soul, he had already begun advancing to the mythical stage. He hadn't had much time to study the ability of this life soul then. After being trapped for five years, his mind had experienced more than a hundred years. Over the long years, Zhou Wen had gained a deep understanding of the sky stealing sun swapping art and singularity. However, research was ultimately research. As he was trapped, he could only think about it without completing any verification. Therefore, Zhou Wen didn't know if he was right. Now, in the endless sea of stars, Zhou Wen could test his ideas. With the power of Singularity Universe, Zhou Wen could freely traverse the tiny planets in the endless sea of stars. However, he could only locate the tiny planets. He couldn't teleport easily like when he was using Clown Mask, but the teleportation distance was much further. Zhou Wen landed on a tiny planet and attempted to use the power of Singularity Universe to teleport the tiny planet to another location. However, the outcome wasn't that instantaneous. Although the star corresponding to the tiny planet in the Singularity Universe kept flickering, there was no movement. The planet devourer had already caught up to him. Zhou Wen had no choice but to give up on the idea of teleporting the planet. He teleported to another planet. However, Zhou Wen didn't totally give up. He continued trying again and again, believing that he would succeed. Since this essence energy art is called Sky Stealing Sun Swapping, there's no reason why it can't shift a tiny planet. Sun Swapping. Zhou Wen suddenly thought of something as his eyes lit up. He tried again, but this time, he didn't just want to teleport this small planet. He wanted to swap it with another small planet. In the Singularity Universe, two stars lit up. As the hands Zhou Wen used to press down on the tiny planet produced spatial fluctuations, the entire planet seemed to be affected. Boom! A powerful spatial energy fluctuation exploded from Singularity Universe, as though a universe had undergone a big bang. It instantly produced a strange pocket universe phantom that fused with Zhou Wen's body, giving him a strange feeling that the universe was him, and he was the universe. In the next second, an unbelievable thing happened. Spatial energy suddenly erupted. Then, the tiny planet under Zhou Wen's hands, with its main body composed of metal, instantly turned into a tiny stone planet. It was the one Zhou Wen had chosen to exchange with. Holy sh asterisk t, it really works. Then can I exchange Earth with other planets in real life? Let Earth leave the Milky Way. Zhou Wen imagined himself traveling with Earth in the universe. However, on careful thought, it probably wasn't that easy. When the Singularity Universe advanced to the Terra Grade, it could only move such a tiny planet. The size of a small planet was about the size of a mountain. It was far inferior to Earth. It was probably not that easy to swap it with a real planet. Furthermore, there were so many terrifying creatures and dimensional zones on Earth. It was impossible to teleport with so many terrifying things on it without expending energy. 
Zhou Wing glanced at the blood-colored avatar's stats and realized that the terror transformation condensed by the sky-stealing sun swapping art was called Singularity Universe. It was also an S-grade terror transformation. Up to now, Zhou Wing had already condensed four S-grade terror forms of Great Brahma, God Fiend Era, Heaven Opening Scripture of the Highest Elder, and Singularity Universe. However, his level was still at the mythical stage, and his stats hadn't exceeded 81. Chapter 1155 Double Terror Strength The Singularity Universe's terror transformation allowed Zhou one to obtain one of the abilities of Sky Stealing Sun Swapping, but this ability could only be used via an exchange. He couldn't teleport the tiny planet away. Sending one away, and swapping to another planet that ended up being devoured by the planet devourer still allowed it to replenish its mass and be rejuvenated. This was clearly far from the outcome Zhou Wen wanted. Is there no other way? Zhou Wen constantly gained insight into the power Singularity Universe gave him. Zhou Wen realized that the sky-stealing sun swapping technique didn't necessarily need a planet to be exchanged. He could exchange a planet with a paper ball. That was also possible. However, with the current strength of Singularity Universe, he was still unable to achieve that. This was because the positioning was too vague. The smallest unit that the Singularity Universe could locate was a planet. It was impossible to locate a paper ball from afar, so there was naturally no way to do a swap. Since I'm already at the terror grade, shouldn't the resolution be raised? Even if I can't see a paper ball, I should still be able to locate a mountain or river. Zhou Wen felt somewhat depressed. However, on second thought, Zhou Wen's heart stirred again. Just the Singularity Universe definitely couldn't be that precise. After all, the sky stealing sun swapping art was a rather macroscopic essence energy art. However, the power of the God Fiend era was different. It was also spatial power, but the God Fiend era was a spatial power with relatively high precision. If I can use the power of Clown Mask and Singularity Universe at the same time, like I can use Great Brahma and Clown Mask, what will the effects be? Will I be able to do some more precise location and exchange? With a thought, Zhou Wen circulated the two terror form powers simultaneously. Since he wasn't afraid of death in game, there was no harm trying. Bam! Zhou Wen attempted to fuse the powers of the two terror forms. The blood-colored avatar's body split apart and vanished. The game screen turned black as a notification popped up. Successful suicide. Zhou Wen's face darkened as he thought to himself, how can this be considered suicide? I'm clearly donating my body for experimentation. Although his attempt failed, Zhou Wen knew very well that this was only because he hadn't grasped the rhythm of the two fused terror form powers. It didn't mean that they couldn't fuse. Therefore, Zhou Wen began trying again, only to be notified that he had succeeded in his suicide. Every death brought him some benefits. Zhou Wen knew that he wasn't far from success. If I can make all nine essence energy arts reach the terror form, and use all nine terror forms of power simultaneously, what will happen? Zhou Wen wondered at the back of his mind. After practicing hard for most of the night, Zhou Wen finally succeeded in fusing the two terror form powers into one for the first time. Then, he attempted to teleport a tiny planet out. However, when he pressed his palm on the planet, a black hole appeared and swallowed the planet. The black hole also began devouring everything around it, nearly sucking the blood-colored avatar in. Thankfully, Zhou Wen reacted quickly and teleported out. This was completely different from what Zhou Wen had expected. Clearly, the few spatial powers hadn't developed in the direction Zhou Wen wanted. Instead, they had produced a black hole. I wonder if I can deal with a planet devourer by pitting a black hole against a black hole. Just as Zhou Wen was thinking, he realized that the planet devourer had already descended on the small black hole he had created. The planet devourer rushed towards the small black hole. After the two collided, not only did they not clash, but they fused into one, making the planet devourer even stronger. That black hole betrayed me. Zhou Wen nearly spat out a mouthful of blood. He knew that it was because his control of the fused terror powers wasn't good enough. Furthermore, using a black hole to resist another black hole wasn't the right solution. With no choice, Zhou Wen could only continue experimenting. Thankfully, he already had the experience of success, so everything went much smoother. Zhou Wen quickly mastered the method to create a black hole. However, all the black holes he could create were miniature black holes. Furthermore, he needed enough external matter to support them. Although this move was useless against the planet devourer, it was still very effective against other terror creatures. Zhou Wen continued his research. His main goal was to truly achieve sky stealing and sun swapping. He wanted to teleport the planet away without giving the planet devourer a chance to replenish its matter. Zhou Wen wasn't able to complete his goal until morning, but he made some progress. And Sheng sent a message early in the morning telling Zhou Wen to temporarily stay in the unfamily residence and not go anywhere. Tonight, he could exchange identities with the fake Zhou Wen. Who's that Zhou Wen? 
Zhou Wen replied. Yes. And Sheng replied. I've no idea. Zhou Wen thought to himself, guess my ass. How would I know who it is? However, on second thought, it wasn't easy to pretend to be him without revealing any flaws. His signature companion beasts were unique. Furthermore, the person needed to have sufficient strength. Even with a chick and antelope as cover, it wouldn't be easy to find such a person. It can't be you, right? Zhou Wen said after some thought. No, it'd be too obvious if it was me. I'd definitely be seen through. And Sheng debunked Zhou Wen's guess. Who is it? Zhou Wen really couldn't figure it out. There were only a few experts in Luoyang. It was impossible for Lung Zongjin and in Tianzhu to impersonate him. Zhou Wen really couldn't guess who else had such abilities. You'll know when the time comes. And Shum clearly liked this feeling and didn't tell Zhou Wen. Since Shum didn't say anything, Zhou Wen had no choice but to stop asking. After chatting with Shum for a while, Shum got busy with work. Yer pushed open the door and walked in. She was holding a plate with breakfast on it. Furthermore, it looked like it was for two. Yer placed the plate on the table and sat down opposite Zhou Wen. She blinked and said, Breakfast together. Zhou Wen hadn't slept in the first place. He went to sit down and prepare to have breakfast with Yer, but to his surprise, Sukuyami walked in before he even sat down. She took Zhou Wen's seat and took a bite of his breakfast. She looked at Yer and said with a smile, Not bad. It's pretty good. Thank you. There's no need to thank me. Anyway, I feed the dogs at home every day. I'm used to it. Yer pushed the remaining portion of the plate to Sukuyami. Eat more if you like it. Wen didn't know why Tsukuyami liked to be at odds with Yer, but when he saw that they were about to fight again, he hurriedly went over to pull Yer away. He coughed lightly and said to Tsukuyami, Don't you want to see how humans learn? I'll take you to the place I used to go to school, okay? Isn't it just a place like the Royal College? It's boring, Tsukuyami said. It's different. The place I attended is rather interesting, but we can only go there later. Wen wanted to meet his old classmates, but on careful thought, they had already graduated. Unless they had continued studying or become a tutor, it would be impossible for him to see them again. I wonder how good Yin is now. Zhou Wen thought of the devil like man. He had already roughly learned about Li Xian and company from Insheng. Only Gu Yin had disappeared after graduation. It was unknown where he had gone. Chapter 1156 Greetings Prince Consort At night, Insheng came over to invite Zhou Wen and Yir to the meal held at the front hall. Tsukuyami followed Zhou Wen the entire time, so he had no choice but to take her along. Before the group reached the front hall, they saw a golden stream of light fly out and instantly appear in front of Zhou Wen. Zhou Wen extended his arm and saw a strange golden feathered bird land on it. It was Chick. However, Chick's body now resembled a huge eagle. Its body was also very similar in shape, leaving Zhou Wen puzzled. He thought to himself, how strange. Isn't it a descendant of a phoenix? Why does it look more and more like an eagle? However, being able to reunite with Chick delighted Zhou Wen. He reached out to stroke Chick's feathers and vaguely felt a heat flowing beneath him. Chick intimately extended its head and rubbed against Zhou Wen's body. It didn't feel unfamiliar despite the five years of separation. Zhou Wen still didn't understand why the phoenix had chosen him to deal with Chick. After entering the front hall, Zhou Wen saw the antelope lazily sprawled on the sofa without approaching the dining table. At the dining table, and Tianzhu sat at the main seat with Jing sitting on his right. Having not seen her for so many years, and Jing's appearance was very different from before. She was now as tall as Zhou Wen. Without the baby fat on her face, she looked even more heroic. Furthermore, she looked much more composed. She sat with a straight back, a clear indication of a soldier's bearing. And Tianzhua and Jing looked at Zhou Wen without a word. Young master one, sit here. And Sheng got Zhou Wen to sit on and Tianzhua's left. Yer sat beside Zhou Wen. And Sheng had planned on arranging for Tsukuyami to sit on and Jing's side, but Tsukuyami sat down beside you. And Sheng had no choice but to walk to and Jing's side and sit down. Then, he said to Zhou Wen, Young Master Wen, why don't you introduce this beautiful lady to us? Her name is Tsukuyami. She's a friend I met overseas. Zhou Wen found it odd, because Nsheng had previously said that he should be able to see the person impersonating him tonight, but there was only Ntianzhua and Njing here. It's definitely impossible for Ntianzhua. Could it be that the person impersonating me was Njing? Zhou Wen couldn't help but glance at Njing. Njing happened to be looking at him as well. When their eyes met, the two of them subconsciously looked away, feeling uncomfortable. Miss Tsukuyami, are you from overseas? Which island do you live on? And Tianzhua asked Tsukuyami. Bride Island? Tsukuyami answered truthfully. Bride Island? And Tianzhua frowned slightly as he sized up Tsukuyami. Clearly, he knew what kind of place Bride Island was and knew that it was impossible for humans to live there. 
Zhou Wen was afraid that Antianzua would continue asking, so he explained. Bright Island isn't as terrifying as the legends say. I've been there and seen the ghost parade. Zhou Wen's topic immediately piqued in Sheng's interest. I heard that the ghost parade disaster has appeared overseas. A calamity creature should have appeared, but for some reason, there was no news all of a sudden. Young Master One, since you've been there, do you know what happened? And Jing and Tianzhua also looked at Zhou Wen. Clearly, they also wanted to know the answer. Zhou Wen naturally knew what had happened, but he couldn't tell them in front of Tsukuyami that he had abducted the newly born calamity creature, so the dimensional creatures that accompanied her had temporarily ended up settling down. Actually, it's just a rumor. Calamity creatures aren't as terrifying as the outside world described them to be. They are still very kind and reasonable. They are also very amiable. I reasoned with them, and they probably felt that what I said made sense, so they stopped their parade. With Tsukuyami beside him, he could only speak against his conscience. Otherwise, if he angered Tsukuyami, Wu Yang would probably be doomed. And Tianzhua, and Jing, and Enshun looked at him. The look in their eyes said everything. They felt that Zhou Wen was spouting nonsense. Reason with a calamity creature? Very kind and amiable. It would be a miracle if they believed it. And Jing said indifferently, If they are so kind and nice, why didn't you invite them back as guests? What do you mean by not inviting them? Isn't one just beside me? Zhou Wen thought to himself, but he said, It's too far. The journey's rough, so I'll see if there's a chance in the future. And Jing curled her lips, and didn't say anything else. Clearly, she felt that Zhou Wen was bullsh asterisk ting. And Sheng hurriedly tried to smooth things over. Overseer, the food is ready. Why don't we get them to serve the dishes now? And Tianzhu nodded slightly, as in Sheng hurriedly instructed someone to serve the food. It was a great spread, but it wasn't extravagant. The most expensive food was probably the dessert that you ate. The rest were ordinary home-cooked dishes, but they were made exquisitely. The atmosphere was especially tense as they ate together. And Tianzhu ate a few mouthfuls, put down his bowl and chopsticks, and asked Tsukuyumi. Miss Tsukuyumi, you live on Bright Island. Have you seen the ghost parade with your own eyes? Of course. Tsukuyumi answered. I wonder which are the hundred ghosts in the parade. Please broaden my horizons. And Tianzhu said. Although the ghost parade is known as having a hundred ghosts, there are actually more than a hundred of them. Just at the Terra Grade, there are already more than a hundred. For example, Great Day Tengu, Yuki Ana, and Hashiheim are all at the Terra Grade. Tsukuyumi answered. You are really lucky to escape alive with so many terror creatures there. And Jing clearly didn't believe Tsukuyumi's words. Didn't Zhou would already say that the dimensional creatures there are very kind and amiable? We get along very well, like we're friends. There's no need to flee, right? Tsukuyumi's last sentence was directed at Zhou Wen. Yes, they are especially friendly. They are really kind. We are all friends. What else could Zhou Wen say? All he could do was echo Tsukuyumi. Then you should invite them back next time. Let us meet these amiable friends. And Jing said casually. There's no need to wait. I can introduce you to them now. Tsukuyumi said. And Jing felt that there was no point in continuing. Just as she was about to end the topic, the lights in the hall suddenly went off. It wasn't just the living room. The entire and family residence sank into darkness as all the lights were extinguished. And Jing and Enshun's expressions changed. Just as they were about to get up, and Tianzhu said calmly. Sit down. And Jing and Sheng had no choice but to sit down again. However, just as they sat down, a cold wind blew open the door to the living room. Snowflakes swept in with the cold wind. At the same time, a woman in white floated in. Yuki Ana? And Sheng and Jing stared at Yuki Ana. They had already guessed her identity, but they still found it unbelievable. Yuki Ana walked to Tsukuyumi's side and bowed slightly at Tsukuyumi and Zhou Wen. Your Majesty, Prince Consort. Greetings from your subject, Yuki Ana. Chapter 1157 Tsukuyumi's Performance And Jing and company were dumbfounded. The entire and family residence was silent. With the family's defense, with such a huge commotion, the troops and hidden forces should have long rushed into the hall, but there was no movement at all. The dark yard was dead silent. The night was terrifyingly dark, as though a dark behemoth was entrenched in the residence. The sound of wings flapping was heard. Almost at the same time, Daitengu landed in the living room. It retracted its wings and bowed at Tsukuyumi and Zhou Wen. Your Majesty, Prince Consort. Greetings from your subject, Dei Tengu. And Jing and company had naturally heard of the name Dei Tengu. Legend had it that it was formed after an emperor died. It had a very high status in a particular country's pantheon. Is this really the legendary Dei Tengu? And Jing's body trembled as she looked at the Dei Tengu that resembled a winged devil. It looked very similar to the legendary depiction. Even if it wasn't the legendary Dei Tengu, 
just its ability to appear out of thin air made it an extremely powerful existence. Without a doubt, it was at the terror grade. Boom! Boom! Before Anjin could figure out if it was really De Tingu, she suddenly heard a strange sound, as though a behemoth had stepped into a manor. Soon, she saw a strange temple appear in front of the living room. The strange temple seemed to have a life of its own. Its open door was pitch black, like the mouth of a terrifying monster. Your Majesty, Prince Consort! Greetings from your subject, not a rainbow. The temple rumbled as it landed in front of the hall. A ghastly voice sounded. An ethereal sound of a stringed instrument came from the side door. Yumaboza carried his lute as he walked. After arriving in the hall, he bowed slightly at Tsukuyami and Jowen. Your Majesty, Prince Consort! Greetings from your subject, Yumabozu. In a moment, for terrifying dimensional creatures appeared. Furthermore, there were layers of ghostly shadows in the distance, as though countless ghosts were heading their way. And Shang and Jing's strength were extraordinary. They could sense that the strength of those creatures was extremely terrifying. They were definitely not ordinary mythical creatures. And Tianzhu didn't look at Yuki Ana and company. He only stared coldly at Tsukuyumi. He had already guessed Tsukuyumi's identity when Yuki Ana appeared. Without a doubt, Tsukuyumi wasn't a real human, but a calamity creature that had appeared overseas. Only she could control so many terrifying creatures. And Jing and Nsheng naturally thought the same. Their eyes were filled with horror as they looked at Tsukuyumi. No one expected the woman who had returned with Zhou when to be a calamity creature that had appeared overseas. Don't tell me she wants to trigger the ghost parade in the unfamily? And Jing felt extremely uneasy. If it was really as Tsukuyumi had said, with more than a hundred terror creatures gathered here, once violence erupted, the entire Luoyang city would probably suffer. Tsukuyumi, that's enough. We are eating. Let them return. Zhou Wen said with a frown. When Tsukuyumi heard Zhou Wen's words, she was surprisingly gentle. She didn't retort him, and obediently waved her hand. Yuki Ana, De Tingu, and the other terror creatures instantly retreated and vanished into the darkness. As for the Yin family, they returned to normal as the lights lit up again. The guards outside didn't seem to know what had happened. They were still patrolling as usual. And Tianzhu's brows relaxed when he saw that everyone was fine. Let's sit down for the meal! Zhou Wen secretly heaved a sigh of relief when he saw Tsukuyumi dismiss the dimensional creatures. If they really came to blows, even if he could use the immortal calling sword to kill Tsukuyumi, the Yin family and Luoyang would suffer heavy losses. Tsukuyumi seemed to have changed into a different person today. She was especially gentle and obedient as she picked up the bowl and chewed slowly. However, her present appearance was completely different from before in the eyes of Anjing and company. A calamity creature treated Zhou Wen's words like an imperial edict. It was just too shocking. Only each individual knew what they were feeling while having this meal. I'm full. I wish to get some rest. Tsukuyumi looked at Zhou Wen as though she was asking for his opinion. Return first. After Zhou Wen said that, Tsukuyumi got up and left. After Tsukuyumi left, the atmosphere immediately relaxed. And Shun whispered, Young Master One, is she really the one who appeared overseas? Zhou Wen nodded and said helplessly, Yes. Young Master One, pretty amazing. Even a Calamity Grade creature listens to you. Could it be that you've already advanced to the Calamity Grade? And Shun asked. Although in Shun, and Tianzhu, and company knew that Zhou Wen was human sovereign, they could also tell that Zhou Wen had relied on the power of the sword to defeat D. Tian, not because Zhou Wen had advanced to the Calamity Grade. And Jing and Tianzhu also looked at Zhou Wen. They clearly wanted to know what level Zhou Wen had reached to make a Calamity Grade creature be so submissive. Tsukuyami didn't seem to go against Zhou Wen's wishes. Zhou Wen shook his head and said with a bitter smile, I'm still at the mythical stage. I'm still very far from the Calamity Grade. As for Tsukuyami, I can't explain it for the time being. It's a long story. And Shung naturally didn't believe him. He said with a smile, To be able to make a Calamity Grade creature listen to you, I also want to give such a long story a try. Zhou Wen couldn't explain it clearly. No one would believe that a Calamity creature insisted on marrying him. After the meal, Zhou Wen took your back. Chick and Antelope also followed, seemingly without much reluctance. Overseer, it looks like we don't have to worry about young Master Wen's safety. Even a Calamity Grade creature acts so obedient towards him. Even if young Master Wen hasn't really advanced to the Calamity Grade, he's definitely much stronger than before. It won't be easy for the League of Guardians to touch him. And Shun said, have we ever been worried about his safety? And Tianzhu said indifferently. Furthermore, just as he said, his strength hasn't reached the Calamity Grade. He hasn't even reached the Terror Grade. Tsukuyami must have another reason for following him. It might not be a good thing. Tsukuyami doesn't seem to have any ill intentions towards young Master One. And Shun said. Not having any ill intentions doesn't mean anything. 
You still have to continue with the previous arrangements. It's not time for wishful thinking, Entianzwa said. Overseer, don't worry. I'll do my best. And Sheng stood up and saluted solemnly. And Jing sat by the side and ate without saying a word. She originally imagined that she had grown a lot in the past five years. But now, she suddenly realized that her growth was nothing in front of Zhou Wen. Zhou Wen returned to his room and realized that Tsukuyami was waiting for him. Upon seeing Zhou Wen return, Tsukuyami blinked and asked, How was my performance? What do you mean? Zhou Wen asked in puzzlement. My performance at the banquet, of course. Didn't you humans say that a good wife has to give her husband face in front of outsiders? Was what I did considered giving you enough face? Was I considered a good wife? Tsukuyami asked Zhou Wen. Chapter 1158 Sky Stealing Sun Swapping Skill Zhou Wen was immediately rendered speechless as he looked at Tsukuyami, fully at a loss for words. What kind of charm does the heavenly happiness token have to make a calamity great creature stoop to such a level? Zhou Wen was alarmed. Back when Emperor Shang gave him the heavenly happiness token, he didn't think that there was any problem. Now, he realized how big a problem it was. Emperor of Shang should have been the loser back then. Is the token he gave me really that powerful? After some thought, Zhou Wen felt that something was amiss. Is that wrong? I read about this on the internet. Seeing Zhou Wen remain silent, Tsukuyami thought that she had done something wrong. She opened the web page and saw that it had the words. Love's 36 stratagems. There's nothing wrong. It's written like this. Is there a problem with my usage? Tsukuyami studied it again. Seeing that she had no intention of leaving, Zhou Wen had no choice but to give up his room to her and find another place to stay. Chick and Antelope returned to his side, making Zhou Wen feel indescribably at ease. He summoned Banana Fairy, Demonic Niene, Truth Listener, and the other companion beasts and allowed them to move freely in the room. Zhou Wen lay in bed and continued gaming. At the same time, he studied the combination of Clown Mask and Singularity Universe. As he constantly failed, Zhou Wen became more and more adept at combining the two powers. Finally, he thought of a way to move the tiny planet away without getting another planet in return. When he arrived in front of a small planet again, Zhou Wen picked up a stone and pinched it before throwing it into the distance. After the stone flew away, Zhou Wen pressed his palm on the tiny planet. In the next second, a strange thing happened. The tiny planet under Zhou Wen's hand vanished as the stone he had thrown appeared in his hand. I did it! Zhou Wen was overjoyed as he made a few more attempts. The success rate was rather high, and he could do the reverse as well. However, he had to leave his coordinates on one of the objects before he could swap them from a distance. The further the distance, the greater the expenditure. To use this method, he had to use the power of Clown Mask and Singularity Universe at the same time. Neither one could be missing. Zhou Wen constantly practiced to allow himself to complete the swap at faster speeds. Only this way could he finish off the Planet Devourer. After countless practice, when Zhou Wen felt that it was about time he found the Planet Devourer again, he constantly used teleportation to expend the Planet Devourer's powers. When the Planet Devourer's black hole suction force was reduced to a certain extent, it attempted to devour the nearby tiny planets as expected. Zhou Wen immediately teleported to a tiny planet and teleported a stone out. Just as the planet devourer was about to devour the tiny planet, it suddenly vanished. Zhou Wen also vanished with the tiny planet, leaving behind a fist-sized stone. After the planet devourer devoured the stone, the replenishment it received was almost negligible. The planet devourer quickly teleported to another tiny planet, planning to devour it again. Almost at the same time, Zhou Wen teleported over and appeared on the tiny planet. He teleported the tiny planet away again, leaving behind a stone. A strange battle began. No matter which tiny planet the planet devourer appeared on, Zhou Wen would appear in time and swap the tiny planet away, leaving behind a fist-sized stone. Without any replenishment, the black hole in the planet devourer's body became weaker and weaker. Likewise for its suction force. Even its body gradually shrank. Zhou Wen's expenditure was greater than that of the planet devourer, but with slaughterer replenishing large amounts of essence energy and the augmentation of the heaven opening scripture's essence energy recovery, it was almost equivalent to infinite essence energy. The planet devourer's body became smaller and smaller until it was about the size of a small planet. Then, its body suddenly collapsed and was destroyed. Ding! A companion egg dropped from where the planet devourer had collapsed. Killed terror creature, planet devourer. Discovered companion egg. Zhou Wen was delighted. This was the first terror grade companion egg that had dropped for him. He reached out to grab the companion egg and saw that it was crystalline. There was a strange vortex pattern in it that seemed to be constantly swirling. Planet Devourer, Terror, Life Providence, Black Hole, Life Soul, Star Core, Wheel of Destiny, Devourer, Terror Form, 
Devourer. Strength, 89. Speed, 92. Constitution, 94. Essence Energy, 93. Talent Skill, Space-Time Transfer, Energy Release. Companion Form, Glove. After Zhou Wing saw the stats, he couldn't help but be slightly taken aback. He never expected its companion form to be a glove. However, on careful thought, it did look a little like a glove, but it was just too big in size. He directly chose to incubate it. A large amount of essence energy was sucked away by the companion egg. It was only with Zhou Wen's double augmentation of Slaughterer and the heaven-opening scripture of the Highest Elder that he could do so. Ordinary mythical creatures couldn't afford such enormous essence energy expenditure. With the injection of essence energy, the planet devourer gradually hatched. It was identical to the planet devourer from before, and was extremely large. When the planet devourer was completely hatched, it transformed into a black beam that injected into Zhou Wen's body. When Zhou Wen summoned it again, the planet devourer had already transformed into a glove. It was a black crystalline glove. In the palm was a mysterious black vortex that emitted a powerful suction force. Zhou Wen tested it, and realized that he could control the suction force of the black hole in his palm. He attempted to use the planet devourer glove on the nearby tiny planets. The tiny planet that was the size of a mountain was pulled over by the black hole on the glove. The closer the tiny planet was to the black hole, the smaller it became. Finally, it was sucked into the black hole. Zhou Wen immediately felt that the power of the black hole had become much stronger after absorbing the tiny planet. The planet devourer's strength is sufficiently powerful, but the suction force of the black hole is a little too slow. Before sucking an object in, as long as one's speed is fast enough, one can still dodge it. However, if I were to use the glove to strike the enemy, I would be able to suck the enemy into the black hole. It would be impossible for them to escape again. Zhou Wen thought about the ways to use Planet Devourer. However, there was something that worried Zhou Wen. Planet Devourer's black hole was somewhat similar to Torch Dragon's Bright Torch Vision world. He didn't know if he could retrieve the items that dropped if he sucked in the dimensional creatures. He gave Planet Devourer a spin and indeed, as he had guessed, nothing would be left behind after being sucked into the black hole. Chapter 1159 Alma Mater The next morning, and Sheng modified Zhou Wen's appearance before letting him leave the family. Zhou Wen looked at the changes and Sheng had given him, and realized that the contours on his face had softened. His hairstyle had also changed a little, but the other changes weren't too big. He took Yur and Tsukuyami to Sunset College, which was still considered Zhou Wen's alma mater, even though he hadn't graduated from there. Luoyang was relatively intact, because there were dimensional zones everywhere around it. Furthermore, there were several layers of dimensional zones below Luoyang City. The whole of Luoyang was equivalent to a massive and complicated dimensional zone. It was difficult for dimensional creatures from the outside world to rush in, so it had become abnormally safe. As for the various dimensional zones in Luoyang, there were quite a number of dimensional creatures that had breached the restrictions. However, as people were already familiar with these dimensional creatures, and with the constant battles over the past five years, they ultimately managed to preserve humanity's foundation in Luoyang. Zhou Wen had also read quite a bit of information regarding Luoyang on the internet. It could be said that Luoyang was a unique existence in the Federation. Two of the four war gods of the new era were in Luoyang. One was in Tianzhua, and the other was Sunset College's Chancellor, Lung Zongzheng. It was said that in the past five years, Luoyang had experienced countless breakout battles of all sizes. The biggest reason why humans could always entrench themselves was because of these two guards. When he arrived at the familiar school entrance again, Zhou Wen felt mixed emotions. Although it had only been five years, the campus had undergone huge changes. Many buildings were new, and even the main entrance was different from before. It had probably been recently renovated. Although the entire school looked brand new and looked even more grandiose than before, one could tell upon careful thought that the reason the school had undergone a large-scale renovation was definitely not because of aesthetic pursuits, but because it had to be rebuilt. From this, it could be seen how many terrifying battles this school had experienced to make the entire school look almost brand new. Just past the school entrance stood the statue of Human Sovereign with his heaven-defying strike. It was similar to the one Zhou Wen had seen before, but it looked even more majestic. Upon seeing the Human Sovereign statue, Zhou Wen couldn't help but shake his head and smile bitterly. Humans treated him as their savior and worshipped him like a god. However, he wasn't thinking too much back then, nor was he thinking of saving humanity. He hadn't had a choice. Taking out the pass and Shum gave him, he successfully took Takuyami and Yer into the school. It was obvious that the guards recognized him and were very respectful. Zhou Wen gathered that this respect was meant for the Zhou Wen, who was acted by Anjing, and not him. From the looks of it, Anjing must have done quite a number of things while acting as me. Zhou Wen walked into the school and saw a very different scene from the Royal College. 
Although this place placed great importance on the cultivation of companion beasts, essence energy arts, and essence energy skills, one could also see the shadow of technology. There were also many things that combined companion beasts and technology. Tsukuyami was very curious when she saw the technological components. You're right. The place where you attended school is indeed different from the school we went to previously, Tsukuyami said as she looked at the students practicing shooting on the field. Yes. Although Zhou Wen wasn't willing to admit it, he had to admit that it was mostly thanks to Ntianzua. And Tianzhu always placed great importance on scientific research. Furthermore, Zhou Wen had heard that the effects were rather good. The essence energy compression accelerator he had created had played a vital role in the early battles during Luoyang's defense. However, due to the excessive expenditure of essence crystals, the essence energy compression accelerator was seldom seen in the subsequent battles. As in Jing, who impersonated Zhou Wen, had been in the military all year round, ordinary students did not recognize Zhou Wen, only the soldiers who were deployed on campus did. However, there were many legends about Zhou Wen on campus. He was considered a legend. When he arrived at the training grounds, Zhou Wen couldn't help but reminisce about the times he had practiced with Li Xian, Feng Qiuyun, and company. Zhou Wen circled the training grounds with Yer and Tsukuyami. Just as he was about to leave, a student came in front of him and said politely, Senior, can I help you? Zhou Wen glanced at the student in front of him. He was about 17 or 18 years old, probably in his sophomore or junior year. Although he wasn't as tall as Zhou Wen, he was still considered tall and handsome. What's the matter? Zhou Wen knew that he had mistaken him for a graduate student, but Zhou Wen could indeed be considered his senior. Is this beautiful senior your girlfriend? The student didn't answer and instead asked while looking at Tsukuyami. No, Zhou Wen said with a shake of his head. It's fiancé, Tsukuyami added. This time, she didn't say that she was Zhou Wen's wife. Instead, she used the word fiancé. He did not know where she learned it from. Fiancé? That means you aren't married? The boy's eyes lit up as he looked at Zhou Wen and said, Senior, please fight me. If I win, can you agree to let me have dinner at the cafeteria with her? Zhou Wen glanced at Tsukuyami and saw that she wasn't angry. Then, he looked at the boy and asked, What's your name? This boy was actually quite bold to have thoughts of chasing after a calamity creature. It was unknown if he still had the guts to do so after knowing Tsukuyami's true identity. Shin Mu. The boy's tone was very calm, but from the way he raised his eyebrows, one could tell that he was proud of his name as though he was very famous. In fact, many students on the training grounds were secretly discussing as they watched. Zhou Wen's eyes and ears were extremely sensitive, so he quickly figured out Qin Mu's origins. Qin Mu was a sophomore, but his strength had already reached the peak of the legendary stage. He was only half a step away from advancing to the epic stage. Although there were many dimensional creatures now, to have such achievements at such a young age made him an outstanding elite in Sunset College. At this year's school ranking, Qin Mu had only lost to the president of the student council and was ranked second. From this, one could tell how strong he was. However, there was another reason why Qin Mu had such strength. This was because Qin Mu was the younger brother of the famous female sword immortal in Luoyang. Although the female sword immortal's fame wasn't comparable to a figure like in Tianzue, she was also a well-known figure in the Federation. She had never tasted defeat when it came to sword technique. Speaking of sword techniques in the East District, the most outstanding ones were for males, Ming Xiao, and for females, this female sword immortal. Chapter 1160 Female Sword Immortal Sword Art The female sword immortal's name was Qin Jin. Qin Mu's relationship with Qin Jin was very good, and he especially admired this sister. When he was at home, Qin Jin was always the one who mentored him. Of course, Qin Jin's teaching was only one aspect. Qin Mu himself was a bona fide genius, but he was a little too proud. Furthermore, his personality was more defiant and rebellious. He had caused a lot of trouble in school, giving his tutor a headache. Are you sure you want to fight me? Zhou Wen asked Qin Mu. You don't dare? Qin Mu returned with a question. I do, but I just find it unfair. Zhou Wen thought for a moment and said. You can date her if you win, but I won't get any benefits if I win. Do you think that's fair? Then if you win, I'll arrange for my sister to date you. That's fair, right? Qin Mu said with a grin. Zhou Wen was glad that he hadn't drunk any water. Otherwise, he might have spat it out. With a younger brother of this caliber, the female sword immortal was really unlucky. How is that? Do you dare to agree? Qin Mu continued to ask. Qin Mu was certain that Zhou Wen would agree to it. A graduate student being provoked by a sophomore, and in front of his girlfriend, was something no one could tolerate. Here? Zhou Wen looked around and asked. There were already quite a number of students who had come to watch the commotion. However, they knew Qin Mu's character very well and were no longer surprised. 
Yes, right here. Everyone can be our witnesses. Of course, if you're afraid of losing and embarrassing yourself, we can also get a private room. Chin Mu said with a grin. Doing it here will do. Zhou Wen also wanted to see what standards the top students of Sunset College had after five years. He wanted to know how they compared with his class. All right, I'll use a sword. Senior, what will you use? Chin Mu took a practice sword from the weapon rack and asked Zhou Wen. Since you use a sword, I'll use a sword too. Zhou Wen said. Don't regret posturing. Chin Mu curled his lips and threw a practice sword at Zhou Wen. Zhou Wen caught the sword before walking to the center of the training grounds. You're a senior. Shouldn't you give me a three-strike handicap? Chin Mu asked with a grin. Sure. Zhou Wen nodded with a smile. Senior, I won't stand on ceremony then. Chin Mu thought to himself. I know all the powerful ones among the graduate students. I haven't seen this one before, so he's definitely not at the epic stage. He wants to beat me at the legendary stage? To think he dares give me a three-strike handicap. He's simply blinded by greed. That's good too. If I finish you in three strikes, I can definitely make that female senior view me in a different light. No. Three strikes isn't cool enough. I'll finish him in one strike. Chin Mu thought for a moment, and still felt that dealing a single death blow was more handsome, and could leave an impression in the eyes of the beautiful female senior. Senior, I'm about to strike. You have to be careful. Chin Mu was very confident in his sword art. Unless one's level was higher than his, there weren't many people at the same level who could dodge his full-powered strike. All right. Zhou Wen nodded with a smile. Chin Mu didn't immediately strike. Instead, he took a few steps forward and found Zhou Wen standing still. He stood there with his sword in hand and allowed him to approach with no intent of retreat. He couldn't help but sneer inwardly. You know I'm Chin Jin's younger brother, yet you still dare let me come so close. You can only blame it on yourself if you can't even block one strike. When he reached the attack range that he was most proficient in, Chin Mu suddenly struck out with his sword. That strike was like a fleeting glimpse. Coupled with his movement technique, it was unbelievably fast, but it was also extremely elegant. It was like an immortal riding a sword for an assault on the enemy. In a flash, he could take the head of the general amidst thousands of soldiers. Zhou Wen couldn't help but be surprised when he saw Qin Mu's sword art. Although Qin Mu's sword art was fast, it was only fast enough among legendaries. In Zhou Wen's eyes, this strike was extremely slow. It was impossible for it to touch him. Zhou Wen was surprised that the sword art was very similar to his transcendent flying immortal. It wasn't the present transcendent flying immortal, but the transcendent flying immortal from his college days. Although this strike had some changes, the core remained the same. Strange, why would he use my transcendent flying immortal? This was unlike Sagasakai, who had only observed Zhou Wen sword moves and sword intent before figuring out a concept similar to transcendent flying immortal. Although the two were very similar, there were still some differences in the core and details. However, Qin Mu's sword art was different. His sword art had details that were unique to Zhou Wen. Strange, I've never taught anyone my sword art, much less someone with the surname Qin. Why does this Qin Mu know my sword art? Zhou Wen was filled with puzzlement. Qin Mu originally wanted to defeat Zhou Wen with one strike and had used 90% of his strength. His speed was also astonishing. However, to his surprise, the practice sword in Zhou Wen's hand blocked Qin Mu's sword, preventing him from succeeding. Qin Mu was slightly surprised. He didn't expect this unremarkable graduate student to be able to block the sword art his sister had taught him. I'll see how many strikes you can block. When Chin Mu saw that Zhou Wen didn't react, he thought that he had already used all his strength to block his attack and didn't have the ability to counterattack. Therefore, he launched a storm-like attack. Strike after strike, Chin Mu's sword art was elegant and ruthless. It was indeed a good sword art that was hard to come by. After watching a few strikes, Zhou Wen finally understood. This sword art was indeed transcendent flying immortal from back when he was at school. However, it had been modified by someone and had indeed reached a very high level. It was much stronger than Zhou Wen's transcendent flying immortal from back then. However, the core hadn't changed. It was considered a variant of transcendent flying immortal. However, Zhou Wen still couldn't recall when he had taught the sword art to a person with the surname Qin. After more than 10 strikes, Zhou Wen had already seen through Qin Mu's sword art. There was no need for him to continue. Therefore, he struck out and said Chin Mu's practice sword flying. It looks like I've won. Zhou Wen placed his practice sword back on the rack and asked Chin Mu. Who taught you your sword art? My sister? Chin Mu thought of Chin Jin and what he had said to Zhou Wen. He immediately felt that something was amiss. If Zhou Wen really requested to go on a date with Chin Jin, Chin Mu wouldn't tell her it was down to a battle. The reason he had said that was because he hadn't expected to lose. However, on second thought, the other party's girlfriend was here. 
He wouldn't suggest going on a date with his sister, right? Where did your sister learn her sword art from? Zhou Wen wanted to know where she had learned Transcendent Flying Immortal. Why are you asking this? Qin Mu sized up Zhou Wen warily. He imagined that Zhou Wen was eyeing Qin Jin's sword art. Didn't you say that you wanted to arrange a date between me and your sister? Can we do it today? Zhou Wen wanted to meet the female sword immortal, Qin Jin, and ask her where she had learned Transcendent Flying Immortal. Chapter 1161 Female Sword Immortal Qin Mu's face darkened. He didn't dare take Zhou Wen to his sister. Furthermore, he never expected him to really dare visit his sister. Ignoring the fact that his girlfriend was here, just the fame of his sister as female sword immortal was enough to scare away many suitors. Ordinary men didn't have the courage to stand in front of his sister. However, Qin Mu thought about it again. He had seen many outstanding men, but when they really stood in front of his sister, all of them quickly lost their confidence. They would become at a loss for words, because Qin Jin's aura was too strong. Even if he really took Zhou Wen to see Qin Jin, Zhou Wen probably wouldn't dare say anything rash in front of her. Perhaps, he could bluff his way through. Senior, do you really want to meet my sister? Qin Mu asked Zhou Wen. Didn't we agree on this? Zhou Wen said. All right, I, Qin Mu, admit defeat. I'll take you there now. Follow me if you have the guts. After Qin Mu said that, he walked out of the training grounds. Zhou Wen looked at Tsukuyami and saw that she didn't have any special reaction. Only then did he pick up your and follow. Tsukuyami followed behind. As for many students who had enjoyed the battle, they followed behind as though they wanted to see if Zhou Wen would really date female sword immortal. She was the goddess that many boys in school had a crush on. Qin Mu walked in front for a while and saw that Zhou Wen had really followed him. Furthermore, he had brought two beauties, one young, one old, with him. He couldn't help but ask in surprise. Don't tell me you plan on taking them to see my sister? Can I? Zhou Wen asked. Sure, of course. As you wish. Qin Mu thought to himself, is this fellow stupid? It would be strange if he doesn't get beaten up when he takes this woman to see my sister. However, this is also good. When that happens, my sister won't be in the mood to care about me. Qin Jin was a tutor at Sunset College. She lived there, so they didn't need to leave the campus. Yang had a very high status in the Federation, and Sunset College had long been famous throughout the Federation. Ignoring the fact that the Federation president had once studied at Sunset College, just Yang's present strength was enough to match the six families. However, these powerful figures didn't completely belong to the Yin family. Otherwise, the Yin family might have become the seventh family clan. Qin Mu quickly led Zhou Wen and company to Qin Jin's residence. This place surprised Zhou Wen. For Seasons Garden, your sister lives here? Zhou Wen asked as he looked at the building in front of him. This was the Four Seasons Garden that had previously been reserved for special admission students. Furthermore, the building that Qin Jin lived in was the same one that he used to live in. Although many small buildings in Four Seasons Garden had been rebuilt, the three buildings in the last row didn't seem to have changed much. They were about the same as before. That's right. Are you going in? Qin Mu asked Zhou Wen with a grin. He was very relaxed now. Zhou Wen was holding the hand of a girl who was about seven or eight years old. Behind him was a beauty who looked to be in her twenties. All he needed to do was tell Qin Jin that this man wanted to woo her. With Qin Jin's temper, the outcome was obvious. Why not? Zhou Wen asked. All right, wait a moment. I'll take you to see my sister now. Qin Mu pushed open the door and walked in. When he arrived in front of the building, he pressed the doorbell. Sis, are you there? Qin Mu shouted at the video doorbell. What are you doing here? A cold woman's voice sounded from inside. She didn't sound old, but her attitude was very cold. There's a senior who wants to get to know you. I brought him over to meet you. Qin Mu said as he turned his body to the side, allowing Qin Jin to see Zhou when standing behind him through the video. By the way, senior, what's your name? Only then did Qin Mu realize that he didn't even know Zhou Wen's name. Zhou Wen ignored him and looked at the door. He didn't use Truth Listener to scan the situation inside. After all, she was a woman and not an enemy. It would be impolite. Seeing that Zhou Wen didn't answer, Qin Mu asked again. Before Zhou Wen could answer, the door to the building opened. A young woman in her 20s walked out. She wore the combat uniform produced by the Yin family, accentuating her perfect figure. Although she wasn't too tall, her figure was very well proportioned. Zhou Wen immediately found the woman's face familiar. After some thought, he immediately recalled and knew where she had learned transcendent flying immortal. I never expected that the silent and introverted junior from back then would have already become a famous female sword immortal in the Federation, Zhou Wen thought wistfully. Back then, he noticed that a female junior had quite a bit of talent in the way of the sword so he had casually given her some scattered notes he had already memorized while practicing Transcendent Flying Immortal. 
Zhou Wen didn't take this matter to heart at all. He had long forgotten about it. Furthermore, he never expected that the junior would use the scattered notes in the notebook to cultivate transcendent flying immortal to such an extent. She had even become a famous female sword immortal. If it wasn't for Zhou Wen's good memory, he would have found it unbelievable that Qin Zhen was the junior from back then. When Qin Mu saw Qin Zhen walk out, he thought that Qin Zhen wanted to chase Zhou Wen away. Therefore, he fanned the flames and said, Sis, let me introduce you. This senior wants to date you. And this person is his fiancé. I don't know what relationship this little girl has with them. Senior, could this be your daughter? Qin Mu was secretly delighted. He felt that Qin Zhen would definitely teach this reckless senior a lesson. Just as he expected, Qin Zhen walked towards Zhou Wen like a gust of wind. Qin Mu was already beginning to worry for Zhou Wen. If Qin Zhen was too heavy-handed and crippled him, it would be difficult to explain things to the college. As he was thinking, Qin Zhen stood in front of Zhou Wen. Just as Qin Mu thought that Qin Zhen's terrifying attack was coming, he saw Qin Zhen stop in front of Zhou Wen. She didn't draw her sword or attack. What was even more unbelievable was that Qin Zhen's face revealed an expression that Qin Mu had never seen before. It was difficult to describe her expression. It was as though she was pleasantly surprised, but at the same time, she seemed to be at a loss. The present Qin Zhen had no indication of the female sword immortal's killing intent and arrogance at all. She was like a girl next door who was secretly in love with an older boy. Heavens! Is there something wrong with my eyes? That's definitely not my dream goddess, female sword immortal Qin Zhen, right? How can she have such an expression? The male students, who had come to watch the commotion were dumbfounded when they saw Qin Zhen's expression. Qin Mu was shocked beyond words. As a younger brother, he had never seen Qin Zhen like this. Senior! Qin Zhen bowed her head and called out bashfully, as though she had become that introverted and shy junior from back then. God, smite me with lightning! I don't want to live anymore! Tell me that it's not Sword Immortal Qin Zhen. It's definitely not. Many boys wanted to kill Zhou Wen. How could a goddess show such an expression to another man? It was absolutely unforgivable. Chapter 1162 Zhou Wen's Return Sis, this person has a fiancé. Qin Mu hurriedly reminded Qin Zhen. However, Qin Zhen ignored Qin Mu as if she hadn't heard him. Not bad with your sword practice. Zhou Wen praised as he looked at Qin Zhen. His words came from the bottom of his heart. To be able to master the sword art to such an extent using just a notebook was indeed extraordinary. Although he hadn't seen Qin Zhen use a sword, he could roughly tell from Qin Mu, whom she had taught. Only Zhou Wen could say not bad. In the eyes of others, it wasn't as simple as not bad. Upon hearing Zhou Wen's words, the students and Qin Mu had the urge to roll their eyes. Was there a need for him to praise the female sword immortal sword art? Furthermore, what did he mean by not bad? Was he praising or criticizing her? I don't deserve so much praise, senior. My sword art still has many shortcomings. It's not even a fraction of yours. If not for your guidance, I wouldn't have my achievements today. Qin Jin said seriously. Upon hearing Qin Jin's words, the entire campus seemed to explode. Qin Mu widened his eyes and stared at Zhou Wen in disbelief. Who is this person? Qin Jin actually said that her sword art was thanks to his pointers. Is there such an impressive figure in our school? In terms of sword arts, I'm afraid only Overseer and Enchancellor Lang can guide the female sword immortal. However, this person is so young. He definitely isn't Chancellor Lang or Overseer and... I think Qin Jin is being polite. This person might be the teacher who initiated her journey. Yes, that must be it. However, he's not very old. He's not much older than Qin Jin. How can he have initiated her journey? What's this senior's name? Does no one know him? As everyone discussed, Qin Jin continued. Senior... There are still many things that I don't understand about my sword art. Can you give me some pointers? I'm willing to pay any price. Everyone was dumbfounded when she said that. Qin Zhen, the Federation's female sword immortal, actually wanted him to give pointers for her sword art. This was definitely not something a teacher who initiated her journey could do. The only possibility was that this person's sword arts were better than Qin Zhen's, and not just by a little. Who is he? Could he be the legendary swordsman tomorrow, Ming Xiao? I heard that Ming Xiao had once attended classes at our school. Perhaps he had taught Qin Zhen back then. It's not Professor Ming. It's not like we haven't seen Professor Ming's photo before. This senior isn't as delicate as Ming Xiao. Ming Xiao might not necessarily be stronger than Qin Zhen, right? Sis, this, who is this senior? Qin Mu stammered. This is Senior Zhou Wen. How can you not know him? Qin Zhen finally heard Qin Mu's words and answered. Zhou Wen. He's the Zhou Wen who was once invincible among his peers, and suppress the younger generation of the six families. Holy sh asterisk t, so it's him. 
No wonder. I just didn't expect Qin Jin to have learned her sword art from him. I heard that he has been holding down the fort at Chess Mountain for the past few years. It's no wonder I don't recognize him. Upon hearing Qin Jin say Zhou Wen's name, many students felt relieved. Although Zhou Wen wasn't in school most of the time, he was one of Sunset College's legends. Follow me, Zhou Wen said to Qin Jin before turning to leave. Qin Jin immediately followed without any hesitation. Everyone wanted to follow, but Zhou Wen and company quickly left campus, while the students couldn't. Zhou Wen took Qin Jin to the Yun family's training room and got her to showcase her sword art. She was stronger than Zhou Wen expected. Qin Jin's talent and concept in sword arts were also better than his expectations. Wait a moment. Zhou Wen took out a pen and paper from the chaos bead and planned on writing down his experience of transcendent flying immortal for Qin Jin. Zhou Wen didn't care if his sword art would spread. If someone could learn his sword art, he had to hope that there would be a few more people like Qin Jin among humans. Unfortunately, Transcended Flying Immortal had extremely high requirements for cultivators. It was difficult to gain basic mastery, and it was even more difficult to achieve anything higher. Therefore, it wasn't suitable for most people to cultivate. Say Gasakai had also fused the concept of Transcended Flying Immortal into the Nitten Flying Immortal Ryu that made it easy for others to pick up. Although it resolved the problem of most people finding it difficult to gain basic mastery, it also indirectly raised the difficulty of reaching the pinnacle. For Zhou Wen, a person like Qin Jin was a rare inheritor who could pick up his mantle. That night, and Tianzhu sat at the dining table and saw in Sheng and in Jing sitting on both sides. He said with a frown, He's getting more and more unruly. Doesn't he know that it's time to eat? Even if he's not hungry, doesn't he know that children need to eat more during their growth spurt? And Sheng hurriedly said, Overseer young master when brought a guest back. He's currently busy in the training room. What guest is more important than Yer's body? If he wants to entertain guests, why doesn't he let Yer come back for dinner? And Tianzhu snorted coldly. I went to get Yer just now. She said she's not hungry. And Sheng said. And Tianzhu couldn't help but frown. After a pause, he asked. Who did he bring back? It's Qin Jin. And Sheng answered. Qin Jin? And Tianzhu was slightly taken aback. That female sword immortal from the college? Yes, overseer. What are they doing in the training room? And Tianzhua asked. I'm not sure. Perhaps they are sparring. And Shun said. And Tianzhua was no stranger to the name Qin Jin. There were very few experts from Sunset College. Hui Haifeng, Feng Chiyun, Li Xian, and Wei Gu were all very famous figures in the Federation. However, there weren't many who were truly willing to stay at Sunset College for the family and Luoyang. Hui Haifeng was now the federal president while Feng Chiyun was the pride of the Sea Return family. Although Li Xian's Li family was a wealthy family in Luoyang, Li Mabai was the one in charge. He wasn't an easy person to deal with. Sometimes, even in Tianzhua had a headache over him. Li Xian was out most of the year and seldom returned. There was no need to mention Wei Gu. He was in charge of the Special Investigation Bureau and was the eyes and ears of the Federation. Now that he had joined the League of Guardians, it was even more impossible for him to be used by the Yin family. Among the experts remaining on campus, Qin Jin was the strongest. However, and Tianzhua always believed that Qin Jin was more suitable for the battlefield than teaching in school. Therefore, he had personally persuaded Qin Jin to join the army many times, but Qin Jin had rejected him. Through their interaction, and Tianzhua knew that Qin Jin wasn't someone who was afraid of challenges, but for some reason, she was unwilling to leave the school. And Tianzhua found it odd that Qin Jin had followed Zhou when to the Yun family home. After some thought, he stood up and said, Let's go take a look. And Sheng and Jing got up and followed in Tianzhua to the training room. They were also very curious about what Zhou Wen and Qin Jin were doing. Chapter 1163 There's something very problematic about you. Young Master One, are you still busy? The food has been prepared. Overseer is here to take Miss Yer back. Why don't you let Miss Yer return for dinner? And Sheng arrived outside the training room and pressed the video doorbell. Before Zhou Wen could finish writing, he got Yer to open the door for and Sheng and company. Yer opened the door, and in Tianzhua, and company looked inside. Indeed, they saw Qin Jin standing there. However, what puzzled in Tianzhua, and company was that Qin Jin and Zhou Wen weren't sparring. It didn't even look like they had sparred. Instead, Zhou Wen was standing in front of a table, writing. Qin Jin was watching from the side, completely engrossed. Does this punk know calligraphy? And Tianzhua was puzzled. Writing beautiful words wasn't difficult for humans at their level, and their level of evolution. He didn't even need much practice. All he needed to do was take a look at some famous masterpieces, and he could easily imitate the beautiful fonts. However, a nice font didn't mean it was good calligraphy. One needed to fuse their thoughts into the words to form a unique style. 
Only then could it be called calligraphy. And Tianz was secretly glanced at it, and realized that although Zhou Wen's words weren't ugly, they definitely weren't good. Yet, such ordinary calligraphy left Qin Jin engrossed as she stood there motionless. Since it's not a problem of the text, it should be the content. And Tianzhou wanted to see what Zhou Wen had written, but Zhou Wen had already finished writing. After putting away the pen, Zhou Wen picked up the notebook and handed it to Qin Jin. Take a look. Can. Can I? Qin Jin didn't dare to take it. She had watched the entire process. Although Zhou Wen wrote quickly, and the content was too profound, Qin Jin had only taken a few general glances in many sections and hadn't read them carefully. However, just the content she saw made Qin Jin understand that Zhou Wen wasn't giving her parts of a sword art, but a systematic introduction to the sword art. Furthermore, it had some of Zhou Wen's own experience and insights. The value of this book made Qin Jin hesitate. Of course. Sword arts are created for people to use. If you can learn it, take it. Zhou Wen said indifferently. Qin Jin looked at Zhou Wen and saw that his expression was the same as when he had given her the notebook. She couldn't help but feel a little dazed as she reached out to receive the transcendent flying immortal notebook that Zhou Wen had written. And Tianzhu also understood that what Zhou Wen had written was likely some kind of sword art. From Qin Jin's solemn expression, he guessed that this sword art was no trifling matter. However, and Tianzhu didn't know if the sword art Zhou Wen had written was his or was obtained from somewhere else. And Tianzhu wanted to know, but he didn't ask. However, and Sheng didn't have any qualms. He said with a smile, Young Master Wen, are you very familiar with Sword Immortal Qin? Can you even study sword arts together? Before Zhou Wen could say a word, Qin Jin said with a serious expression, Ajitanen, don't joke around. How am I qualified to study sword techniques with Senior? Senior Zhou is my tutor. He taught me my sword arts. With that said, and Tianzhu and Nanjing Jing looked at each other. Qin Jin could be said to be one of the most outstanding women in Sunset College over the years. She could go down in history for the school. Yet, she said that Zhou Wen had taught her sword arts, but they knew very well that Zhou Wen had been missing for five years. How could he have taught Qin Jin sword arts? However, and Sheng didn't care. His eyes darted around as he said to Qin Jin. Qin Jin, since you learned your sword arts from young Master One, you should be focusing on actual combat. Are you interested in joining the Sunset Army? On the one hand, you can protect everyone. On the other hand, you can also hone your sword arts. Qin Jin didn't answer as she looked at Zhou Wen. Zhou Wen glared at Nsheng and said, My sword art does focus on actual combat, and it's extremely risky in actual combat. You might lose your life if you aren't careful. It's best to follow your heart and not be affected by others. And Sheng smiled without saying a word as though he hadn't seen Zhou Wen's glare. Qin Jin thought for a moment before looking at Nsheng and asking, can I go to the place that Senior went to in the past? Of course, but it's very dangerous there. And Sheng said solemnly, I'm not afraid of danger. Qin Jin said, Then it's settled. Sword Immortal Qin, Overseer has already prepared some food. Shall we have a meal with Young Master One? And Sheng said, Qin Jin nodded slightly and agreed. And Tianzhu was somewhat delighted when he saw Qin Jin agree. With Qin Jin's talent, it was too wasteful for her to teach on campus. After she trained in the military for a few years, she would definitely be a mighty person who could hold her own in the future. However, he had invited Qin Jin to join the army several times, but he hadn't been able to succeed. Now, Qin Jin had clearly joined the Sunset Army because of Zhou Wen. Zhou Wen hadn't even said a word, making Tianzhu very displeased. However, this didn't stop him from liking Qin Jin. He had already thought of how to train her, how to make her truly become a female sword immortal on the battlefield, and not just a female sword immortal in the arena. Although both represented excellent combat strength, there were still some differences. At the dining table, under Nsheng's guidance, Qin Jin told them what had happened between her and Zhou Wen. And Tianzhu and Nanjing were stunned. That punk really has good taste. Or was he lucky? He can actually produce a female sword immortal with just a crappy notebook? It must be luck. That punk might have only found her pretty. And Tianzhu couldn't accept that the person he thought highly of was someone Zhou Wen had unintentionally nurtured. After the meal, and Sheng got someone to take Qin Jin back, but Zhou Wen stopped him and pulled him to a corner. It wasn't easy to find a successor for my sword art. I don't want to see her die. Young Master One, don't worry. Qin Jin is talented, but she lacks the baptism of the battlefield. In the future, she will definitely become an existence like a war goddess. Overseer has long made plans for her. He definitely won't let such a person die in vain. And Sheng paused before saying, Furthermore, in this world, with Qin Jin's strength, it's only a matter of time before she enters the battlefield. It's better to do so earlier rather than later, don't you think? Zhou Wen naturally understood this principle. All he could do was sigh helplessly, 
and say nothing else. He too, had no choice. He didn't know how long he could live. And Shun was right. Letting Qin Jin enter the Sunset Army now, with Shun taking care of her and in Tianzhu's recognition, was better than being forced to participate in a battle in the future. Young Master One, I realize that there's something very problematic about you. And Shun suddenly sized up Zhou Wen and said in a strange tone. Zhou Wen felt his hair stand on end from Shun's gaze. Ah Shun, don't spout nonsense. What problem can I have? Chapter 1164 Bad News We are already so familiar with each other. Young Master One, just admit it honestly. My lips are sealed. And Shun said with a wink. What do I admit? Zhou Wen's heart skipped a beat as he thought to himself. Could it be that Shung has discovered the secret of the phone? You're actually a reincarnator, right? And Shung whispered. What's a reincarnator? Is it some level? Or a guardian? Zhou Wen asked in a daze. Stop pretending. A reincarnator is someone who has lived once and returned to the past. Young Master One, you are a reincarnator, right? Don't worry, I won't tell anyone. And Shung said. Zhou Wen finally understood what Shung meant. He said, at a loss whether to laugh or cry. Have you watched too much television recently? Have you been brainwashed by television? And Shun smiled and said, Young Master One, if you weren't a reincarnator, how could you do so many things that seem prescient? What have I done that seemed prescient? Zhou Wen was puzzled. And Shun listed them one by one. After you became Wang Ming Yuan's disciple, he entered the dimension and became an overlord of the dimension. You have a good relationship with Wang Ming Yuan's disciples. Now that Hui Haifeng has become the president of the Federation, he has developed mythical serums. It's like he has a cheat code. Zhong Zia might very well be the president of the Holy Spirit Association. That fellow, Lu Yun, has footprints all over Earth. He has entered countless mysterious dimensional zones and has stolen countless benefits. He's known as the number one thief. What's outrageous is that you have a good relationship with Li Xian. Li Xian is almost immortal now. Furthermore, he has an extremely good relationship with the Dugu family and has great influence. Feng Qiuyan and Ming Xiu both view you as their master. Now, they are known as the dual masters of swords and sabers. Their fame has shaken the Federation. They are the idols of young blades men. Even worse is that a random notebook you threw at her created a female sword immortal. Do you dare say that you aren't a reincarnator? You must have known that they had excellent talent long ago, so you established a relationship with them, right? Ah Sheng, I think with your imagination, it's a waste of talent not to write novels. Zhou Wen didn't explain as he turned around and left. In fact, Zhou Wen couldn't explain it. Thinking about it, he really did look like AF Asterisk King Reincarnator. It's just a joke. Young Master One, don't be angry. And Shung chased after him. He was indeed joking. How could there be reincarnators in this world? However, Zhou Wen's pass was indeed like a bug in games. Tsukuyami sat in the stone pavilion in the yard with her phone in her hand, but she wasn't looking at it. Instead, she stared blankly at the moon in the sky and sat motionless for a long while. Eventually, Tsukuyami retracted her gaze and sighed softly. She muttered to herself, Must I really leave? As she muttered to herself, Tsukuyami switched on her phone and looked at Zhou Wen's number in the chat app. After clicking it open, she entered some words. Then, seemingly finding it inappropriate, she deleted them and wrote some words before deleting them again. After repeating this process a few times, Tsukuyami ultimately didn't send the message and locked the phone. This is my life. Why do I have to do so much? Tsukuyami put down her phone and stared blankly at the sky. She knew that she didn't have much time left. In the middle of the night, an urgent message was placed on Tianzhu's desk. And Tianzhu read it again and again with a heavy expression. Overseer, did something really happen in Netherworld City? And Sheng rushed over in a hurry without even buttoning his clothes. This was almost impossible for Sheng. Even in a life and death situation, he would tidy himself up meticulously. He wouldn't be so flustered even if the sky collapsed. And Tianzhu's expression darkened as he nodded slightly and said, Missing. Everyone has gone missing. The people we sent found Netherworld City and saw where my mother and company had stationed themselves. However, there wasn't a single person at the camp. From the traces at the scene, I don't know why, but they entered Netherworld City. Did anyone enter Netherworld City to look for them? And Shang hurriedly asked, Yes, but they didn't see anyone. And Tianzhu said, That's impossible. Madam and the rest are already very familiar with the situation in Netherworld City. Even if they were forced to enter, it's impossible for them to die in such a short period of time. And Shang said in disbelief, There's indeed no one. It's as though they vanished into thin air. And Tianzhu said as he stood up and said calmly, Make preparations. I'm going to Netherworld City. Also, 
Don't tell Anjing about this. After a pause, and Tianzue added, Don't tell that punk either. Young Master Wen knows Netherworld City very well. If he travels with us, the chances of rescuing Madam will be much higher. And Shun said, His surname isn't an, nor is he my mother's son. He has no obligation to risk his life for us. And Tianzue said, But, and Shun wanted to say something, but he was interrupted by An Tianzue. No buts. Make the preparations. Do as I say and prepare everything as soon as possible. I have to set off before noon today. And Tianzue waved his hand, gesturing for An Sheng to prepare. Yes. And Sheng could only leave to prepare. After some hesitation, And Sheng finally went to Zhou Wen's yard and told him about it. Zhou Wen's expression turned solemn after hearing the news. Oh Yang Lan and company had long figured out the situation in Netherworld City. Even if they were forced to enter, they should have been able to come out. Even if they couldn't come out, it was impossible that they would die so quickly. Now that they were nowhere to be found, either dead or alive, Zhou Wen thought of a terrifying possibility. Could it be that they experienced all the punishments and saw the true netherworld? Zhou Wen's expression changed. He remembered very clearly what City Lord Netherworld had said. The netherworld city he saw wasn't the real netherworld city. Only by experiencing all the punishments could one enter the real netherworld. See. Ah Sheng, I need to make a trip. Help me take care of this place. Zhou Wen originally wanted to leave Yu behind, but to his surprise, Yu looked at him. Zhou Wen knew from her gaze that it was impossible to leave her here again. Young Master Wen, go to Netherworld City with Overseer. You can take care of each other. And Shun said, No, I'm not going to Netherworld City. I want to make a trip to the South District. Zhou Wen said, South District? And Sheng was slightly taken aback, unsure what Zhou Wen meant. If I'm not wrong, I have to find someone to say Sislan. Zhou Wen said, who? And Sheng hurriedly asked. Li Xian. Zhou Wen knew that he had to find Li Xian as soon as possible and get him to follow him to Netherworld City. If he wasted too much time, it would probably be useless even if he entered the real Netherworld. Chapter 1165 Myriad Elephant Valley Earth had undergone serious dimensionalization. Even a mythical expert wouldn't be able to travel from the East District to the South District as easily as they had done five years ago. Even if everything went smoothly, it would probably take more than half a month to make the trip. Thankfully, Zhou Wen was proficient in spatial teleportation and had a spatial calamity grade expert, Tsukuyumi, by his side. Zhou Wen's spatial teleportation ability wasn't enough to provide him with precise positioning from great distances, much less teleporting with Yer and company. However, for the calamity grade Tsukuyumi, teleporting them to the Dugu family in the South District was just a matter of waving her hand. As he didn't know where Li Xian was, Zhou Wen had no choice but to make a trip to the Dugu family residence to find Worm Dugu and ask him where he was. The Dugu family was known as the most cowardly family. Even their old residence was built directly in a dimensional zone. The large-scale breakout of dimensional creatures didn't affect the Dugu family much. The dimensional zone where the Dugu family's old residence was was called Myriad Elephant Valley. There were no elephants there, but the valley was strange. Without the guidance of the Dugu family, even a mythical expert might not be able to walk out and for the rest of his life would be trapped in Myriad Elephant Valley. At that moment, a man and a woman were standing outside the Myriad Elephant Valley with a little girl, a golden eagle, and a white antelope. They were sizing up the stone monument outside Myriad Elephant Valley. This entourage was naturally Zhou Wen and Tsukuyumi. The chick and antelope also followed. Zhou Wen wanted them to stay with the Yan family, but they refused. Outside Myriad Elephant Valley stood a stone monument. On the left of the stone monument were the words, Calling to the heavens and earth, none heed my call. On the right were the words, A life of solitude. Zhou Wen looked at it for a long time and found it odd. It wasn't a couplet, nor was it a poem. It looked odd no matter how he looked at it. If it's a life of solitude, it might be a name chosen because of superstition, but, when written in Chinese characters, the word, solitude, is written in opposite order from the Dugu family's surname. It shouldn't be a human name. Zhou Wen looked outside Myriad Elephant Valley for quite some time but he didn't see anyone from the Dugu family. However, Zhou Wen's eyes and ears were extremely sharp. He had long discovered that there were many strange creatures lurking around. There were goo that resembled grains of sand and dimensional creatures that resembled grass. The seemingly calm entrance to Myriad Elephant Valley was actually filled with killing intent. However, the strange creatures didn't attack solely because they hadn't received their master's orders. I'm Zhou Wen, a friend of Worm Dugu. I'm here to visit. Zhou Wen shouted at the valley. You are Zhou Wen from Luoyang's and family. A voice sounded from the valley, but no one could be seen. I'm from Luoyang, but my surname isn't in. My name is Zhou Wen. Zhou Wen said. Why do you want to see our second master? That voice sounded again. 
I have something to ask him. Zhou Wen was slightly taken aback when he heard the title second master. Then, he recalled that Warm Dugu was ranked second in his generation. Dugu called him second uncle. Presumably, this second master was what juniors called him. What is it? The voice asked again. I can only say it when I see Warm Dugu. Zhou Wen said with a frown. Second master isn't home. Go back. The person in the valley said again. Where did he go? Zhou Wen was somewhat depressed when he heard that. If Warm Dugu wasn't around, it would be even harder to find the Xian. He couldn't wait that long. I don't know, the voice in the valley said. Since I can't find Li Xian, I can only try to receive Netherworld City's punishment myself. Zhou Wen was somewhat depressed. He had tried Netherworld City's punishment. If he didn't use Great Brahma to cheat, Zhou Wen wasn't confident that he could survive all the punishments. However, if he used Great Brahma to cheat, he wouldn't be able to open the true entrance to the Netherworld. Therefore, it was best if he could find Li Xian. If he couldn't, Zhou Wen could only give it a try himself. Just as he was about to leave, he suddenly heard a bang. Turning his head, he saw a man covered in blood rush out of Myriad Elephant Valley and fall to the ground. Save me! I know where Second Master is! The man seemed to use his last ounce of strength as he shouted at Zhou when before fainting. Zhou Wen immediately saw that the person's injuries weren't trivial. They weren't as simple as losing consciousness. He was about to die. In his body, he could see many goo drilling around. His heart and other organs were riddled with holes. It was already a miracle that he was still alive. Zhou Wen originally didn't plan on crossing the Dugu family, but something was amiss about this whole thing. Furthermore, the person said that he knew of Worm Dugu's whereabouts. Just as Zhou Wen was watching, swarms of worms suddenly flew out of Myriad Elephant Valley like black fog and swept towards the unconscious man. Zhou Wen summoned the Bronze Sparrow's sword and made it fly over. Wherever the flames passed, large swaths of worms were immediately burned to death. This is a family matter for our Dugu family. I believe it has nothing to do with you. The voice in the valley sounded again. Your Dugu family's matters are indeed unrelated to me, but he knows Worm Dugu's whereabouts. After he wakes up and tells me Worm Dugu's whereabouts, I'll hand him over to you. Zhou Wen said as he walked towards the unconscious man. The man's condition was terrible. His body was almost shutting down from the goose bites. The only difference from a dead person was his breathing. He needed immediate treatment. He doesn't know Second Master's whereabouts. He just wants to use you to escape. The voice in the valley said. We'll know if it's true after asking. Zhou Wen stood in front of the man and began carving the ancient Sovereign Sutra on the Wheel of Destiny. In his present situation, ordinary healing abilities were useless. Even if he used the rejuvenation pill, he could only heal some wounds. However, the goo in his body were still there. It was useless just to heal his wounds. Only the ancient Sovereign Sutra could heal this man under such circumstances and extract all the goo in his body. It's not up to you to decide on the Dugu family's matters. Just as Zhou Wen was about to help the man, he saw another person rush out of Myriad Elephant Valley. Zhou Wen took a careful look and saw that the person's face was covered in a black veil. His entire body was wrapped up, making it impossible to see his appearance. All he knew was that it was a man. Zhou Wen, I've heard of your name. You are indeed an impressive person. However, this is a family matter of my Dugu family. If you insist on interfering, even if our Dugu family is unwilling, we can only treat you as an enemy and dispose of you with all our might. At the moment the black robed man appeared, a large number of goo flew out with him. It was unknown how many of them there were. Furthermore, there were many types, not just one. If you trust our Dugu family, I can use the Dugu family's reputation to guarantee that this traitor doesn't know the whereabouts of Worm Dugu. He only wants to use you. The black robed man said again. Zhou Wen felt that the black robed man's words made sense, but he didn't plan on returning the person. He had to personally interrogate him. Chapter 1166 God of Unkilling Zhou Wen reached out to grab the man on the floor. The black robed man didn't hesitate to order a large number of goo to lunge at the unconscious man. Like a sandstorm, they were everywhere. The characteristics of those goo were completely different. If it were an ordinary person, they would definitely not be able to handle so many. Before Zhou Wen could move, Chick let out a long cry. Countless goo instantly fell from the sky. Although they didn't die, they lay on the ground trembling completely ignoring their master's orders. The black robed man's pupils constricted as he urged the goo, but it was completely useless. Even the mythical goo were trembling silently on the ground. No matter how he urged, there was no reaction. The man in black bit the tip of his tongue and spat out a mouthful of blood. He wanted to use his blood essence to jolt the goo, but the goo remained motionless. How is this possible? The black robed man was alarmed. Those goo's lives were intricately connected to him. He had forcefully spewed out his blood essence and essence energy to stimulate his potential, 
making the goo feel the threat of death. Usually, they would fight to the death. Even if they encountered their natural enemy, they would fight to the death. However, no matter how he stimulated his body's potential, the goo didn't move as he wished, they only trembled. Showen had already grabbed the unconscious man by the collar and lifted him up. Showen, do you know that our Dugu family has worked with the Yin family for many years? Do you really want to destroy the trust and relationship the two families have built over the years because of a traitor's lies? The black-robed man paused before continuing. Furthermore, he has already been poisoned by all kinds of goo. It's impossible for him to live on. Is it worth it to do all that for a person who's about to die? Hand him over to me. Our Dugu family will think of a way to contact Second Master. You just need to wait for a period of time. I've already told you that my surname isn't in. Furthermore, if the relationship is so easily severed, there's no point maintaining it. Showen looked at the man in his hand and continued. Most importantly, I don't have that much patience. With that said, Showen stabbed at the man's body with his other hand. His fingers that were akin to a sharp blade stabbed into the man's body with a resplendent glow. His hand was like a blade as it slashed across the man's body repeatedly. When the black-robed man saw Zhou Wen's actions, he imagined that he was going to personally finish off the unconscious man. He said with a smile, Whoever understands the times is a great man. The Duga family will remember your friendship. We will find second master as soon as possible. Before he could finish his sentence, his smile froze on his face. Then, his eyes were filled with horror. Zhou Wen's final punch struck the unconscious man. The goo that had drilled into his body were sent flying. Even the brain-drilling worms, that had drilled into his brain were no exception. The moment the goo were blasted out, Chick spat out a golden flame that burned all the goo to ashes. The black-robed man clearly saw that Joe Wynn's attack had beaten the man into a pulp. There was no reason for him to continue living, nonetheless the man's injuries rapidly healed. In an instant, he was like a normal person. The wounds on his body were completely gone. The unconscious man had already woken up. He landed on the ground and crawled up. He looked at his body in surprise and delight. Zhou Wen, my Dugu family is being besieged by a group of unknown people. Second Master and the rest are trapped in Myriad Elephant Valley. The man anxiously shouted at Zhou Wen. Really? Zhou Wen frowned as he looked at the black-robed man. The black-robed man wasn't flustered at all. He said with a smile, Don't tell me you will listen to a traitor spouting nonsense. Does that mean the Dugu family is fine? Zhou Wen asked. They're not exactly fine. It's just a matter caused by this traitor. We'll naturally be fine after capturing him the black-robed man said. Jowen, you must not believe him. He's not a member of our Dugu family, the man said anxiously. Isn't your method too despicable? You want to incite Jowen to become enemies with my Dugu family so that you can escape in the chaos? It's useless. You are also a member of the Dugu family, so you should know the means of the Dugu family, the black-robed man said indifferently. The man was about to say something when Jowen interrupted him and said, Since the Dugu family is fine, I'll take him in to take a look. If he's a traitor, I'll personally hand him over to Worm Dugu. All right, let's do that. I'll go in with you. The man was delighted when he heard that and hurriedly expressed his stance. Sure. The black-robed man agreed without any hesitation. He even looked at the man and sneered. I'm killing Dugu. I'm afraid you are mistaken to use such means to sow discord between our Dugu family and Jowen. Jowen and Second Master are close friends. So what if you let him enter Myriad Elephant Valley? However, unkilling Dugu said to Jowen. Jowen, you have to be careful. Since he's letting us into the valley, there must be an ambush inside. Your name is Unkilling Duga? Jowen didn't know who was speaking the truth or who was lying. However, he knew the name Unkilling Dugu. This person was very famous in the Dugu family. His birth name wasn't this, but after condensing a life providence named God of Unkilling, he had the nickname Unkilling Dugu. Perhaps because the name of the God of Unkilling was too resounding, eventually, no one remembered his original name. The god of unkilling was indeed famous, but it was famous for being a crippled life providence. This was because with this life providence, unkilling Dugu couldn't even kill an ant. His life providence destined him to never be stained with blood. Yes! Unkilling Dugu nodded. Your life providence is the god of unkilling? Jowen sized up unkilling Dugu and was somewhat suspicious. This was because the legendary unkilling Dugu was likely in his 40s or 50s, and this man looked to be in his 30s. Yes! Unkilling Dugu saw Zhou Wen's puzzlement and explained. The essence energy art I cultivate is somewhat special. It makes me look much younger than my actual age. Perhaps this is the benefit of not killing. Zhou Wen nodded and didn't harp on Unkilling Dugu's identity. He looked at the black-robed man and asked. Can we enter the valley now? Of course, you can do so anytime. I still have to thank you for helping our Dugu family capture the traitor. 
Our Dugu family will definitely repay you. However, you have to watch over unkilling Dugu. He's very sinister and he's cunning. Don't let him escape. As the black robed man spoke, he made an inviting gesture before walking towards Myriad Elephant Valley. He can't escape. Joe and gestured for Unkilling Dugu to lead the way. Unkilling Dugu didn't hesitate. He gritted his teeth and walked towards Myriad Elephant Valley without any intention of retreating. Joe and followed behind Unkilling Dugu into Myriad Elephant Valley. Yurtsukuyami, Chick, and the Antelope followed. Chapter 1167 Unable to Tell the Truth Myriad Elephant Valley looked like a valley from the outside, but after walking in, he realized that there was a sea of clouds in front of him. Continuous mountain peaks protruded from the sea of clouds. It was a magical scene. As for the spot where Zhou Wen and company were standing, it was surprisingly the top of a mountain. Wherever they looked, they could see palaces in the sea of clouds. They looked like real existences, but also like mirages. In the sky, there were three suns and seven moons. There were even mountain peaks that grew in the opposite direction, as though they were about to plunge into the sea of clouds from above, forming an extremely bizarre world. Zhou Wen turned around and realized that the entrance to the valley had vanished. The Dugu family's old residence was extremely mysterious, unknown to outsiders. Zhou Wen didn't know much about Myriad Elephant Valley, so he couldn't help but marvel at such a scene. However, Zhou Wen didn't see the scene of the battle, nor did he discover any signs of battle. This was different from what Unkilling Dugu had said. The truth is obvious. You should now know who's lying, right? The black robed man said to Zhou Wen with a smile. Unkilling Dugu hurriedly explained. Zhou Wen, don't believe him. There's an all-encompassing taboo in Myriad Elephant Valley. Everything here is constantly changing. Everything is a superposition of reality and illusion. Be it the mountain peaks or the palaces, they are constantly switching between reality and illusion. Second Master and the rest are trapped in the old residence. The old residence is on Boundless Mountain. At this hour, it should still be in an incorporeal state, preventing us from entering. However, as long as we reach Boundless Mountain, we can see the ethereal Boundless Mountain and those people. Since you say so, I'll take Joe into Boundless Mountain to take a look. Let's see how long you can insist otherwise. The black robed man said as he turned around and flew in a certain direction. Just as Zhou Wen was about to summon his flying mount, he saw Chick flap its wings and immediately fly up. It grew bigger and bigger in midair, quickly turning into a golden cloud. Chick chirped at Zhou Wen as though it wanted him to sit on its back. Zhou Wen was delighted when he saw that Chick had such a transformation ability. He carried Yur onto Chick's back as Tsukuyami and the antelope followed. Chick glared at Unkilling Dugu when he wanted to come up. Unkilling Dugu wasn't in the mood to fuss over this. He summoned an avian companion beast and followed. After flying for a while, Unkilling Dugu suddenly shouted, That's not right. The direction he's heading in isn't Boundless Mountain. That's... The black robed man in front stopped and stared at Unkilling Dugu with a sneer. So that's how it is. You want to use Joe when strength to rush into the Shinra Temple. What a good plan. Nonsense. The direction you are heading in is the Shinra Temple. Joe Wen, this is the way to Boundless Mountain. You have to believe me, said Unkilling Dugu anxiously. Zhou Wen watched the two of them argue, momentarily unable to tell who was speaking the truth and who was lying. However, Zhou Wen was more willing to believe Unkilling Dugu. This was because up to now, they had not seen a second member of the Dugu family. If the black robed man was telling the truth, why didn't a member of the Dugu family come out to help him explain? As long as the other members of the Dugu family came out, they could naturally convince Zhou Wen. Although Zhou Wen didn't know them all, he knew a few important figures of the Dugu family. You keep saying that the Dugu family is fine. Then call the other members of the Dugu family out. Unkilling Dugu had clearly thought of this. The black robed man frowned and said, Boundless Mountain is in an ethereal state. No one can come out. Are you going to tell Zhou Wen that you are the only one guarding the entire Myriad Elephant Valley today? Unkilling Dugu said coldly. The black robed man hesitated for a moment before explaining to Zhou Wen. Today is the day of our Dugu family's grand ceremony. Apart from me in charge of guarding the pass, everyone else is at Boundless Mountain. If you don't believe me, you'll know when you get there. Didn't you say that Second Master isn't around? Now, you're saying that they're all at Boundless Mountain? Unkilling Dugu caught the flaw in the black robed man's words. Second Master hasn't returned at all. It's naturally impossible for him to participate in a grand ceremony, the black robed man said. Shouwen saw the two of them exchange words. Although what Unkilling Dugu said made sense, he couldn't completely believe it. What kind of place is Shinra Temple? Zhou Wen couldn't decide who to listen to. Shinra Temple is the most mysterious place in Myriad Elephant Valley. There are extremely terrifying dimensional creatures suppressed inside. It's a forbidden zone for my Dugu family. No one is allowed to enter. In the past, people from my Dugu family accidentally entered, 
but they were never to be found. He's luring us over because he wants to use the power of the Shinra Temple to kill us. I'm killing Dugu said. Zhou looked at the black robed man who said, Shinra Temple is indeed our Dugu family's forbidden zone. Outsiders are not allowed to enter. It's extremely dangerous inside. In that case, why did you say that unkilling Dugu wants to rush into the Shinra Temple? Jowen asked. The black robed man answered. Others will definitely die if they enter, but it's different if unkilling Dugu goes in. If he enters, not only will he not die, but he will also obtain extremely terrifying power. We definitely can't let him enter. Others die if they enter, but I obtain terrifying power when I enter. Isn't that ridiculous? said unkilling Dugu. The matter is rather complicated. It's a long, complicated story. To put it simply, it's related to unkilling Dugu's life providence. If he enters and obtains the power of the Shinra Temple, not only will our Dugu family be damaged, but the entire Federation will also be greatly affected. Therefore, we definitely can't let him succeed, the black robed man said. Zhou Wen really couldn't tell who was speaking the truth. Zhou Wen, he's stalling for time. Second Master and the rest are trapped in Boundless Mountain. If we are late, I'm afraid there'll be no hope. Unkilling Dugu said anxiously. Zhou Wen, I know that you have a good relationship with Second Master. If you are tricked by him and forcefully barge into the Shinra Temple, my Dugu family will be severely damaged. How will Second Master forgive himself? The black robed man said. What's suppressed in Shinra Temple? A dimensional creature? Guardian? Or is it something else? Jowen had no choice but to continue asking. I don't know. It is a secret of my Dugu family. Only the incumbent patriarchs know the truth. The black robed man said. Your claims are full of flaws. Since only the patriarch knows the truth, how do you know that I will obtain immense benefits if I enter? You are clearly stalling for time. Jowen, quickly save second master and the rest. It will really be too late if you delay any further. Unkilling Dugu wore an anxious expression. Chapter 1168 Shinra Temple Going anywhere is fine, Tsukuyami suddenly said to Zhou Wen. Zhou Wen found it reasonable. With a calamity great big shot like Tsukuyami with him, there was no danger to speak of no matter which route they took. Furthermore, there was the antelope of unknown level beside him. With such a powerful lineup, it would be difficult for anything to happen. However, Zhou Wen's character was different. He felt that the resolution of anything with force was the last resort. He had a nagging feeling that there was no way to resolve the problem with force. Once he failed, there was no way out. He didn't like that feeling. Today was somewhat different. Zhou Wen didn't have the time to waste. He had to find Li Xian as quickly as possible before taking him to Netherworld City. Let's head over there to take a look. Zhou Wen thought for a moment and finally chose the direction that Unkilling Dugu had mentioned. Zhou Wen chose to head in this direction not because he believed Unkilling Dugu, but because in theory, if they were telling the truth, it either meant that the black robed man was luring them to their deaths, while Unkilling Dugu only wanted to obtain strength. The latter was relatively less dangerous. In both cases, he would be tricked, but the latter was clearly safer. Zhou Wen, if he enters the Shinra Temple, the consequences will be unimaginable, the black robed man said with a heavy expression. He knew that he couldn't stop Zhou Wen, so he could only continue. If you have to go, it's best you imprison Unkilling Dugu. There's no need. Let's go! Zhou Wen shook his head. He had his own thoughts, so there was no need to imprison Unkilling Dugu. Let's leave quickly. I hope we can still save Second Master and the rest. Unkilling Dugu rode his bird and flew in the direction he had chosen. Zhou Wen, do you know what you've done? The black robed man asked with a frown. Zhou Wen didn't say a word as he got Chick to speed up and followed behind Unkilling Dugu. The black robed man followed. Although he knew that he couldn't stop Zhou Wen, it was impossible for him to do nothing. All he could do was wait for an opportunity. Under Unkilling Dugu's lead, the group flew through the sea of clouds, passing through various mountain peaks and palaces. Some palaces were just illusions. They could directly pass through the palaces, but some palaces and mountains that looked like phantoms turned corporeal moments later. It looked magical and strange. On many mountain peaks, the figures of dimensional creatures could be seen. However, in the illusory mountain peaks, the dimensional creatures couldn't rush out. The corporeal mountain peaks were circled by unkilling Dugu. Clearly, he didn't wish to waste time. After flying for more than an hour, the man in black, who had been silently following behind, suddenly said, Jinra Temple is ahead. Now is the time. If we let him rush in, it will be too late to stop him. What's inside Shinra Temple? Jowen asked. He felt that even if the black robed man wasn't lying, he had to be hiding something. A palace appeared in the sea of clouds in front of him. Unlike the other palaces, this palace was inverted at the end of the sky above. There were many mountain peaks hanging down from the sky in Myriad Elephant Valley, but there was only one inverted palace. 
Regardless of whether this palace was Shinra Temple, it was an extraordinary place. At this point, seeing that Unkilling Dudu was gradually approaching the palace, the black-robed man hesitated for a moment before saying, I don't know much. I only know that there's a person trapped in Shinra Temple. A person? Jowen was somewhat puzzled. A member of our Duga family. Furthermore, he's someone we can't let Unkilling Duga meet. This is what the patriarch said. There's definitely no mistake. The black-robed man looked at Unkilling Dugu and continued. It's not too late to stop him now. Don't let him in. Jowen said to Unkilling Dugu. The palace ahead isn't Boundless Mountain, right? There's no need to approach it. Let's circle around it. All right. Unkilling Dugu agreed verbally, but he didn't change his direction. He continued charging towards the inverted palace. At this moment, it was obvious that Unkilling Dugu had been lying. His goal was the palace. Chick let out a long cry and spewed out golden flames at Unkilling Dugu. Although Chick now looked like an eagle, it actually had a phoenix bloodline. It spewed out phoenix flames, and Unkilling Dugu and his companion beast were swept into the terrifying golden flames. The mythical companion beast was burned to ashes. Even Unkilling Dugu was a flame and on the brink of turning to ashes. Even so, Unkilling Dugu didn't die. With his body burning with phoenix flames, he suddenly sped up and transformed into a stream of light that rushed towards the inverted palace. He can still live despite being burned to such a state. His ability is almost comparable to Li Xian's. Zhou Wen looked at Tsukuyami. With a calamity like Tsukuyami around, it was impossible for Unkilling Dugu to charge into the Shinra Temple. However, to his surprise, Tsukuyami had no intention of attacking at all. She only stood there and watched as the charred Unkilling Dugu tore through the door and rushed into the Shinra Temple. Zhou Wen was somewhat puzzled, but he wasn't too surprised. It's over! The black robed man sighed. Although he wanted to stop it, the speed that Unkilling Dugu had displayed at the end was something he couldn't stop. However, the black robed man also knew that it wasn't the time to blame Zhou Wen. Solving the problem was the priority. Zhou Wen, I'm afraid I'll have to trouble you to stop Unkilling Dugu later. You can't let him leave Myriad Elephant Valley. After the grand ceremony ends, our Dugu family will rush over to provide support. We are still about an hour away before the grand ceremony ends and Boundless Mountain materializes. I hope we can hold on until then, the black robe man said. Don't worry. I'll naturally answer for the trouble I've caused, Jowen said. The man in black shook his head and smiled bitterly. He thought to himself, you have no idea how big the trouble you have stirred up. However, since Jowen was willing to stay behind to help, he didn't harp on the matter. He continued, I don't know what kind of power Unkilling Dugu will obtain inside. You mustn't be careless. Prepare for the worst. If you have any means to deal with it, it's best you prepare immediately. Jowen nodded but didn't do anything. All he did was look at Shinra Temple. Shinra Temple was pitch black like ink. There were no signs of bricks at all, as though it was carved from a complete boulder. The appearance of the palace was ancient. It was only one floor, and it was squarish. It was somewhat different from ordinary rectangular palaces. However, this palace had no signs or plaques. He didn't know why it was called Shinra Temple. Why is this place called Shinra Temple? Jowen asked the black-robed man. This is the center of Myriad Elephant Valley, the core of everything. That's why we call it Shinra Temple. If you want to ask me what's inside, I'm afraid you'll be disappointed. I've already told you everything I know. I only know that there's a terrifying creature trapped inside, and it's a member of our Dugu family. The black-robed man said helplessly. As the two of them spoke, Tsukuyami suddenly walked towards the entrance of Shinra Temple. Chapter 1169 Nameless Dugu Seeing Tsukuyami walk over, Zhou Wen led Chick and the antelope towards Shinra Temple. When the black-robed man saw that Zhou Wen and company were about to enter the Shinra Temple, he hurriedly said, Shinra Temple's taboo powers are extremely strong. If someone who has killed enters, they will definitely be injured by the taboo power. If they have killed plenty, they will probably be killed on the spot. In this era, other than special people like Unkilling Dugu, who hadn't killed before, even vegetarians had to hunt dimensional creatures. Tsukuyami acted as if she hadn't heard him, and walked straight into Shinra Temple. Jowen had already engraved the heaven-opening scripture of the highest elder. It was very difficult for the taboo power to have any effect on him. If needed, Jowen could still use the power of the heaven-opening scripture to protect your and Chick. Ever since he had the scripture, the power of the heaven-opening scripture could not only protect him, but it could also be used on others. The antelope and Chick rushed in, looking even more anxious than Jowen. Jowen was puzzled. He didn't know why the two of them were in such a rush to enter, so he hurriedly followed. After entering Shinra Temple, he saw Tsukuyami, the antelope, and Chick inside. They weren't injured by the taboo power. Even Yur, who Zhou Wen was carrying, wasn't injured by the taboo power. 
If it wasn't for Zhou Wen's heaven opening scripture of the highest elder converting the taboo power into essence energy, Zhou Wen would have wondered if the taboo power mentioned by the black robed man existed. The black robed man stood outside Shinra Temple, but he didn't dare enter. He looked inside and realized that Zhou Wen and company hadn't been injured by the taboo power. He couldn't help but be surprised. What's going on with these fellows? Could it be that they have a special life providence, like unkilling Dugu? It was naturally impossible for Zhou Wen and company to have the god of unkilling life providence. Apart from the antelope, who he had no idea if it had killed before, everyone else had definitely killed something. Furthermore, an existence like Tsukuyami was an existence that had triggered a calamity. The number of lives she had killed was probably uncountable. The number of sins she had committed far exceeded that of ordinary creatures. However, Tsukuyami was a calamity great big shot. Since she had dared to enter Shinra Temple, she naturally had a way to deal with it. That wasn't something Zhou Wen could understand. Zhou Wen could roughly guess that Chick wasn't affected by Shinra Temple's taboo power. It had the bloodline of a phoenix, and the phoenix itself was a nirvana creature. It wasn't tainted by powers, like karmics and flames, so it was reasonable that the taboo powers of Shinra Temple were useless against it. As for how the antelope did it, Zhou Wen had no idea, but he didn't find it strange. The only thing that surprised Zhou Wen was that Yer wasn't affected. It looked like the taboo power hadn't descended on her at all. It was unknown how she had done it. Yura had killed any humans before, so she shouldn't be unaffected. Zhou Wen didn't think too much about it as he began sizing up Shinra Temple. He saw a seven-meter-tall stone furnace in the middle of the square stone temple, which had an ancient design. There were patterns like the sun, moon, and stars engraved on it, but they were simple dots and lines. It looked very crude. Chains extended out from the stone furnace, trapping a strange creature on the walls. At that moment, unkilling Dugu stood in front of the stone furnace and pressed his hand on the creature's body. The creature had a human body, but it had a bull's head. Furthermore, it was far taller than the average person. It was probably nearly three meters tall. Zhou Wen took a look and a mythical figure immediately appeared in his mind. He thought to himself, don't tell me this is ox head of the ox head and horse face. Guardians of the underworld? Unkilling Dugu pressed his hands on ox head's chest. It was strange. There was a strange force flowing towards unkilling Dugu from ox head. The power suffused a demonic golden light. After it entered unkilling Dugu's body, it made his body glow golden. Not only was his body changing, but it even began to condense golden armor that gradually enveloped his body. Is that the power of a guardian? That's not right. It's not a guardian. It seems to have the aura of a human. Could it be? Zhou Wen looked at Ox Head, who was tied to the stone furnace, and revealed a puzzled look. To simultaneously have the power of a guardian and the aura of a human, the only possibility Zhou one could think of was Wang Mingyuan and Zhong Zia's situation. The creature tied to the stone furnace is from your Dugu family? Zhou Wen turned to ask the black robed man outside the hall. The man in black shook his head. I don't know. I've never seen him with my own eyes. However, I think it should be him. Clearly, the black robed man wasn't too sure either. Perhaps he really wasn't lying. At this moment, unkilling Dugu, who was covered in golden armor, spoke. That's right. He's from our Dugu family. Furthermore, Everyone knows his name. Don't tell me he's that hero from the Dugu family. Zhou Wen's heart skipped a beat as he blurted out. Among the six heroes of the Federation, the only one who was still alive was the old hero of the Dugu family. However, what was the difference between living and dying if this was the way he lived? No, our patriarch is still presiding over the grand ceremony at Boundless Mountain, said the black-robed man. However, unkilling Dugu sneered and said, You are half right. He's our hero, but only half. What do you mean? Zhou Wen asked in puzzlement. The so-called six heroes should be seven, because our Dugu family has two heroes. Furthermore, they are twins. However, these twins are somewhat special. They basically don't appear in front of outsiders at the same time. Therefore, outsiders only know that my Dugu family's nameless Dugu is a hero, but they don't know that it's untrue that nameless doesn't have a name. It's just that they are two different people. They have their own names, and no one can replace the other. That's why they use this name said Unkilling Dugu. The black-robed man's eyes were filled with shock. Clearly, he hadn't known of such a thing in the past. Since he's the hero of the Dugu family, why is he trapped here? Zhou Wen asked. It's because he chose a different path and submitted to the Holy Temple. He obtained the power the Holy Temple gave him and even wanted to take the entire Dugu family with him. That's why he was imprisoned here by the other nameless Dugu. As Unkilling Dugu spoke, the golden light on the ox-headed man's body weakened. His extremely strong body began to shrink and quickly, it turned into a dried corpse. As for the golden light over unkilling Dugu's body, it intensified. A golden helmet appeared over his face. 
The helmet enveloped his entire head, in the shape of an ox head. Chapter 1170 Soul Extinguishing Divine Light From the looks of it, his strength suits you very well, Jowen said, as he sized up unkilling Dugu. You can't really talk about suitability. Apart from that old fart, I'm the only one from the Dugu family who can enter Shinra Temple. He has no other choice. Unkilling Dugu sized up Jowen in company and said, Thankfully, you aren't from my Dugu family. Otherwise, I wouldn't have had the chance to inherit nameless Dugu's power. Clearly, Zhou Wen and company weren't affected by Shinra Temple, leaving unkilling Dugu very surprised. If a single person wasn't affected, it could be said to be a coincidence. However, it was odd that so many people and pets weren't affected. However, this didn't matter. Unkilling Dugu had already obtained what he wanted. Even though Zhou Wen and company had entered, there was no way for them to stop him. Unkilling Dugu looked at Zhou Wen and said, I still have to thank you for saving my life and helping me obtain true strength. After I become the owner of Myriad Elephant Valley, I will definitely repay you. Since that half of Nameless Dugu failed to become the master of the Dugu family and is still trapped here, do you think you can do what he didn't? Jowen said. He can't, but I can, said Unkilling Dugu confidently. I'm afraid I can't give you such a chance. I have to resolve the trouble I caused. I can't trouble others, Jowen said. You're making things difficult for me. No matter what I owe you. I don't want to kill you, said Unkilling Dugu with a sigh. Your debt to the Dugu family is greater for raising you. You don't seem to have any intention of letting them off. I'm nothing, Jowen said. Indeed, since you've chosen this path, you have no choice but to continue. Unkilling Dugu nodded slightly and looked at Jowen. It's still not too late for you to back out now. Jowen didn't say a word as he looked at Tsukuyami and the antelope. Jowen felt that the reason that the two of them had entered so eagerly wasn't just to destroy Unkilling Dugu. Seeing Jowen remain silent, Unkilling Dugu continued. Boundless Mountain is about to corporealize. I don't have time to wait any longer. Since you aren't willing to back off, I can only send you on your way. As he spoke, the golden light over Unkilling Dugu's body turned into a blinding light. The golden light seemed to be able to pierce into a person's soul, as though it was about to melt it. The black robed man's expression changed drastically when he saw the golden light. He loudly warned Zhou Wen. Retreat quickly. That's the soul-washing divine light. What's the soul-washing divine light? Zhou Wen's body was bathed in the golden divine light, but he didn't sense anything special. Outsiders only know that Nameless Dugu is good at movement techniques, but very few people know that his strongest trait isn't his movement technique, but the soul-washing divine light. Those who are illuminated by the soul-washing divine light will have their memories wiped. No matter how strong your body is or how strong you are, if you don't have any memories, you'll be like a newborn baby. You will forget everything. It's useless even if you have a powerful body. Quickly retreat. Don't be illuminated by the soul-washing divine light again. You will completely lose your memories. The black robed man said anxiously when he saw that Zhou Wen still had no intention of moving. Without waiting for Zhou Wen to say anything, Unkilling Dugu spoke. This isn't the soul-washing divine light. It should be called the soul-extinguishing divine light. Nameless Dugu's original powers combined with mind produces an effect that far exceeds the original soul-washing divine light. Now, not only can this divine light wash away memories, but it can also wipe out one's souls, turning one's body into a soulless, empty shell. However, I'm indebted to you after all. Now, I'll only erase your memories. If you don't leave, the next step won't be as simple as erasing memories. Zhou felt that he really couldn't recall certain things, but it wasn't his present memory. Zhou looked at Tsukuyami again. She was the one who said that any path was fine. It was impossible for her to do nothing and leave the trouble to him, right? However, Tsukuyami's eyes didn't look at Unkilling Dugu at all. She kept staring at the stone furnace. The ox head on the stone furnace had already turned into a desiccated corpse. It looked like it would turn to dust the moment the wind blew. It looked like everything had been passed down to Unkilling Dugu. Tsukuyami wasn't looking at the creature, but the stone furnace itself. The stone furnace was ancient, and the patterns on it were very crude. If it wasn't so big and in a mysterious place like Shinra Temple, Jowen probably wouldn't have taken a second look at it. However, Tsukuyami seemed to be looking at it very carefully, as though she was observing the patterns inch by inch. Seeing that Jowen had no intention of retreating, Unkilling Dugu frowned and said, In that case, don't blame me. Let me use the strongest soul-extinguishing divine light to send you away. As Unkilling Dugu spoke, his eyes suffused a golden glow. The golden glow became brighter and brighter before finally turning into a blazing white color. At the same time, his body gradually fused with the divine light. It was as though only the pair of eyes that resembled blazing lamps hung in the air as they stared intently at Zhou Wen and company. He has already reached the terror grade. 
He's stronger than my family's old hero back then. Perhaps it's really as he said. That divine light might be able to wipe out souls. Quickly retreat. The black robed man said in horror. However, just as the black robed man finished speaking, he suddenly saw Tsukuyami beside Sho and move. She walked in the direction of the soul extinguishing divine light that illuminated the hall like it was daytime and walked towards unkilling Dugu. Unkilling Dugu was slightly taken aback when he saw this. However, he was still very confident in his soul extinguishing divine light. He gathered all his strength and stared at Tsukuyami with his blazing white eyes. Back then, Nameless Dugu had relied on the soul washing divine light to take his place among the six heroes. He had never encountered anyone who could match him. Back then, Nameless Dugu was only at the mythical stage. Later on, when he was trapped in the Shinra Temple, his strength improved further over time. He had already advanced to the terror grade. Now, with the addition of his powers, Unkilling Dugu refused to believe that this once invincible divine light couldn't kill the young woman. The terror grade soul extinguishing divine light completely bloomed, turning into two beams of divine light that shone on Tsukuyami. The black robed man outside felt his heart turn cold. He originally wanted to use Zhou Wen's strength to temporarily hold back on killing Dugu, but Zhou Wen had been too careless. The few of them had actually braved the attempt to withstand the soul extinguishing divine light, but there was no doubt about the destined outcome. However, in the next second, the black robed man's pupils suddenly constricted as his mouth gaped open as though he had been petrified. Unkilling Dugu's soul extinguishing divine light shone at Tsukuyami. With a wave of Tsukuyami's hand, the soul extinguishing divine light immediately vanished. As for Unkilling Dugu, his body was sent flying as he slammed into the stone furnace. His golden armor shattered. Blood spewed out of Unkilling Dugu's mouth, but his face was filled with disbelief, finding what had happened utterly unbelievable. Chapter 1171 Free Benefits No way! In a daze, the black robed man stared at Unkilling Dugu, who struggled to get up to no avail. He found it unbelievable. However, Tsukuyami didn't care about unkilling Dugu at all. Her gaze was still fixed on the stone furnace. Unkilling Dugu, who was staggering as he stood up, blocked her vision again. Her eyes focused, causing unkilling Dugu's body to fly away and slam into a stone wall to the side. He smashed his head and died on the spot. Tsukuyami ignored unkilling Dugu's death. Her gaze remained fixed on the stone furnace as she walked towards it step by step. As Tsukuyami walked towards the stone furnace, the originally simple and crude stone furnace began to tremble. The desiccated corpse that was tied to the stone furnace turned to ashes. The chains also shattered. The patterns of the sun, moon, and stars emitted a strange black aura. Everyone was attracted by the sudden turn of events, but Joe Wen felt for his mysterious phone. The mysterious phone vibrated violently, as though it was about to jump out. Joe Wen took it out and secretly took a look. Indeed, the dead man tree was stirring. Seeing everyone looking in the direction of the stone furnace, Zhou Wen took out his phone and snapped a picture of unkilling Dugu's corpse. Immediately, his corpse was stored into his phone and devoured by the dead man tree. A sprout finally grew from the dead man tree that had been barren for a long time. I never expected to benefit from nothing. Zhou Wen was delighted, but carrying her, he retreated with Chick. There was a limit to unkilling Dugu's strength regardless of how strong he was. However, the stone furnace's anomaly brought about unpredictable consequences. Zhou Wen didn't dare take risks considering how this wasn't in game. However, before Zhou Wen could leave the Shinra temple, he heard a bang as the door closed. Zhou Wen wanted to teleport out, but he found himself slamming into some spatial barrier and bounced back. Tsukuyami, what's happening? Zhou Wen had no choice but to turn to ask Tsukuyami. She seemed to know what the stone furnace was. Tsukuyami stared at the stone furnace and said, There's a powerful creature that doesn't belong to Earth in that stone furnace. A powerful creature that doesn't belong to Earth? Could it be a creature from the dimension? Zhou Wen's expression turned solemn. To be called powerful by Tsukuyami probably meant that it was not much weaker than her. Boom! Ghost aura spewed out from the stone furnace like a volcanic eruption. Accompanying it was a figure who rose from the stone furnace. It was an extremely ugly man. He wore black armor and emitted terrifying energy. Even with Zhou Wen's present strength, he felt his heart palpitate when he sensed the man's strength. He had goosebumps all over his arms. It wasn't fear but a natural reaction to overwhelming power. However, from the aura from his body, he was indeed somewhat different from the dimensional creatures born on Earth. His aura was somewhat similar to Ice Maiden's. It was very likely that he came from the dimension. However, according to what Zhou Wen knew, dimensional creatures that descended on Earth would be suppressed by Earth's rules. It was impossible for them to maintain their calamity great strength. Otherwise, dimensional creatures would have long invaded Earth. You actually dare disturb a king's slumber. Do you have any idea of the consequences? 
The terrifying creature floated above the stone furnace, like a god that looked down on all living beings as it enunciated each word clearly. Tsukuyami narrowed her eyes and looked at the dimensional creature. This isn't the dimension. It's not a place you can call yourself king. The eyes of the dimensional creature moved slightly as he sized up Tsukuyami. He said coldly, You have suffered a lot by staying on Earth, haven't you? At least I don't have to hide like a turtle. Tsukuyami said with a smile. These words immediately infuriated the dimensional creature. Ghost aura erupted from his body like a tsunami. Tsukuyami emitted a faint moonlight that shielded Joe when in company behind her. The moonlight constantly clashed with the ghostly aura before silently annihilating it. Jowen wasn't affected by the conflict behind Tsukuyami, but he could still sense the horror of the clash between the moonlight and the ghostly aura. He released Ice Maiden from the Chaos Bead and secretly asked her, Ice Maiden, do you know who that is? Ice Maiden had been trapped in the Chaos Bead for ages. Although there was food and water inside that prevented her from starving to death, it was miserably boring. Just as she was about to berate Jowen, she was alarmed by the dimensional creature she noticed from the corner of her eye. She didn't have the time to blame Joe when as she whispered. How is he still alive? Who is he? Joe went hurriedly asked when he saw that Ice Maiden recognized the dimensional creature. Ashura, the monarch of the Ashura clan, one of the Octokind. Ice Maiden said with a heavy expression. What is this place? Why is he here? Ashura clan's monarch? I remember you saying that among the Octokind, the monarchs of the Celestials and Dragons are the strongest. The others are weaker, right? Jowen felt a lot more at ease when he heard that. Although Azura was strong, he was probably weaker than Dtion, so he shouldn't be too difficult to deal with. Ice Maiden read Jowen's mind and curled her lips. The Dtion you defeated was only a body-cleansing stone avatar. It's hard to say how much strength he had. Furthermore, this Azura isn't the Azura of the present Azura clan. He's the previous Azura. In ancient times, he once defeated Dtion with martial strength. He also has another name. Not heaven. Like heaven, but not heaven. Ice Maiden paused for a moment before saying, However, in ancient times, his true body descended to earth and participated in the terrifying divine battle. Legend has it that he had long died in battle. Why is he here? What kind of place is this? Jowen felt that something was amiss when he heard that. He hurriedly explained the situation to Ice Maiden. After Ice Maiden heard what had happened, her expression changed. After a while she said, Something's wrong. There's something wrong with this not heaven. Dimensional creatures will be suppressed by the rules on earth. Unless they use the bodies of humans, they won't be able to unleash calamity great powers. However, he isn't attached to a human, but he can still release the power of a calamity grade. That leaves only one possibility. What possibility? Jowen hurriedly asked. He has given up on the dimension and betrayed it. Ice Maiden said. What do you mean? Jowen was puzzled. It's difficult to explain. All you need to understand now is that not heaven is already a traitor of the dimension. He definitely wouldn't dare let the terrifying existences of the dimension discover him. Therefore, for us who know that he's here. Ice Maiden didn't continue, but her meaning was very clear. Not heaven was bound to silence them. He definitely wouldn't let them walk out alive. Chapter 1172 Demon God Transformation Crack As the two of them spoke, Tsukuyami took a step back and cracked the stone bricks on the ground. The moonlight on her body dimmed significantly but the ghostly aura on Not Heaven's body intensified. It occupied most of Shinra Temple and continued to suppress the moonlight. The moonlight on Tsukuyami's body was slowly shrinking under the suppression of the ghostly aura, causing Tsukuyami's body to involuntarily retreat. Is Tsukuyami not his match either? Jowen's expression changed slightly. He knew that what Ice Maiden had said was true. Not Heaven's strength was indeed terrifying. Jowen looked at the antelope. It always acted mysteriously and had unfathomable strength. It was very likely a calamity great existence. If it provided its help, the two calamities might have a chance of defeating Not Heaven. However, Joe Wen nearly exploded from anger. That fellow was standing even further back than he was. He even wanted to use his horns to slam open the door. If not for Shinra Temple's power imprisoning him here, it would have long fled. Joe Wen realized that the antelope wasn't reliable. It had charged faster than anyone when it sensed benefits ahead. Now that it had discovered danger, it also ran away faster than anyone else. Seeing Tsukuyami being increasingly suppressed to the point of slowly retreating, Jowen knew that he had to do something. He was only willing to use the Immortal Culling Sword as a last resort. The price of using it was too high, and it was very easy for him to be discovered by the Dimension. Azura had defected from the Dimension while Jowen's identity as Human Sovereign was a secret. Apart from the Immortal Culling Sword, what other powers are useful? Jowen thought to himself. He had the power of a Terror Grade, 
but the effects of terror grade powers were very limited in front of a calamity grade. Although it wasn't the case that only a calamity grade could defeat a calamity grade, in front of the overwhelming strength of a calamity grade, a terror grade had no chance of approaching the other party. Unless he could break through the calamity domain and reach not heaven, Joe Wen's strength was useless against him. Joe Wen took in the present situation. Even Tsukuyami's moonlight domain couldn't break through not heaven's calamity zone, so it was even more impossible for him to rush over with his strength alone. Since it's impossible to rush over, is there a way to help Tsukuyami? Joe Wen thought to himself. Although Tsukuyami's power isn't purely spatial, it definitely contains spatial powers. Can I transfer my power to her? It should be of some use, right? What if she's just lacking a little? Joe Wen was considering how he could transfer his power to Tsukuyami. To transfer one's strength to others was a special technique. It wasn't something that could be done just because one wanted to. Just the transmission of essence energy met with many restrictions. If one wasn't careful, not only would the transmission of essence energy fail to help the other party, it might even injure them. Furthermore, Zhou Wen wanted to transmit spatial powers, making it even more problematic. Zhou Wen had never practiced such techniques in the past. After some thought, he couldn't come up with a good solution. The nine demon blood true dragons can freely transmit their powers amongst themselves because their powers are one. As for Tsukuyumi's power, it isn't purely spatial. There might be some time or other attributes. If I rashly transmit the power of Clown Mask or Singularity Universe, I'm afraid it won't be of any help. Instead, it will bring her harm. After some thought, Zhou Wen realized that this idea just wouldn't work. He had to find another way. Zhou Wen's mind raced as he thought about how he could help Tsukuyumi. Wait. What kind of creature is Tsukuyumi? I wonder if the replication ability of the demon god body is effective on her. Zhou Wen had a crazy idea. The demon god body could scan dimensional creatures and turn himself into a dimensional creature. However, typically speaking, it could only turn into a dimensional creature of a lower level or something not much higher. The difficulty of transforming into a demon was the lowest. It was worse for other races, so transforming into a dimensional creature was more troublesome. In theory, Tsukuyami was also a dimensional creature born on Earth. He should be able to scan and replicate her. However, her level was too high. Furthermore, she was most likely not a demon. It's not realistic to completely transform into Tsukuyami, but I can still give it a try. If I can achieve a certain level of assimilation and change my attributes to be like hers, I might be able to transfer my powers to her. Zhou Wen planned on giving it a try. After being trapped in Fanjong Mountain for a hundred years, Zhou Wen had done more research on the Demon God Bloodline catalog. This was because he had a nagging feeling that the restrictions of the Demon God transformation were too great. If he could lift the restrictions, he might be able to transform into any form at will, like the 72 transformations and myths. Zhou Wen had many ideas regarding the Demon God transformation, but due to his circumstances, they were limited to ideas. He didn't know which ideas could be realized. He would just have to give it a try and see how many of those ideas could be realized. Zhou Wen stood not far behind Tsukuyumi. Now that Tsukuyumi was resisting not heaven with all her might, she naturally didn't have the strength to care about anything else. Zhou Wen engraved the Demon God Bloodline Catalog on his Wheel of Destiny. At the same time, his body changed. His eyes became abnormally demonic, as though they were glowing. Zhou Wen stared at Tsukuyumi's figure, which reflected onto his eyes. Soon, Zhou Wen realized that things weren't as simple as he had imagined. Tsukuyumi's level was too high, and her vital state was too different from his. The demon god body failed to obtain any detailed information while scanning Tsukuyumi's body. All it gathered was some superficial information. The information could only change Zhou Wen's appearance, making him look like Tsukuyumi, but it was useless. It was just a change in appearance that wasn't much different from an illusion. It had no practical use. Zhou Wen made a few attempts, but none of them worked. The difference in life's natural order was too great, so it was impossible for him to scan and replicate it. Just as Zhou Wen was feeling disappointed, he suddenly realized that the demon god eyes had passed through Tsukuyumi's body and obtained her data. Furthermore, it was extremely detailed. Zhou Wen immediately understood that Tsukuyumi knew what she was doing and had taken the initiative to open up her body to him. Otherwise, even if she wasn't guarding against him, it would have been difficult for him to obtain her stats. Zhou Wen was overjoyed as he circulated the demon god bloodline catalog with all his might. His body gradually changed. No. It still won't work. Although I have Tsukuyumi's data, it's still too much of a burden for me to replicate such data. Unless the demon god bloodline catalog can improve further. Zhou Wen gritted his teeth and made repeated derivations. He also constantly changed the engravings of the demon god bloodline catalog. As the engravings deepened, the demon god chart that Zhou Wen engraved became even more demonic. Chapter 1173 You're right. 
The demon god chart on the Wheel of Destiny increasingly resembled Zhou Wen, but Zhou Wen's body was becoming more and more like Tsukuyami. This wasn't just a change in appearance, even his essence energy attribute was beginning to change towards Tsukuyami's. However, because Tsukuyami's order in life was too high, Zhou Wen wasn't able to completely replicate it. He focused on replicating Tsukuyami's essence energy attribute, so his body wasn't completely the same as Tsukuyami's. However, when the symbol on the Wheel of Destiny completely transformed into Zhou Wen's appearance, the demon god body instantly broke through some restrictions and transformed into a state identical to Tsukuyami's. The two of them were like twins. Even Monkey Sun with his fiery eyes and golden pupils probably couldn't tell the difference. Zhou Wen extended his palm and pressed it on Tsukuyami's back, injecting his essence energy into her body. Now, his essence energy attribute was identical to Tsukuyami's. He directly injected it into her body like water entering the ocean. It directly fused with hers without causing any discomfort. If Zhou Wen was only an ordinary terror grade, his essence energy would be useless at helping a calamity grade. However, Zhou Wen had slaughterers massive amounts of essence energy and the heaven opening scriptures ultra fast recovery of essence energy. The combination of the essence energy output and the fact that his body had turned into Tsukuyumi's calamity body had quite an effect on the calamity grade Tsukuyumi. Zhou Wen was far inferior to a calamity grade in every other aspect, but in terms of essence energy, he was able to be of some use. Tsukuyumi's moonlight domain brightened significantly. Although she didn't turn the tides, she stabilized the situation. Not Heaven's ghostly aura didn't continue its domination. Interesting. Not only was Not Heaven not angry, but he also sized up Zhou Wen with interest. With Zhou Wen's support, Tsukuyumi only stabilized the situation. Furthermore, Not Heaven's calamity domain was constantly growing stronger. He seems to be able to use the power of this palace. There's no chance of defeating him here. Think of a way to rush out. Ice Maiden saw the problem and told Zhou Wen and Tsukuyumi. Zhou Wen naturally noticed as well, but if he could escape, he would have long done so. Why would he wait until now? Even Tsukuyumi couldn't rush out of a godforsaken place like the Shinra Temple, let alone him. As time passed, the ghostly aura once again suppressed the moonlight domain. As for Zhou Wen, he had to keep up his transformation and inject essence energy into Tsukuyumi. He was already at his limits. What's your name? Not Heaven suddenly looked at Tsukuyumi and asked. Tsukuyumi. Tsukuyumi asked. And who are you? Not Heaven. Not Heaven reported his name and continued. I've been asleep for too long. I never expected to encounter such a powerful creature the moment I woke up. How many existences like you are on Earth? Why should I answer you? Tsukuyumi said indifferently. Not Heaven didn't get angry and continued. Based on your strength, there should be quite a number of calamity-grade creatures on Earth. If I leave the Shinra Temple with you guys as cover, I might not be discovered. Therefore, there's no need for us to fight to the death. And then? Tsukuyumi knew that it wasn't that Not Heaven wanted a truce. Otherwise, he could have stopped at any time, considering how he had already gained the absolute advantage. I want this human. You can take the rest away. Shall we end this? Not Heaven pointed at Zhou Wen. No. Tsukuyumi said directly. I know what you want from him. Don't worry, I have a solution. Since he doesn't agree, we can also let the token do its job and let you complete the contract. You can stay on Earth without any restrictions. Not Heaven said again. Zhou Wen's heart skipped a beat. He knew that the reason Tsukuyumi hadn't attacked him was because of the Heavenly Happiness token. If Not Heaven could do what he claimed, would Tsukuyumi have any qualms about protecting him? That thing can't be contracted by force. Tsukuyumi said. Of course, it can't be resolved by force. However, back when I was in the dimension, I once heard from an apocalyptic existence that there's a way to reach a contract without the permission of the owner. Not Heaven said. When the time comes, I'll get the person, and you can take the token. We'll get what we need. So why fight with our lives? What method? Tsukuyumi asked. Zhouin felt that things were going south. With Tsukuyumi around, he still had a chance of turning the tables. If Tsukuyumi allied with Not Heaven, he would probably die today. Even if he could pull out the Immortal Calling Sword again, the single sword wouldn't be able to kill two calamity great creatures. The method is a little complicated, but as long as you agree to withdraw, I can help you complete the contract and let you obtain that token. Not Heaven said. This condition was extremely tempting. If Zhou Wen was Tsukuyumi, he really couldn't think of a reason to reject it. Zhou Wen retracted his palm and left his transformed state, allowing his essence energy to recover. At the same time, he secretly held the Immortal Culling Sword. He was already prepared to give his all. What if I don't agree? Tsukuyumi's words left Zhou when slightly taken aback. Not Heaven said indifferently. I doubt you will make such a choice. You have stayed on Earth for too long and your body has been severely damaged. There's no chance of you defeating me. 
That might not be the case, Tsukuyumi said calmly. If you forcefully break through the restrictions, you can definitely unleash all your combat strength. It's hard to say if you can defeat me, but if that's the case, you will definitely be forced to leave Earth in an extremely short period of time. When that happens, it's useless even if you have a token. This isn't what you want. You helped him because you wanted to borrow the power of that token to stay on Earth. Since this is impossible, is there any point in helping him? Not Heaven smiled and said, If you cooperate with me, you can stay on Earth without being restrained by him. There are only benefits, so why not? Could it be that you are really willing to leave Earth like this? I think you should know that doing so is almost a path of certain death. If you are willing to take that path, you won't have to suffer by staying by a human side all the time. Isn't that so? You're right. Tsukuyami nodded slightly and turned to look at Zhou Wen. Zhou Wen's heart tightened as he gripped the immortal calling sword he had taken out. At this point, he could fight it out. In that case, give him to me. I'll help you complete the contract. We'll take what we each need. Not Heaven seemed to be confident of victory as he wanted to grab Zhou Wen. Boom. However, a terrifying force pushed Not Heaven back. Tsukuyumi's body glowed brightly as moonlight swirled around her. It constantly distorted space, making her look beautiful and demonic. You're right, but I don't like it, Tsukuyumi said coldly. Chapter 1174 It's Meaningless Do you know what it means to completely release the power of the Calamity Domain here? Not Heaven looked at Tsukuyumi in puzzlement. He really didn't understand why Tsukuyumi was doing this. It didn't benefit her at all. Joan also looked at Tsukuyumi in puzzlement. He never expected her to choose to stand on his side under such circumstances. I know the consequences better than you. As Tsukuyumi spoke, the moonlight on her body became even brighter. The moonlight formed halos that sliced the space around her into many distorted domains. In the domains, terrifying ghosts appeared. There was Yuki Ana, Hashiheim, Deitingu, and Yumabozu, who Zhou Wen was familiar with. There were also many ghosts that Zhou Wen had never seen before. Instantly, the entire Shinra temple was filled with ghosts. It was as if it had become a moonlit ghost domain. However, Zhou Wen could tell that the ghosts weren't the real Yuki Ana or Deitingu. They were just illusions. However, the illusions looked extremely real. The ghosts surrounded Tsukuyumi like they were escorting royalty as they majestically marched towards Not Heaven's Calamity Domain. The Calamity Domain that could suppress the Moonlight Domain was now suppressed by the Moonlight. As the Ghost Parade Entourage advanced, the Ghostly Aura Domain shrank even more. The moment the Illusory Night Parade of 100 Demons touched Not Heaven's Domain, it immediately devoured the Ghostly Aura in his domain. Are you crazy? With such explosive strength, you will soon be expelled from Earth. Azura Battlefield. Not Heaven didn't have the time to finish his sentence. Tsukuyumi's ghost parade was too ferocious. He had no choice but to deal with it with all his might. Not Heaven's surroundings turned into an Azura battlefield domain. There seemed to be countless terrifying Azura battle souls roaring and fighting inside. While the two domains clashed, the power that erupted was unimaginably terrifying. As for the Azura battlefield domain, it was being devoured by the ghost parade domain, becoming smaller and smaller. Not Heaven's expression was extremely nasty. He used all his strength to withstand Tsukuyumi's domain, but the ghostly aura on his body weakened as he constantly retreated. Tsukuyami, are you really not afraid of being expelled from Earth? Not Heaven shouted as he tried his best to resist Tsukuyami. There was only a tiny area left of the Azura battlefield domain around him, and it was just moments before it was completely devoured. Not Heaven used all his strength to barely hold on, slowing down the speed at which the domain was devoured. The moonlight on Tsukuyami's body became weaker and weaker. She was about to turn into light. She was like a goddess on the moon. Her clothes fluttered with moonlight. Something's amiss. Zhou Wen looked at the extremely powerful Tsukuyumi and felt an abnormal power fluctuation. A strange force gradually appeared on Tsukuyumi's body. It seemed to be pulling her body, pulling her into the endless void. Tsukuyumi, how do you use this token? Zhou Wen took out the heavenly happiness token and shouted at Tsukuyumi. Zhou Wen had roughly guessed that the power that wanted to pull Tsukuyumi into the infinite void was the repulsive force that not heaven had mentioned. Although Zhou Wen didn't know why a powerful existence like Tsukuyumi would die if she left Earth, he didn't wish for her to leave Earth. The Heavenly Happiness token was useless to Zhou Wen. If he could save Tsukuyumi and make her stay, he wouldn't mind using it now. There's no need! Tsukuyumi didn't turn around or take the Heavenly Happiness token. She only said indifferently, What will come will come. It's meaningless to take something that doesn't belong to me. You're mad. The Azura domain around Not Heaven's body was about to collapse. He tried his best to resist Tsukuyumi, but the Azura battlefield domain kept shrinking. However, Not Heaven's eyes remained firm as steel, as he stared at Tsukuyumi and said, You have no chance. Before you defeat me, you will be expelled from Earth. 
Not Heaven wasn't being an alarmist. Tsukuyumi's entire body was about to turn into moonlight, and the force that was pulling her had already reached her head. It wasn't affected by her domain at all. Like a black hole that devoured everything, it wanted to devour Tsukuyumi. Tsukuyumi, this token is meaningless to me. If you need it, I can cooperate with you to complete the contract. Jowen said again. Tsukuyumi suddenly turned her head and smiled brightly at Jowen. If it's meaningless to you, it's meaningless to me as well. When it's meaningful, you can use it to find me. Jowen looked at Tsukuyumi, unsure what she meant. In the next second, Tsukuyumi turned her head and infinite moonlight erupted from her body. Her entire body completely turned into light as the pure moonlight instantly shattered everything. Moon, a pure moon. Under the moonlight, everything was purified. The illusory hundred ghosts vanished in the moonlight. The Azura battlefield also turned to ashes. Not Heaven let out a tragic cry as his body dissipated in the moonlight as though he had melted into it. Boom! The stone furnace in Shinra Temple was shattered by the moonlight and turned to dust. Moonlight filled everyone's vision, but in the next second, the moon was devoured by the void and instantly vanished. The moonlight dissipated and Shinra Temple returned to normal. However, there was no sign of Tsukuyami or not heaven. Everything seemed so unreal. Tsukuyami! Jowen held the heavenly happiness token in his hand as he looked at the spot where Tsukuyami had vanished with a complicated expression. His face was filled with puzzlement, perplexity, shame, and indignation. He was ashamed for doubting Tsukuyami, and he didn't understand why she had made such a choice. He had already agreed to cooperate with her to use the heavenly happiness token, so why had she given up? Jowen still didn't fully understand Tsukuyami's final words. If an essence energy art or essence energy skill were placed in front of Jowen, no matter how difficult it was, he could find a pattern to resolve it. However, there were some things that had no pattern. This was something Jowen wasn't good at. While Jowen was still in a daze, he suddenly saw a stone furnace fragment on the ground. Ghost Aura rose out of it as the Ghost Aura gradually condensed into Not Heaven's body, allowing him to reappear. He's not dead? Jowen's expression changed drastically as he gripped the Immortal Culling Sword tightly. Not Heaven's body walked out of the demonic aura again as he looked coldly at Jowen and said, Unfortunately, she failed to kill me. No one can save you now. If you are obedient, you can suffer less. Otherwise, clang, clang. Before Not Heaven could finish his sentence, two hooves suddenly descended from the sky and struck his head, smashing him to the ground. Not Heaven sprawled on the ground and was dumbfounded when he saw an antelope descend from the sky and shatter the stone furnace that emitted a demonic aura. Chapter 1175 Orphan Clang! Clang! Before Not Heaven could react, the antelope stomped down again. Not Heaven's head exploded as blood and brain matter splattered everywhere. Jowen was dumbfounded as he stared blankly at the antelope. He felt as though curses were running through his mind. Not Heaven didn't revive this time. He could not be any more dead. With his death, the power that sealed Shinra Temple vanished and it returned to its original state. F asterisk CK, if you could kill him, why didn't you stomp down earlier? Jowen couldn't help but question the antelope. The antelope glanced at him and said disdainfully, Do you think he's that easy to kill? If Tsukuyami hadn't severely injured him, I'm afraid all of you would have died here. It's only because he had been suppressed for so long that his strength was far from its peak. It wouldn't have been difficult to defeat him if you had joined forces with Tsukuyami, right? Why did hold out, forcing Tsukuyami to leave Earth? Jowen frowned. Isn't it the same? There's no difference. Anyway, Tsukuyami had to leave. It's something that was bound to happen sooner or later. If you want to blame someone, blame yourself for not retaining her. The antelope curled its lips and walked out of the Shinra temple. Jowen glanced at Not Heaven's corpse on the ground. It looked very similar to a human's corpse. When Tsukuyami was around, Jowen had thought of all sorts of methods, hoping to escape her and let her leave Earth early. But now that she was gone, Jowen felt a little odd. When he walked out of Shinra temple, he realized that there were already many people outside. They were likely members of the Dugu family. The leader was a person with white hair, but his face made it appear as though he was 30. He was likely the hero of the Dugu family, Nameless Dugu. Of course, this was only one of the two Nameless Dugu. Jowen didn't know if he was the elder or younger brother. Jowen's guess was right. It was Nameless Dugu. He walked into Shinra Temple alone and took Zhou Wen to a secret chamber in the Dugu family. Brother Zhou, I believe you have already learned about my brother, said Nameless Dugu with a sigh. Yes, a little, but I'm not too sure of the details. Furthermore, I'm not interested in these things, so I won't shoot my mouth. All I want to know now is where Worm Dugu is. Zhou Wen made his stance clear. Nameless Dugu continued. Chienchio and I were twins. It was an era of foolishness. In our village, twins were an ominous symbol 
just like goo. In a goo container, only one poisonous bug can survive to the end and turn into a goo. As long as a second one is alive, they will continue fighting. Therefore, when we were born, the elders in the family wanted to drown one of the babies. Perhaps he wasn't destined to die. The drowning baby was accidentally saved by someone and luckily survived. Nameless Dugu told a very long story. Joe originally didn't care about the Dugu family's matters, but as he listened, he couldn't help but be attracted by the story. He wasn't interested in the love and hate between the two brothers, but later, Nameless Dugu mentioned their entry into the Holy Land. The two brothers had entered the trajectory Holy Temple. Joe had also entered the temple and experienced many strange things there. The all lie that Li Xian had taken and had come out of the trajectory Holy Temple. However, there was no such person among the people who had entered the Holy Land. The Dugu brothers encounter in the trajectory Holy Temple was equally bizarre. However, after they entered the trajectory Holy Temple, they didn't see each other despite being inside. Nameless Dugu only knew what he had experienced in the trajectory Holy Temple. He had only heard what his younger brother had experienced later. However, he was unable to determine the truth. However, ever since they had left the trajectory Holy Temple, his younger brother no longer showed his true face to others. Furthermore, he had convinced Nameless Dugu to share the same identity, Nameless Dugu, one of the six heroes of the Federation. Nameless Dugu was good at movement techniques. But not only was his younger brother good at movement techniques, he also had the ability to use the soul-washing divine light. He had even broken through to the mythical stage. Nameless Dugu originally imagined that his brother was talented, but he later learned that it was because his brother had signed some agreement in the trajectory Holy Temple and obtained the help of the Holy Temple that he absorbed a guardian to advance to the mythical stage. After leaving the trajectory Holy Temple, my brother's actions became weirder and weirder. Furthermore, many of the things he did were incomprehensible to me. I secretly paid attention to him. Later, I realized that he secretly nurtured many orphans. When Nameless Dugu said that, he wore a strange expression. What's so special about those orphans? Joe would ask curiously. In the beginning, there wasn't anything special. I thought that he only wanted to nurture a faction that belonged to him, so I didn't take it to heart. However, as those orphans grew up, I gradually discovered something extremely terrifying. Nameless Dugu's expression was extremely complicated. It was indescribable. What happened to those orphans? Joe Wen hurriedly asked. He was also very curious. Nothing happened to the orphans. They were very normal. The abnormality was with the Federation, said Nameless Dugu. Joe Wen was infuriated when he heard that. He thought to himself, can't you finish what happened in one go? Nameless Dugu continued with a strange expression. In the beginning, I didn't pay too much attention to it. Later, the Federation developed very smoothly, stabilizing our families, and expelling those devils were many things that we needed to do. However, I'd never seen my brother use the orphans he raised. I found it odd. After spending so much time and effort to nurture so many orphans, it's definitely impossible for him to just keep them without doing anything. However, 20 to 30 years have passed. I've never seen those orphans appear. Don't you think it's strange? Could it be that he has secretly sent them away without your knowledge? Joan asked. That's what I thought too, so I went to take a look again. The orphans were still there, and not only had their numbers not dropped, but there were even more. Some of them had already grown up, while some were still children. The oldest were in their 30s or 40s, and the youngest were only a few months old. When I saw the faces of the older ones, I was stunned. Nameless Duga seemed to sink into his memories, as he revealed a look of lingering fear. Joe Wen wished he could tear open the top of Nameless Duga's head to see what was on his mind. Without making Joe Wen wait too long, Nameless Duga continued. Those few people's faces were very similar to many of the famous people in the Federation back then. I wouldn't just call it similar, but identical. Those people were top figures in the various fields of the Federation. Some were experts in certain areas, while others were senators of the Senate. Zhou Wen felt his blood run cold when he heard that, but it also rang a bell. Chapter 1176 The Invisible Hand Those people just changed their looks, right? Zhou Wen asked with an odd expression. Nameless Dugu shook his head and said, I thought so too at the beginning, but I quickly realized that it wasn't the case. Those orphans had those faces from the very beginning. They did not undergo any plastic surgery. They naturally had those looks. That's impossible. Joe Wen felt a chill run down his spine. If it was plastic surgery, it would be understandable. It was simply producing certain people via operating. However, if they hadn't undergone plastic surgery, how could Dugu Chinchio be sure that they would look identical to a certain important figure when they grew up? I thought it impossible as well. But ever since then, I've been secretly paying attention to those orphans. I realized that as long as the orphan existed, I would be able to find a corresponding person of status outside. Even if they weren't to be found, 
they were bound to appear in the future. Among them, there were a few orphans who didn't have a corresponding person of status when they were young. However, when they grew up, there were people who looked like them who rose to prominence. Joe Wood became increasingly horrified. He tried his best to think of a reasonable possibility. Could it be that your brother raised twins separately and supported one of them to become a person of status while raising the other in the orphanage? Among those famous people, there were many of them who were members of the six families. Do you think it's possible to obtain so many twins? Nameless Dugu asked. Joe Wynn thought for a moment and found it a little unrealistic. How could he get so many twins? Furthermore, all of them became famous eventually. Even an elite academy couldn't guarantee that everyone that passed through their gates would become elites, much less raise so many twins. It was too difficult to guarantee that all of them would become top figures in different fields. However, other than that, Joe Wynn really couldn't think of any other reasonable explanation. To raise orphans from a young age and have famous people who resembled these orphans after they reached adulthood, there were only two possibilities. If they weren't twins, could it be that Dugu Chinchio had the ability to predict the future? Were the experts from the former principal's expedition team replaced by these orphans? Zhou Wen recounted the situation regarding the experts in the expedition team, hoping to know if the expedition team had been replaced by the orphans. Probably, said Nameless Dugu after some thought. What do you mean probably? Zhou Wen was puzzled. Nameless Dugu sighed and said, After I discovered this secret, I thought of a way to secretly restrain Chinchio and imprison him. I wanted to know the details from him, but he refused to say a word. After I imprisoned him, I went to the orphanage, hoping to bring back the orphans, but I realized that the orphanage had been burned to ashes. The orphans were also gone. They were nowhere to be seen. No corpses were found, and I never saw them again. Your brother had been imprisoned in Shinra Temple ever since? Jowen asked after some thought. Yes, I didn't know what crazy things he was plotting, so I didn't release him said Nameless Dugu. When was that? Joe Wen asked again. Forty years ago. Nameless Dugu gave a rough number. Joe Wen did some calculations. Among the experts, there were young professors in their twenties to their seventies. It was difficult to infer anything from the time. You never saw those orphans again? Joe Wen had too many questions on his mind. No. Even if I did, I wouldn't be able to recognize them. Nameless Dugu gave an odd answer. Joe Wen understood what he meant. If the orphans appeared as impersonations, he wouldn't be able to tell them apart. Your brother didn't say a word despite being imprisoned for so many years? Joe wanted to get to the bottom of things. No, he didn't say anything. No matter how I tried to get it out of him, he kept mum. However, according to my observations, this matter has something to do with the trajectory holy temple, said Nameless Dugu. Joe felt that it made sense. All the anomalies had begun after Dugu Chinchio returned from the trajectory holy temple. There was no way Zhou Wen would believe that this matter had nothing to do with the trajectory holy temple. Nameless Dugu continued. Later on, I also sent quite a number of disciples from the Dugu family into the trajectory holy temple, but they didn't gain anything. Or perhaps they obtained something without my knowledge. Zhou Wen knew what Nameless Dugu was worried about. He also didn't know if the Dugu family had such an orphan, or if someone had long been replaced. Zhou Wen found it terrifying just thinking about it. A person who had a very good relationship with his family and friends was suddenly swapped without anyone knowing. It was a terrifying idea. Furthermore, the people who were replaced by the orphans were basically experts and top talents in various fields. Just the thought of it sent a chill down Zhou Wen's spine. Nameless Dugu mentioned a few more matters, some pertaining to unkilling Dugu. He was a genius, a rare genius of the Dugu family. Unfortunately, his life providence was the god of unkilling, so he could only remain ordinary. However, Geniuses were unwilling to be ordinary. That was why Unkilling Dugu had tried his best to resolve the problem of his life providence. For some reason, Unkilling Dugu learned of Dugu Chinchio and even communicated with him. He took advantage of the Dugu family's grand ceremony to rush into the Shinra temple to inherit Dugu Chinchio's power. Zhou Wen gained a rough understanding of all that had happened, but he became even more puzzled. According to what Nameless Dugu had said, those orphans were nurtured by Dugu Chinchio. However, Dugu Chinchio had been imprisoned here for so many years. Who is controlling those babies behind the scenes? Trajectory Holy Temple, Dugu Chinchio, Orphans, Expedition Team. What's the connection? Zhou Wen felt as though an invisible hand was secretly controlling everything. The Dugu family used special means to quickly contact Worm Dugu. Thankfully, Li Xian was with him. Upon hearing that Zhou Wen was looking for him, Li Xian said that he would rush back immediately and requested Zhou Wen to wait for him for two days. However, Zhou Wen couldn't afford to wait. After asking where Li Xian and company were, he used spatial teleportation to rush over. Thankfully, it wasn't too far away. Even without Takuyami, Zhou Wen could still teleport over with Yer and company. 
However, he needed them to enter the Chaos Bee first. After meeting Li Xian at the designated location, he realized that Li Xian hadn't changed much. He still appeared frivolous, but he physically looked more mature. Old Joe, it's been five years, but you still aren't as handsome as me. Li Xian walked over and hugged Zhou Wen. Zhou Wen felt that Li Xian's aura was very strange. It was different from the creatures he had seen in the past, but it wasn't purely human. However, he was certain that Li Xian was very strong. I need your help, Zhou Wen said to Li Xian. Let's go, Li Xian said with a smile. It's very dangerous. It might cost you your life. Give it some thought, Zhou Wen said. Since you came to me, it means that I'm the only one who can do this, isn't that so? Li Xian said with a smile. I still have a backup plan, Zhou Wen said. Enough of that. It's not like I don't understand you. Let's go, Li Xian said with a smile. Chapter 1177 Returning to Netherworld City A strange ancient city stood in a sandstorm. Outside the ancient city's entrance was a group of soldiers. One of them was a cold-looking officer who was sizing up the ancient city with a heavy expression. Overseer, Charlie team has already exited the city, but nothing was discovered. A soldier's report made the officer's expression turn colder. After Ntienzwa arrived at Netherworld City, he had immediately sent four teams to explore it in batches. According to the experience and data he had obtained, three teams had successfully cleared Netherworld City, but they hadn't brought good news. Although there were many of the living dead in Netherworld City, people who didn't even know that they were dead and were being tortured day after day, Ouyang Lan and the accompanying soldiers hadn't been found. Overseer, it looks like young Master Wen is right. Madam and the rest might have entered the true Netherworld. We need to experience all the punishments before we can open the true entrance to the Netherworld. And Shun said, and Tianzhu glanced at the officers and soldiers behind him. At this point, there was only one possibility left. However, the punishments in Netherworld City weren't something anyone could withstand. Even someone as powerful as him couldn't withstand all the punishments in a day. Apart from the fact that his body couldn't withstand it, time was also a critical problem. There were three ironclad rules in Netherworld City. Those who committed murder would die, and those whose feet left the ground would die. One had to kill one person every day they entered the city, or they would die. There was an unresolvable contradiction, so one had to leave Netherworld City within a day. Otherwise, no matter how powerful an existence was, they would be killed by the taboo power of Netherworld City. One had to experience all 239 punishments in a day. Even if one's body could withstand it, there wasn't enough time. As powerful as Ntienzwa was, and he had countless capable people under him, no one could fulfill this condition. If Delta Team returns with nothing, we will enter the city, Ntienzwa said. And Shun whispered, Overseer, should we wait for young Master One? He's gone to look for Li Xian. He should be here soon. There's no time to waste. Every minute we wait means one less chance of survival for my mom and the others. And Tianzhu said, But if young Master Wen isn't around, I'm afraid we won't be able to withstand all the punishments in a day. And Shun reminded, Commander Liu, you have already seen the punishments in Netherworld City. What are your thoughts about them? And Tianzhu asked an officer from Charlie Team. The officer was fair and chubby. He had a smile on his face as his eyes narrowed into slits. He looked harmless. However, from his figure, he was at least 200 kilograms. He was almost the shape of a ball. In this era, there weren't many people who could be this fat. Commander Liu's name was Liu Bus Hun, or literally a Rai. As for why his parents gave him such a name, it was not something outsiders would know. Upon hearing Antienzo call him out, Liu Bus Hun moved his body and took a step forward. He raised his arm with great difficulty and gave a military salute. He widened his eyes and said, Overseer, I've tried a few types of punishments. Those punishments can ignore the defenses of the body. Even a mythical power can't withstand them. The only thing that's effective is a body's self-healing abilities. As you know, Overseer, this is my specialty. As long as there's enough time, it won't be difficult for me to withstand all the punishments. And Tianzhu nodded slightly and looked at another young officer. Jingyu, what about you? And Jingyu was a few years younger than Ntienzwa. He was an expert that had risen from the Yin family in recent years. He was extremely talented and his strength was temporal in nature, a rare power. Although Ntienzwa had once had an unhappy relationship with the Yin family's elders, he was still the leader of the Yin family's current generation. He still spared no effort to nurture the youths who had a chance of success. And Jingyu was one of the young members of the Yin family that he valued the most. He had brought him along this time. Although according to the family hierarchy, and Jingyu should address and Tianzhua as uncle, he could only salute obediently in military fashion. Overseer, I've already tried. I can use time acceleration to accelerate the punishment. 
As long as Commander Luke can withstand it, I'm confident that I can make him suffer all the punishments in 24 hours. And Tianzhen nodded slightly and didn't question further. He said to Insheng, Make the preparations. We'll enter the city once Delta Team comes out. Since he was here, he was naturally prepared. He didn't come blindly. It wasn't in Shun's place to say anything else. He also knew that what Ntianzu said made sense. Every minute wasted meant less hope for Ouyang Lan and company. However, he had a nagging feeling that there was a huge problem with Netherworld City. If he could wait for Zhou Wen to come along, their chances would be higher. However, now that they had reached the point of no return, they had no choice. This was because he didn't know when Zhou Wen would arrive. It was impossible for them to keep waiting. And Shun could only pray that Zhou Wen would arrive early. But Zhou Wen hadn't arrived by the time Delta Team exited the city. And Tianzhua personally chose the candidates to enter Netherworld City with him. Including him and Insheng, there were a total of 16 people. These 16 people might not be the strongest in the Yan family and the Sunset Army, but they each had their own unique abilities. They might be of use when facing different problems. Prepare to set off. And Tianzhua didn't wish to delay any further. Ah, Overseer, please wait. I've left something important in the camp. I'll go get it now. I'll be back soon. And Sheng smiled apologetically as he ran towards the tent. What should I do? This is killing me. Why isn't young Master Wen here yet? Inside the tent, and Sheng was like an ant on a hot pan. He knew that this trip was very dangerous. If they could wait for Zhou Wen, they would have a higher chance of survival. And Sheng circled the tent a few times, hoping to stall for more time, but he heard Tian's was voice from outside. Ajitanen, if I don't see you in three seconds, you can forget about going. I'm coming. And Sheng could only leave the tent with a bitter expression. As he walked towards Ntianzhua, he held his stomach and walked especially slowly, as though he was in pain. When he finally came close to Ntianzhua, and Sheng said, Overseer, I need to relieve myself. I want to use the bathroom. Go! And Tianzhua said indifferently, Thank you, Overseer. And Sheng was delighted. He could stall for time again. To his surprise, Ntianzhua added, You don't have to come back if you go. Just return to Luoyang. Overseer, I don't think it's a big deal. And Sheng immediately said as he stood up. Can we leave now? And Tianzhua asked and Sheng. As long as Overseer says so. And Sheng stood straight and answered without looking sideways. Let's set off. And Tianzhua glanced in the direction of the desert, but it was only for an instant. He quickly retracted his gaze and firmly walked towards the entrance of Netherworld City. Young Master One. And Sheng followed and Tianzhua towards Netherworld City. Just as they were about to reach the door, and Sheng looked back and was immediately overjoyed. Chapter 1178 saw punishment. And Tianzhua and company turned around and followed in Sheng's gaze. Indeed, they saw Zhou Wen walking out of the desert with Yer in his arms. Beside him was the grinning, cheeky Li Xian. On the other side was a white antelope and a flying golden eagle. He made it. And Sheng secretly heaved a sigh of relief. Zhou Wen quickly walked over. Although he and Tianzhua thought little of each other, they shared the same stand when it came to saving Ouyang Lan. Why did you bring Yer here? Don't you know how dangerous this place is? And Tianzhua frowned when he saw Zhou Wen carrying Yer over. She's the safest with me. Zhou Wen answered. Their gazes met in the air. And Sheng had an illusion that there were sparks flashing where their gazes met. If anything happens to Yer, I won't let you off easily. Let's go. And Tianzhua said coldly before turning around and walking towards Netherworld City. Everyone followed in Tianzhua through the gates of Netherworld City. And Sheng stayed behind him and waved to Zhou Wen gesturing for him to follow quickly. Zhou Wen and Li Xian exchanged looks before walking towards Netherworld City. Although Zhou Wen had already been to Netherworld City once and had cleared it countless times in game, he was still somewhat nervous when he came here again. City Lord Netherworld, who could toy with the dead, left a very deep impression on him. Even though he already had the power of a terror grade, he still found City Lord Netherworld extremely terrifying when he thought about it. At the instant he entered the gates of Netherworld City, his body seemed to traverse space-time. When he finished taking the step, he was already standing on the long street of Netherworld City. And Tianzhua and company were nearby. The antelope and chick were also standing on a stone slab. Everyone had a number on the stone slab beneath their feet. As no one had moved, all the numbers were at 365. Even the antelope and chick were no exception. Due to the taboo power of Netherworld City, no one could use companion beasts. They could only rely on their own essence energy arts and essence energy skills. If there were guardians, they could also use the powers of guardians. This had been confirmed through previous testing. Most of the officers under Ntianzhua had advanced to the mythical stage by using the mythical serum. Only two officers had contracted guardians and were wearing guardian armor. 
One of them was in Jingyu. Ah Sheng. And Tianzue sized up the torture chamber beside him and said to in Sheng. Got it. And Sheng answered as a strange glow suffused his body. A halo spread out from beneath his feet, forming an area with a radius of about two meters around him. And Tianzue and company walked towards the halo which in Sheng had formed. When they were outside the halo, the number beneath their feet would change with every stone slab they walked on. However, when they entered in Sheng's halo, the number beneath their feet no longer changed. Zhou Wen looked at in Sheng in surprise. This ability was clearly similar to his heaven-opening scripture of the highest elder. It was an ability that could restrain taboo powers. However, and Sheng's ability was regional. It was likely some kind of halo. Seeing the surprise on Zhou Wen's face, and Sheng said with a smile, This is my Wheel of Destiny ability. It can temporarily block the taboo powers of Netherworld City. Young Master Wen, come over as well. Zhou Wen held Yer's hand and walked over with Li Xian and company. Chick and the antelope also entered the halo. Within and Sheng's halo, not only did the number under their feet not change, but it also didn't trigger the ghosts of torture in Netherworld City. As long as they were inside the halo, they could walk around freely. Everyone arrived in front of the first torture chamber. The torture chamber wasn't open yet. And Sheng looked at Ntianzwe before looking at Zhou Wen. Time is limited. It's impossible for us to attempt two punishments. Who will bear the punishment here? Of course it's me. Lu Bushun said as he wobbled his fat body forward. Let me do it. Li Xian said. Commander Lu's body has infinite regeneration. Let him do it. And Tianzue said. It's better to let Li Xian do it. The power of these torture chambers is very special. Just a regeneration ability alone might not result in reaching the end. Zhou Wen had suffered quite a number of punishments himself, so he naturally knew how formidable they were. It wasn't just about a self-healing ability. Otherwise, he wouldn't have specially sought out Li Xian. Young Master One, I know you are an extraordinary person. My strength can't compare with yours, but in terms of self-healing, I'm afraid no one will dare claim first place if I, Fatty Lu, claim second. Lu Bushan said with narrowed eyes. In that case, let's split up. Zhou Wen said as he looked at Ntianzua. And Sheng said, Jingyu can only use time acceleration on one person. I'm afraid he won't be able to divert his attention. Just do your job. Don't worry about us. We don't need time acceleration. Zhou Wen said after some thought. If you don't use time acceleration, I'm afraid you won't make it in time, right? Although there's supposedly 24 hours, the torture chamber only opens once every hour. In fact, there are only 12 hours. There's not enough time to withstand 239 punishments in 12 hours. And Shun said, I have my ways. Zhou Wen didn't explain further. Let him be. And Tianzue said indifferently. When the time came, the torture chambers opened. Li Xian and Lu Bushun walked towards the first torture chamber at the same time. The torture chamber stated saw punishment. You first. Li Xian and Lu Bushun arrived at the door. Seeing that Lu Bushun had no intention of giving way, Li Xian made way. Lu Bushun didn't stand on ceremony as he entered the torture chamber. There was a steel saw with a wooden head in the torture chamber. The moment he entered, his body was chained to a log. When the saw landed, it began to slice his body into two. Lu Bushan's expression remained unchanged. The saw pulled back and forth, sawing open his stomach and revealing snow-white fat. However, after the sawing, his flesh automatically healed at an unbelievable speed. The saw moved back and forth from his body. It should have sliced his body into two, but after the saw finished one cycle, his body completely healed without any injuries. What an amazing self-healing ability. Even Zhou Wen was surprised by Lu Bushan's self-healing ability. After Lu Bushan came out, he gave Li Xian a provocative look. Li Xian was amused as he gave Lu Bus Han a friendly greeting. Your self-healing ability is pretty good. It's all right. Upon hearing Li Xian, Lu Bus Han stopped provoking him. There's not much time. Continue. And Tianzue didn't wish to waste a second as he urged Lu Bus Han to continue heading to the next torture chamber. Li Xian walked into the saw torture chamber, and with a flash, he was tied to a log. The steel saw also landed. Others only saw the steel saw fly into the air but Zhou Wen could tell that there was a white robed ghost holding a saw on both sides of the steel saw. It directed the steel saw towards Li Xian's body. Chapter 1179 Give It Some Umph On Antianzwa's side, many people looked over. They also wanted to know if Zhou Wen and Li Xian could really handle the sawing. After all, this type of torture that could saw a person into two wasn't something ordinary self-healing abilities could withstand. Furthermore, they also wanted to know how Zhou Wen and company would resolve the problem of insufficient time. After all, and Jingyu had used the Guardian's temporal ability to accelerate the saw's speed to finish the punishment quickly. Otherwise, the saw's speed wasn't fast. 
If the sawing was done slowly, it would probably take 10 minutes for the punishment to end. Ah! Oh, it hurts! Just as the saw touched Li Xian's body, Li Xian cried out when the saw tore through his skin. Ah! Oh, ah! Oh, ah! Oh. With every slice, Li Xian let out a tragic cry. The officers couldn't help but frown. Although they knew that such a sawing would definitely be painful, Lu Bushun had endured it all without even letting out a grunt. It wasn't very manly to shout like that. As Li Xian hadn't entered the military and instead traveled around, he had spent most of his time in the South District. Therefore, they didn't know much about him. All they knew was that Li Xian was the third scion of Luoyang's Li family, Zhou Wen's good friend and classmate. Seeing Li Xian scream so tragically, Zhou Wen comforted him. Li Xian, bear with it. It'll be fine in a while. I'll get them to saw faster so that you won't have to suffer for so long. When Enjing Yu and company heard Zhou Wen's words, they found it odd. What did he mean by asking them to saw faster? Was such a matter negotiable? They originally imagined that Zhou Wen was only joking. He would probably use abilities similar to time acceleration or abilities with similar functions. To their surprise, Zhou Wen stood outside the door and shouted into the torture chamber. Saw faster. If this works, why would I be needed? However, as soon as Zhou Wen said that, the steel saw that was pulling back and forth suddenly became like a connected electric saw. Its speed instantly increased. However, despite the steel saw rapidly pulling back and forth, it couldn't split Li Xian at the waist despite the tremendous amount of blood on the saw. It looked terrifying, but the saw just didn't go any lower. Li Xian cried out even more tragically, but his self-healing ability wasn't inferior to Lu Bushin's. When the steel saw stopped, he had already healed himself and cleared the round. It really f asterisk king hurts. It nearly killed me. Old Joe, it'll cost you. Li Xian gritted his teeth as he walked out. And Jing Yu and company looked at Zhou Wen and Li Xian with odd expressions. This matter was negotiable. And Jing Yu's face was filled with puzzlement. He couldn't help but look at the second torture chamber and hesitate. Should he try Zhou Wen's method? The second torture chamber was oil pot punishment. There was a huge pot in the torture chamber, and the oil inside was at boiling point. Anyone who entered would probably be cooked instantly. Lu Bus Hun had already been thrown in. The fats were sizzling, and he was turning golden brown. He even emitted a fragrance. This punishment took at least 10 minutes. And Tianzhua and company definitely couldn't wait that long, so they needed Anjing Yu to use time acceleration to make the 10 minutes pass quickly. But now, Anjing Yu was a little suspicious. Could he negotiate with the oil pot in the torture chamber and get it to fry Lu Bus Hun faster? Since Zhou Wen could negotiate, there was no reason why they couldn't. If they could negotiate, he could save a lot of essence energy to deal with any subsequent problems. If they really experienced all the punishments and entered the true netherworld, they would definitely encounter many problems. With this in mind, Enjing Yu mimicked Zhou Wen's actions and attempted to shout into the torture chamber. Fry him faster! After he shouted, and Tianzhua and company stared at the pot of oil inside. They were also very curious that this matter was negotiable. However, after waiting for a while, they realized that the pot remained the same. Nothing had changed. And Jingyu's face couldn't help but turn red as he secretly spat in his heart. I must have been bewitched. There's no room for negotiation regarding such matters. It would be a miracle if the negotiation succeeded. And Jingyu, what are you waiting for? Hurry up and use time acceleration. Inside, Lu Bus Han urged Jingyu. The feeling of being fried didn't feel good. Although Lu Bus Han had been enduring it, the terrifying pain nearly made him crush his teeth to pieces from all the gritting. And Jingyu hurriedly used time acceleration to accelerate the punishment time. After two minutes, the oil pot punishment was completed. Lu Buyu was teleported out of the oil pot. His golden brown flesh had already recovered, but his forehead was covered in cold sweat. It looked like he had been in excruciating pain. Just as he walked out, Li Xian walked in slowly. As he walked, he said, Old Joe, you're really mean. You didn't mention any of these while we were coming over. This will definitely cost you. Definitely. As Zhou Wen spoke, he thought to himself, this isn't a problem. When it's time for the wooden horse punishment, you can ask for as much as you want. When Li Xian entered the torture chamber, an invisible force immediately lifted his body and threw him into the boiling pot of oil. Ah! Oil splattered everywhere as Li Xian screamed tragically. However, after a while, and Jing Yu and company realized that Li Xian's body hadn't been fried golden brown by the oil pot. Apart from some red spots, there weren't many changes. Li Xian also seemed to realize that the temperature of this thing wasn't as high as he imagined. Therefore, he calmed down and leaned back against the pot. He placed his hands on the edge of the pot as though he was bathing in a bathtub. Lu Bus Han was dumbfounded. One had to know that the punishment here ignored defensive skills. One could only rely on their bodies to withstand it. After all, 
he had attained a mythical body through the use of the mythical serum. Furthermore, his body was especially strong, yet he couldn't withstand the frying and was nearly fried into crispy pork. As for Li Xian, he was completely fine and even had a bath inside. How strong is this fellow's body of flesh and blood? And Jing Yu and company were secretly alarmed. Old Joe, get them to give it some umph. Li Xian shouted at Zhou Wen. He wasn't showing off, but he wanted to use the oil pot punishment to temper his body. The more his body endured, the stronger he became. Give it more heat! Zhou Wen shouted. If this works, I might as well go home, and Jing Yu thought. However, with Zhou Wen's words, the flames under the pot suddenly intensified, nearly enveloping the entire pot. The temperature in the pot rose sharply, and Jing Yu's eyes nearly popped out. The other officers were also dumbfounded. Chapter 1180 Repeated Punishments Faster! Zhou Wen continued. Time was limited, so there was no time for Li Xian to slowly temper his body. From the point of view of the average person, the oil pot punishment seemed to obey Zhou Wen's orders, as though time was being accelerated. However, and Shun was naturally different. He could see some ethereal creatures, white robed ghosts that were carrying out the punishments. When he first saw them, they were slowly throwing and chopped with that ordinary humans couldn't see into the fire. However, when they saw Zhou Wen, the two white robed ghosts immediately trembled in fear. At Zhou Wen's order, they quickly added more wood to the bottom of the pot. It was the same in the saw torture chamber. This left and Shun very surprised, unsure how Zhou Wen had done it. It was indeed right to wait for young Master Wen to come. With him and Li Xian around, the chances of safely rescuing Madame Mon are much higher. I hope Madame Mon and company can last until we arrive, and Shun thought to himself. A minute later, Li Xian, who had completed the oil pot punishment, came out. As in Jingyu and Lu Bushan had been watching Li Xian, Lu Bushan hadn't entered the third torture chamber to be punished. If you aren't going, I'll go in first. Li Xian smiled at Lu Bushan before entering the third torture chamber, nail chamber. There were 108 foot long steel nails in the nail chamber. One had to have all the nails nailed through their bodies to complete the punishment. After Li Xian entered, his limbs were immediately confined to the wall. Then, a nail flew towards his left hand. On the other side, a hammer slammed into the back of the nail, smashing through Li Xian's palm. Ah! Li Xian let out a tragic cry and couldn't help but curse. It F asterisk king hurts. Just bear with it. As Zhou Wen consoled him, he told the torturing ghosts to be faster. Nails flew up one after another, as the hammers brandished repeatedly, rapidly stabbing into Li Xian's body. Li Xian kept screaming in pain. In just a minute, all 108 steel nails were nailed into Li Xian's body. One of them was nailed to his manhood causing Li Xian's face to turn green from the pain. Thankfully, although he screamed miserably, none of his injuries looked serious. His injuries automatically healed, and there were no signs of any injuries when he came out. Zhou Wen couldn't help but be envious. Although he had some self-healing abilities, he was far inferior to Li Xian. Without any time to daydream, Zhou Wen and Li Xian continued heading for the next torture chamber. Overseer, do we continue? And Sheng asked carefully. Zhou Wen and Li Xian were faster than them. If they could pass all the punishments, there was naturally no need for Lu Bus Hun and company to continue. And Tianzuo looked at Lu Bus Hun. Before he could say anything, Lu Bus Hun took the initiative to request an order. Overseer, although Li Xian's self-healing ability is strong, he might not be stronger than me. Furthermore, it's hard to say if he can withstand all the punishments with the way he is. If he fails, we won't have the time to do it ourselves. Please let me continue. After Lu Bus Hun said that, he looked at Li Xian's back with eyes filled with determination. All right, let's continue. And Tianzhu nodded slightly. Overseer, don't worry. If things don't go well, I will definitely not embarrass our sunset army. With that said, Lu Bushan walked towards the nail chamber. Li Xian and Lu Bushan suffered tortures at the same time, experiencing the torture chambers one by one. The two of them had terrifying self-healing abilities. Others would experience tortures that spelled certain death every time if they were in their shoes but the latter made one attempt after another. Their bodies didn't suffer much damage. The only difference was that Li Xian kept crying out in pain, but Lu Bus Han endured it quietly from beginning to end. No matter how painful the punishment was, he didn't grunt. Everyone watched as they walked down the torture chambers one after another. When the torture chambers closed, the two of them had experienced almost 30 punishments. However, every time they came out, their injuries were almost healed. People believed that there wouldn't be any major problems, and that they would definitely be able to withstand all the punishments in a day. However, Zhou Wen knew very well that things weren't as simple as they imagined. The physical damage of the punishments here was only one aspect. Another aspect was the soul and psyche. Furthermore, 
such damage would constantly accumulate, eventually causing a mental breakdown. Li Xian and Lu Bushin's abilities to recover physically were fine, but it was still a question if they could last to the end. However, Zhou Wen was still very confident in Li Xian. Although this fellow looked frivolous on the surface, his perseverance far exceeded that of the average person. Back when he was in extreme rage, Li Xian had managed to hold back from killing Li Mobai. Zhou Wen believed that he could hold out. As the torture chamber would open again every hour, Zhou Wen and company stood on the long street to rest. While Zhou Wen was resting, his eyes subconsciously glanced at the torture chamber behind him. It was the wooden horse punishment torture chamber. According to his current progress, Li Xian should enter the room in the next hour. Old Zhou, shouldn't you do something considering my great sacrifices? Li Xian said to Zhou Wen. What should I do? Zhou Wen asked. I don't lack anything but a useful companion beast. My requirements aren't high. Just give me a terror-grade companion beast. Li Xian was actually joking. He wasn't even taking himself seriously. All right. Zhou Wen agreed immediately. Really? You have a terror-grade companion egg? Li Xian was slightly taken aback before he laughed, believing that Zhou Wen was joking. A terror-grade companion egg wasn't something that could be obtained easily. Ignoring the fact that the terror-grade dimensional creatures were in the terrifying dimensional zones, it wasn't easy to kill them. Even if one could kill them, they might not have a companion egg drop. Don't worry about it. I'll definitely get you a terror grade companion beast. However, we have an agreement. You have to help me complete this trip through Netherworld City. Jowen said. Why? Don't you have confidence in me? Why are you using this trick to encourage me? Li Xian said unhappily. Just tell me if you can complete it. Jowen knew that as long as Li Xian could complete the trip, he would definitely do so. He also wanted to take this opportunity to give Li Xian a companion beast. There's definitely no problem, Li Xian said confidently. Lu Bus Hun and company found his words unbelievable. Li Xian's tragic cries were still ringing in their ears. All right, give me your hand, Zhou Wen said. What? You want to read my fortune? Li Xian extended his hand and looked at Zhou Wen in puzzlement, unsure what he was up to. Zhou Wen pressed his hand on Li Xian's hand and circulated the sky-stealing sun swapping art. Chapter 1181 already sullied. In Singularity Universe, a star was destroyed. At the same time, a companion beast on Zhou Wen's body was transferred to Li Xian. A strange mark appeared in Li Xian's palm. The symbol was the planet devourer symbol. It was the companion beast that Zhou Wen had planned on transferring to Li Xian. Li Xian hadn't raised any questions and came without a word when he requested his help. However, this trip was just too dangerous. No one knew what was in the true netherworld and what dangers there were. Zhou Wen had transferred the planet devourer to Li Xian, hoping that he would have more self-protection abilities. If anything happened to him in the real netherworld, he might be able to use it. Of course, this was only the worst case scenario. With a calamity big shot like the antelope around, there might not be any danger even if they reached the true netherworld. Holy SH asterisk T, a terror grade companion beast? After Li Xian obtained the planet devourer, he also obtained some information about it. After learning of the planet devourer's level and abilities, he immediately looked at Zhou when in surprise. He wasn't only surprised that Zhou Wen had really given him a terror grade companion beast, but he was also surprised that Zhou Wen had given him a hatched companion beast. Such an ability was completely unheard of. If hatched companion beasts could be transferred at will without paying any price, the Federation would have long been in chaos. When Enjing Yu and company heard Li Xian say that, they found it unbelievable. They imagined that Li Xian was joking. After all, they had never heard of casually gifting hatched companion beasts. Furthermore, it was a terror grade companion beast. Why are you giving me this? Take it back, Li Xian said with a frown. I only know how to give it to others and not take it back. If you don't want it, why don't you give it back to me? Zhou Wen said with a smile. Fine. You are rich and have what it takes to be willful. It's a waste not to take it, Li Xian said. You can't take it for nothing. You have to help me complete this trip no matter what. Zhou Wen said seriously. That's nothing, Li Xian said with a smile. Li Xian didn't summon the planet devourer. All he did was test it in its glove state without activating the devourer ability before putting it away. An hour later, the torture chambers opened again. Li Xian strode to the next torture chamber and muttered, If there's such a good deal next time, remember to get me again. Sure, I'll definitely look for you, Zhou Wen replied with a smile. They cleared one torture chamber after another. Although Li Xian cried out tragically, he managed to hold through them all. Finally, he arrived in front of the wooden horse punishment torture chamber. Li Xian looked inside, and his expression changed when he saw the wooden horse with horns on its back. Just as he was about to retreat, Zhou Wen kicked him into the wooden horse room. Holy SH asterisk T, Zhou Wen you tricked me. 
Ah! Li Xian's cursing suddenly stopped. Then, there was a tragic cry and dead silence. Quickly finish it! Zhou Wen didn't look inside and covered his eyes with his hand as he shouted. A minute later, Li Xian limped out. His eyes were filled with tears as he wore a look of despair as though he was a maiden who had been defiled by a hundred men. His lips trembled as he held his buttocks with one hand and pointed at Zhou Wen with a trembling finger. After a while he said, F asterisk CKU. Zhou Wen lowered his head and whispered like an old monk. Ahem, form is emptiness and emptiness is form. Everything else is fleeting. It doesn't exist. It doesn't exist. F asterisk CK you're not existing. My first time is gone just like that. I feel that I'm not pure anymore. I'm already sullied. Li Xian looked up at a 45 degree angle as though he was holding back his tears. Don't worry. No one saw it. I covered my eyes, Zhou Wen said with a fawning smile. Cover my ass. The gap between your fingers was bigger than the Grand Canyon, Li Xian said angrily. Ahem, aren't you able to heal yourself? It's fine. You're completely fine now. Let's forget about the past. It won't affect anything anyway, Zhou Wen said carefully. Shut up. Li Xian glared at him. Be honest. Are there such punishments further on? Probably. Perhaps. There's still some. I guess. Zhou Wen stammered. F asterisk CK it, I quit. Li Xian said angrily. You've taken the companion beast. Didn't you say that there's definitely no problem? Didn't you say that it'll be all right? Zhou Wen said. Li Xian's lips moved, but he didn't say a word for a while. Finally, he said hatefully. Blame my luck for getting in too deep. Tell me honestly, how many more such punishments are there? About three, four, five, six, seven, eight. How many? Nine. Zhou Wen, screw you. You will die a horrible death. Despite cursing, Li Xian could only bite the bullet and walk to the next torture chamber. And Tianzhua and company were curious as to what torture chamber it was that nearly made Li Xian fall out with Zhou Wen. As their progress was much slower than Zhou Wen and company's, they hadn't seen the situation inside the wooden house punishment torture chamber. When they walked over to take a look, their expressions immediately changed. Their expressions when they looked at Lu Bus Hun became odd. Lu Bushin's face was also somewhat pale. He felt his throat go dry. His lips quivered, but he didn't say a word. All he did was gulp. Let's head over now. In the end, it was Ntianzhua who gave the order. He led the others over, leaving Lu Bus Hun and Njingyu in front of the wooden horse punishment torture chamber. Lu Bus Hun closed his eyes and gritted his teeth before charging into the torture chamber. In an hour, Li Xian could withstand more than 30 punishments, while Lu Bus Hun could do about 20 plus. The main reason was that Njingyu's time acceleration wasn't as effective as Zhou Wen's words, so Lu Bus Hun was a little slower. After suffering more than half the tortures, everyone could clearly sense that something was amiss with Lu Bus Hun. Although his body looked like it had recovered, his expression was ugly. His expression was extremely grotesque as his body seemed to tremble slightly. Commander Lu, there's no need to force it, and Tianzhu said to Lu Bus Hun. Lu Bus Hun looked at Li Xian in front of him. Although Li Xian kept screaming, he still persisted. Furthermore, his condition didn't seem as bad as Lu Bushin's. Overseer, don't worry. I can still persist. I won't embarrass our sunset army. As Lu Bus Hun spoke, he strode towards the next torture chamber. However, when Lu Bus Hun came out, he became even more beaten. How did he persist all this time? Lu Bus Hun already knew the horror of consecutive punishments. Every time he was tortured, he felt as though he had entered hell. The pain had exceeded the limits of what humans could endure. Furthermore, as the number of punishments increased, the pain continued to increase. Now, whenever Lu Bus Hun looked at a torture chamber's door, he felt a kind of forbidding horror. It was as though it wasn't a door, but the entrance to hell. Chapter 1182 The Last Torture Chamber Zhou Wen realized that there were fewer of the living dead in Netherworld City than the last time he came. He didn't see Chu He either. Could it be that Chu He's soul has already dissipated and can no longer be revived? Zhou Wen knew that the living dead in Netherworld City would constantly revive, and repeat a life of torture. However, every time they died, a portion of their memories would be erased. Now that Chu he had vanished, it was highly likely that he was completely dead and had no chance of reviving. Ah! Just as Zhou Wen was observing, he heard a tragic cry. However, this time, it wasn't from Li Xian, but Lu Bus Hun. Zhou Wen turned his head and saw that Lu Bus Hun wasn't in the torture chamber. He had already arrived outside, but he was slumped there with his two hands covering his head. His body trembled violently as he let out a horrified cry. Old Lu, are you alright? You are already out. 
The officer who had a good relationship with Lu Bus Hun immediately pounced forward and shook his hand. Gradually, Lu Bus Hun recovered. His eyes focused again as he became angry. He stopped screaming and his body stopped trembling. However, his hand still trembled involuntarily. Overseer, I'll rest for two minutes before we continue, Lu Bus Hun said as he struggled to stand up. There's no need to continue. Rest, and Tianzhu said. Overseer, I can do it. I just need to rest for a while. Lu Bus Hun hurriedly said. That shall be all. It's an order. And Tianzhu said expressionlessly. Yes, Overseer. Lu Bus Hun saluted and had no choice but to stop. In fact, Lu Bus Hun knew very well that it was very difficult for him to continue. Even if he continued experiencing the tortures, he probably wouldn't be able to last more than a few chambers before he went crazy. Looking at Li Xian again, he realized that he had already exceeded him by more than 20 torture chambers. Although he could hear Li Xian's tragic cries, Li Xian still persisted. He showed no signs of Lu Bushin's situation. And Tianzhu glanced at Lu Bushin's chamber. It was the 134th torture chamber. There were still more than 100 chambers from the 239th torture chamber, but Lu Bus Hun was at his limits. The difference was just too great. And ahead, Li Xian happened to come out of the torture chamber. He was still bickering with Zhou Wen, showing no signs of Lu Bushin's situation. The Li family's three brothers aren't simple. Unfortunately, the Li family's eldest brother died too early. Otherwise, the Li family would definitely have been a hegemon. And Tianzhu said with a sigh. Li Xian and Young Master would have an extremely good relationship. The Li family will likely help Wu Yang in the future. This is a good thing. And Sheng said. That depends on whether we can return alive. And Tianzhu also knew that there would be great danger this time. With you and Young Master when around, we will definitely be able to return alive. And Sheng said firmly. And Tianzhu didn't say a word as he looked at Zhou Wen and Li Xian in front of him. Whether they could enter the true netherworld now depended on them. Li Xian entered the torture chamber again. Although he was still chatting and laughing, Zhou Wen could sense that he was under immense pressure. Being tortured repeatedly was different from being tortured by a random punishment. The damage to one's mind and soul constantly accumulated. Even if one rested for an hour, it was impossible to expel all the buildup. He could only rely on his psyche and beliefs to persist. There was no other way. Li Xian's screams were still tragic, but it additionally chilled the hearts of those who heard him. Zhou Wen knew that he was truly in pain, and it was the kind that was produced when he was close to his limits. There are still 23 torture chambers left. The torture chambers will open another three times today. Adding to this instance, there's more than enough time. Let's see if Li Xian can last to the end. Zhou Wen counted the remaining torture chambers. Do you want to rest for a while? There's still plenty of time. Zhou Wen asked after some thought, when he saw Li Xian come out. Li Xian shook his head. He wasn't injured, but his face was pale. However, there was a strange red flush on his pale face. Continue, Li Xian said as he walked to the next torture chamber. And Tianzhu and company had already rushed over. When they saw Li Xian being tortured, their hearts skipped a beat. Even a veteran soldier like Lu Bus Han couldn't withstand the pain of the punishments. He had long broken down. The fact that Li Xian could last until now had already impressed them. However, Li Xian's situation seemed to be worsening. They were somewhat worried if Li Xian could reach the end. When Li Xian came out again, he nearly fell to the ground. Zhou Wen was quick to react and went forward to help him up. Li Xian wasn't injured and he still had strength left, but his mind was in a terrible mental state. How many torture chambers are there left? Li Xian asked again. Twenty-two. Zhou Wen answered. Continue. Li Xian pushed Zhou Wen's hand away and walked in. This time, the torture chamber was the torture of the hot pillar. After Li Xian entered, he was tied to the iron pillar with his hands and feet hugging it. His face and body were stuck to it. Sizzle. White smoke rose from Li Xian's body, and a burnt smell accompanied it. In an instant, Li Xian had lost his human form. Just looking at him made one's legs go limp, much less Li Xian, who was being tortured. It was difficult to imagine how much pain he was in. But now, Li Xian stopped screaming. Zhou had ordered the punishment ghost to speed up but the torture of the hot pillar needed one to endure it for ten minutes. Even if the punishment ghosts wanted to speed it up, they couldn't do so. Lend him to me. Any condition is fine. Zhou Wen came in front of Ntianzua and pointed at Njingyu. He wasn't good at accelerating time, so he could only seek help from others to accelerate Li Xian's torture. This is my family's business to begin with, Ntianzua said before ordering. Jingyu, cooperate with them to complete the remaining punishments. Yes. And Jingyu quickly stepped forward and used time acceleration on the hot pillar. However, time acceleration could only accelerate time, but it couldn't shorten it. 
Li Xian still suffered the same pain. As time accelerated, a black carapace suddenly appeared on Li Xian's body and quickly enveloped him. Zhou Wen's heart tightened when he saw the carapace on Li Xian's body. Li Xian's life soul and wheel of destiny were unique. Other people's life souls and wheel of destiny were separate, but his was one. It was somewhat similar to Zhou Wen's situation, but it wasn't completely the same. The carapace could be said to be his second life. The appearance of the carapace meant that Li Xian was indeed reaching his limits. After the carapace appeared, Li Xian's condition improved significantly. After enduring the punishment of Hot Pillar, he walked straight to the next torture chamber. He was in a much better state. He went to the torture chambers one after another without any hesitation. One couldn't see his expression under the carapace, but one could tell from his trembling body that he was enduring the pain with all his might. He didn't even dare say a word, afraid that he would lose the grit the moment he opened his mouth, losing the courage to continue the journey. Seeing that there was only one torture chamber left, Zhou Wen and company were extremely nervous. The last torture chamber's door had the words, Dream Punishment. Zhou Wen looked into the room, but he didn't see the white-robed punishment ghost. All he saw was a white-haired old woman sitting inside. Chapter 11 83,000 Year Dream What punishment is dream punishment? Zhou Wen frowned slightly. Apart from the white-haired granny, the stone table, and the stone bench, he didn't see anything else in the room. There didn't seem to be any danger, but Zhou Wen felt that something was amiss. He held back Li Xian, who was about to enter the torture chamber. What? Li Xian's voice was somewhat hoarse. Zhou Wen could sense his body trembling slightly. It was an uncontrollable spasm, not because of the damage to his body, but because of the psychological pressure. Although Zhou Wen hadn't attempted all the punishments in the past, from his attempts, he knew that the mental pressure and damage were immense. Even Zhou Wen suffered immense pressure despite his tenacity, and that was when he hadn't attempted all the punishments. However, even if the pressure was greater, Zhou Wen was likely able to withstand it. However, his recovery ability wasn't as strong as Li Xian's. It was impossible for him to withstand all the punishments in such a short period of time. This torture chamber is the last torture chamber. I don't think it's that simple. It might be very dangerous, Zhou Wen said. We'll know if it's dangerous after I enter. Anyway, we have to clear this round. There's no need to think too much, Li Xian said as he walked into the dream punishment chamber. Zhou Wen knew that Li Xian was just saying that to make things appear fine, but he felt uneasy when he looked at the white-haired granny. There were a total of 239 torture chambers on the long street. The other 238 torture chambers were filled with ordinary punishment ghosts. Only this room had a white-haired old lady. From this, one could tell that this torture chamber was definitely not simple. However, just as Li Xian had said, even if he knew that there were risks, he had to clear it. After Li Xian walked into the torture chamber, he wasn't directly placed on torture equipment like before. He could still move freely as though he was outside. What punishment is this? Do you want me to sleep here and have a dream? Li Xian said to the white-haired granny. Zhou Wen and Sheng suddenly realized that something was amiss. This was because only they could see the torture ghost from before. Others couldn't see them, but now, Li Xian could see the white-haired granny. Can you see the white-haired granny inside? And Sheng immediately asked Lu Bus Hun and company. I can see her. Your question is weird. Are we not supposed to see her? Lu Bus Hun asked and Sheng in puzzlement as the others looked at him. Zhou Wen and in Sheng exchanged looks. They knew that there was indeed a huge problem with this torture chamber. And Tianzhu also looked at in Sheng, wanting to know what he meant. Just as in Sheng was about to say something, the white-haired old lady inside suddenly moved. Everyone's eyes were immediately attracted to her, so in Sheng didn't say a word. The white-haired granny took out a tea bowl and a teapot from somewhere. She placed the tea bowl on the stone table in front of her and slowly poured water to fill it. The tea in the bowl was a jade green color, as though it had been soaked in bamboo leaves. However, there wasn't a single tea leaf inside, much less a bamboo leaf. One dream in a thousand years. One dream for a thousand years. Drink this bowl of thousand-year dream. If you can walk out of it alive, you will be able to see the real netherworld. The white-haired old lady said in a strange tone that made one feel uncomfortable. You mean that I'll sleep for a thousand years after drinking this bowl of tea? Li Xian asked. It won't take that long since you don't have that long of a lifespan. Even if you do, you would starve to death before being able to sleep for a thousand years. The white-haired old granny said with a smile. My body is fine. I don't need to sleep that much. Can I wake up early? Li Xian asked again. No. Even if a Zenith Heaven Golden Immortal descends to the mortal world and drinks this bowl a thousand year dream, he will definitely sleep for a thousand years. Not one second more, not one second less. The white-haired granny said. There's no solution? Li Xian frowned. 
There's one. The white-haired granny's answer surprised everyone. What? Li Xian asked. One dream for a thousand years. One dream in a thousand years. The white-haired granny repeated what she had said with a smile. Li Xian, come back. Zhou Wen's expression changed as he called Li Xian out. And Tianzhua and Nen Sheng's expressions changed. Clearly, they understood what the white-haired granny meant. One dream for a thousand years meant that this single dream would last for a thousand years. When the white-haired granny said that there was a solution, it was implying the first half of the sentence. Since he could have one dream in a thousand years, he could also spend a thousand years in a dream, but only spend a day or less in reality. From the sound of it, having one dream in a thousand years was much easier than having a dream last a thousand years. After all, it was only a thousand years in a dream. In reality, he wouldn't starve to death or be injured. It didn't seem dangerous. However, that wasn't the case. To spend a thousand years in a dream, ignoring what kind of dream it was, just a thousand years was enough to make one's will collapse. Zhou Wen had been trapped on Fan Zhang Mountain for only a hundred years. He had relied on his powerful willpower and focus on cultivation to last for a hundred years. However, that didn't mean that Zhou Wen was having a good time. If it hadn't been for his extreme focus, he would have gone crazy from being imprisoned for a century. Li Xian clearly understood what the white-haired granny meant and asked, One dream in a thousand years. How long is this dream? Take the 238 prior punishments as one cycle, and one cycle lasts a day. If you want it long and have a long dream, it can be long. If you want it short, it can also be short. It all depends on your will, said the white-haired granny. Li Xian, come back. There's no need to continue. Sislan and company definitely wouldn't have been able to clear this round. It's impossible for them to have entered the true netherworld. Joe Wen's expression changed as he said to the white-haired granny. The white-haired granny had already made it very clear that suffering all the prior punishments in the dream was only considered a day. Then, how many times would he have to suffer in a dream that lasted a thousand years? Zhou Wen was momentarily unable to do the math, nor did he wish to. No matter how resiliently Xian was, he had to suffer all the punishments once a day for a thousand years. To experience a thousand years, like that would give a normal person a mental breakdown. Let's end it here, Antienzwa said. Although there were various signs that Sis Lan and company had indeed entered Netherworld City, they hadn't seen them in Netherworld City. It was highly likely that they had entered the real Netherworld. He wanted to enter no matter what. However, such punishments weren't something humans could withstand. And Tianzhua wasn't willing to see Li Xian die for nothing. However, Li Xian had no intention of leaving the torture chamber. He looked back at Zhou Wen and said, Since Sis Lan and company have entered Netherworld City, there's no other possibility. They must have entered the real Netherworld. Since we're here, we have to go in and take a look regardless. Chapter 1184 Li Xian's Terror Transformation Zhou Wen's figure flashed as he teleported into the Dream Punishment Chamber, hoping to pull Li Xian out. In the past, when he activated Great Brahma, he could do whatever he wanted. Even the punishment ghosts had to obey him, but this time, it was different. Zhou Wen was repelled by a force, preventing him from rushing into the torture chamber. One dream in a thousand years, living an additional thousand years longer than others is a good thing. It's not something one can even beg for, so I lucked out. Li Xian said as he reached out to pick up the tea bowl. Li Xian, don't be silly. There's no need to do this. We can think of another solution. As Zhou Wen spoke, he condensed his strongest terror power, hoping to rush in to stop Li Xian. However, for some reason, this torture chamber was completely different from the previous torture chambers. His terror powers couldn't penetrate it at all. Old Zhou, don't be anxious. I'll be out in a jiffy. If I don't come out in time, wait for me outside, Li Xian said as he drank the bowl of Thousand Year Dream without leaving a single drop. Nice tea. Li Xian licked his lips. Just as he finished speaking, he collapsed to the ground and fell asleep. Let him out. Great Brahma appeared behind Zhou when as he attempted to order the white-haired granny to release Li Xian. However, the white-haired granny remained unperturbed. She sat there calmly and looked at Li Xian, who was sleeping on the ground. And Tianzhua frowned as Sheng shook his head with a bitter smile. Although one's body wasn't injured in the dream of a thousand years of torture, the mental pressure was enough to make any steel-willed human collapse. And Sheng and Tianzhua were people with extremely powerful wills, but even they didn't dare claim that they could definitely withstand the torture. Although the white-haired granny said that the thousand-year dream could be short if one wanted to, they didn't have much time left in Netherworld City. If Li Xian didn't come out in time, even if he could withstand the thousand-year dream, his body would be killed by the rules of Netherworld City. What can I do? Zhou Wen tried a few times, but he failed to charge into the dream punishment chamber. 
he had already used several terror great powers. Since the heaven opening scripture of the highest elder and great Brahma were useless, the rest were even more useless. Zhou Wen looked at the antelope. At this moment, he could only rely on this calamity great fellow. When the antelope saw Zhou Wen look at it, it immediately turned its head to the side and pretended not to see him. The asterisk starred. Zhou Wen was somewhat helpless. However, from the antelope's appearance, he knew that the white-haired granny in the dream punishment chamber definitely had a terrifying background. She was definitely a calamity great existence. Come on! Come on! Hee hee! All together! Just as Zhou Wen was feeling worried, he suddenly heard Li Xian's voice. Zhou Wen hurriedly turned his head and realized that Li Xian wasn't awake. Instead, he was talking in his sleep. However, seeing the wretched smile on his face and the lascivious voice, it didn't look like he was suffering torture in a dream. Harder! Harder! Li Xian cried out in pleasure. Lu Bushun and company stood outside as they stared at the sleep, talking Li Xian with a strange expression. They questioned what kind of dream he was having. Was it really as the white-haired granny had said, a torture? What the hell is this fellow dreaming of? Zhou Wen looked at Li Xian and felt that he wasn't dreaming of torture. However, it didn't take long before Li Xian's face began to sweat. Not only was he sweating, but he was also heating up. His carapace mask was red as white smoke constantly emitted from his head. Didn't you say that it was just a dream? Why did his body become like this? Zhou Wen stared at the white-haired granny, prepared to use the immortal culling sword. The brain of any creature has its limits. Under normal circumstances, the brain can only think about one thing. However, in the thousand-year dream, he's making time pass too quickly in the dream. Time in reality is too slow, and this results in his brain needing to complete the thought processes that should have taken years, even decades, or centuries in an extremely short period of time. It's already very rare that his brain didn't explode. The white-haired granny said, Why didn't you say so before? Zhou Wen asked with a sullen expression. If you need others to explain everything to you without thinking for yourself, what use is your brain? The white-haired granny said indifferently. Li Xian's carapace helmet was about to turn into flames. Zhou Wen knew that he couldn't wait any longer. Otherwise, even if he could save Li Xian, his mind might end up fried. Just as he was about to draw his sword, he suddenly saw Li Xian's carapace flash with a strange light. With Li Xian's head as the starting point, points of light flowed out like a data stream, instantly flowing through Li Xian, turning his entire body into data points of light. This power is... Zhou Wen was slightly taken aback as he found the power somewhat familiar. Soon, Zhou Wen recalled why it looked familiar. Although this power had Li Xian's original attributes, it also had another creature's attributes. Alpha. Zhou Wen immediately realized what had happened. Back then, the guardian, Alpha, who resembled a nano-machine had possessed Li Xian. In order to preserve his life, he had contracted Li Xian in a strange manner. One of the reasons Li Xian could advance to the mythical stage was because of Alpha. The power that erupted from Li Xian's body, other than his strength stat, was Alpha's strength stat. However, the two powers had already fused. Li Xian's body seemed to turn into a data stream. His entire body seemed to be formed by countless glowing points of light, making him look extremely illusory and unreal. With Zhou Wen's vision, he could clearly see that Li Xian's body couldn't be called a human body. The cells in his body seemed to have turned into nanomachines. It was impossible for the human brain to handle so much work in such a short period of time. But now, Li Xian's entire being was like a super brain, rapidly processing all sorts of data streams. As the digitalization of his body sped up, Zhou Wen also felt the power fluctuations of the Terra Grade. Is he advancing to the Terra Grade? Zhou Wen looked at Li Xian in surprise and delight. He didn't know if Li Xian could survive the thousand-year dream after advancing to the Terra Grade. In the eyes of Lu Buzz Han and company, Li Xian, who was glowing, was gradually turning transparent before completely disappearing as though he had turned invisible. Terror transformation? And Jingyu looked in horror at the spot where Li Xian had vanished and finally couldn't help but shout. Currently, there weren't many humans who could reach the Terra Grade. Most of them were humans who had contracted Guardians and had raised the Guardian to the Terra Grade. Humans who advanced to the Terra Grade on their own were very rare, even if they used the mythical serum. Li Xian was clearly different from the people who had contracted guardians. His body was undergoing terror transformation, not simply letting the guardian undergo terror transformation. Chapter 1185 River of Forgetfulness Soup Zhou Wen could see Li Xian in his terror form, as the data stream on his body constantly shimmered, like a smart brain that was rapidly processing calculations. Although Zhou Wen didn't know much about Li Xian's terror transformation, it didn't seem like the effects of the thousand-year dream on him were that intense. After about half an hour, the rapidly flowing data over Li Xian's body finally stopped. 
His sleeping body also woke up. After escaping the terror transformation, Li Xian's body landed heavily on the ground. Does that count as me clearing the dream punishment? Do I need to do it again? Li Xian asked the white-haired granny. However, when he looked over, he realized that the white-haired granny was gone. Zhou Wen and company didn't notice when the white-haired granny had vanished either. What's going on? I guess I cleared it. Li Xian walked out of the torture chamber. Boom! Just as Li Xian walked out of the torture chamber, he heard a loud bang. The door at the back of Netherworld City slowly opened, revealing a path that led outside. Zhou Wen found it odd that he hadn't seen City Lord Netherworld. The City Lord Netherworld he met previously had completely vanished. He hadn't appeared from beginning to end. Furthermore, as the door to Netherworld City opened, there was no desert scenery outside. Instead, a bridge appeared. The stone bridge led into the distance, but there was no end in sight. Yellow smoke beneath the bridge churned, and nothing beneath could be seen. At one end of the stone bridge sat the white-haired granny from the dream punishment chamber. However, there was no stone table in front of her. There was only a huge pot. There seemed to be something boiling in the pot, but the steam was billowing above it as well. It was impossible to tell what was being cooked. Don't tell me this is the legendary bridge of helplessness and Granny Ming Su? Lu Bushin's expression turned odd when he saw the bridge and pot. In fact, when they saw the scene, the others also had the same thoughts as him. The legend of the Bridge of Helplessness and Granny Ming Soup was known by everyone in the East District. Legend had it that after a person died, they would turn into a ghost. If a ghost wanted to reincarnate, they had to drink a bowl of Granny Ming Soup and wash away the memories of their previous life. Only then could they undergo reincarnation as a pure soul. In the six paths of reincarnation for the three realms, all living beings had to drink such a bowl of soup when they reincarnated. It was obvious how magical and strange Granny Meng soup was. After crossing the bridge of helplessness, it would be the true netherworld. It wasn't a place where the living were supposed to go. At this point, even if hell was ahead, Zhou Wen and company could only take the risk. And Tianzua led his men towards the stone bridge. Zhou Wen and Li Xian exchanged looks before heading towards it. The path to the underworld must be taken without any lingering memories. If you wish to step onto the bridge of helplessness, you have to drink a bowl of river of forgetfulness soup. The white-haired granny said when Antienzwa and company approached the stone bridge. Since this is really the river of forgetfulness and the bridge of helplessness, this soup should be the granny Ming soup that can make people forget their past lives, right? And Jingyu asked. I only know the river of forgetfulness soup, but I don't know what granny Ming soup is. The white-haired granny answered calmly, without any change in expression. Aren't you Granny Ming? Lu Bushan asked. I'm only a bridge keeper. All I know is to watch the bridge and sell soup. I've long forgotten my name. The white-haired granny still had the same expression as before, as though it all had nothing to do with her. Then, will drinking your soup make people lose their memories? Lu Bushan asked again. Yes. The white-haired granny answered. Can we cross the bridge without drinking soup? Unwilling to give up, Lu Bushan asked again. Yes. The white-haired granny's answer surprised everyone. However, the white-haired granny continued, As long as you die, you can cross the bridge of helplessness without drinking the river of forgetfulness soup. Overseer, it looks like we can only force our way through. Lu Busun said softly to Ntianzwa. We mustn't, Jowen said. Although he had never seen this white-haired granny, who claimed to be a bridge keeper, attack from the antelope's reaction, her strength was definitely at the calamity grade. Furthermore, this was her territory. If they really fought, it was unknown how many people could survive, much less talk about saving Ouyang Lan and company. You forget everything when you drink the soup. What can we do if we don't barge in? Lu Bushan asked Zhou Wen. Zhou Wen walked in front of the white-haired granny and sized up the bridge of helplessness. He couldn't see anything. All he could see was billowing yellow smoke. It was unknown how deep the river of forgetfulness was. May I ask if a group of humans came here about ten days ago? Zhou Wen asked. I forgot. I only sell soup and don't look at their faces. The white-haired granny answered expressionlessly. Then did you sell any soup ten days ago? Zhou Wen wasn't anxious as he asked after some thought. Yes. The white-haired granny finally answered Zhou Wen's question. Can you tell me how many bowls you sold that day? Zhou Wen asked again. Eight bowls? The white-haired granny answered. That's right. It should be Madame Lan and company. According to the clues and information, there should have been eight who retreated into Netherworld City. Lu Bushan said happily, and Tianzua and Nshum jolted. Madame Lan and company were likely still alive, so this was naturally good news. Did all of them drink the soup? And Tianzua asked. To cross the bridge of helplessness, they naturally have to drink the river of forgetfulness soup unless they're dead. The white-haired granny answered. 
Is it possible to drink the river of forgetfulness soup without losing your memories? And Tianzhu asked again. There's the three live stone in the river of forgetfulness. If you can engrave your name on the three live stone, you won't lose your memories of your past life even if you drink the river of forgetfulness soup. The white-haired granny answered. Where's the three live stone? Lu Bushan hurriedly asked. In the river of forgetfulness. The white-haired granny's answer disappointed everyone. It was unknown how big or deep the river with the billowing yellow smoke was. They also didn't know what the three live stone looked like. It was like searching for a needle in a haystack. Young Master Wen. And Shum looked at Zhou Wen. It seemed a little difficult to find the three live stone now. If possible, it was best to barge through. However, Zhou Wen had previously said that they couldn't barge in. So and Shum wanted to seek his opinion. Let's search for it. Zhou Wen looked at the river of forgetfulness, hoping to find the legendary three live stone. The legendary three live stone was something that recorded one's past and present lives. However, it looked different from the legends. Lu Bus Hun and company looked at Ntianzhua. They ultimately followed his lead. Find the three live stone. Ntianzhua glanced at Zhou when before looking at the river of forgetfulness. Overseer, we can use companion beasts here. Let me give it a try, an officer said. Zhou Wen and company also realized that this place was different from Netherworld City. There was no taboo power that prohibited flight and companion beasts. And Tianzhua nodded as the officer summoned a huge silver eagle. Under his control, the eagle flew towards the river of forgetfulness. Just as it touched the yellow smoke in the river, it was suddenly yanked into the yellow smoke. Then it vanished. The eagle symbol on the officer's body also vanished. Chapter 1186 River of Forgetfulness The officers under Tianzhua made a few more tries, but the outcome was the same every time. No matter what kind of companion beast it was, regardless of its attributes or type, as long as it approached the river of forgetfulness's smoke, it would immediately plummet into the river without a trace. It wouldn't even cause a ripple. It was useless for the companion beasts to attack the river of forgetfulness. They all vanished the moment they entered the river. It was unknown how deep the river of forgetfulness was. It was impossible to even enter the river of forgetfulness, much less search for the three live stone in the river. Zhou Wen and Li Xian also summoned some low-level companion beasts and made them attempt to approach the river of forgetfulness. However, just like in Tianzhua and company's attempts, no companion beast could survive in the river of forgetfulness. Zhou Wen listened attentively and used great Brahma to strengthen his senses. He looked into the river of forgetfulness, but he didn't discover anything. Overseer, let me give it a try. An officer stood up and saluted in Tianzhua. Zhou Wen and Li Xian glanced at the officer and saw that he was wearing a military uniform and a military coat. He wore a gas mask and a military cap. Zhou Wen and Li Xian had some impression of this officer because his attire was very odd. They didn't know what he looked like or what his name was. Are you confident? And Tianzhua asked the officer. I noticed something. I can give it a try. The officer answered. Proceed. And Tianzhua nodded slightly. The officer saluted slightly before walking towards the river of forgetfulness. However, to Zhou Wen's surprise, he didn't summon his companion beast. Instead, he walked towards the river of forgetfulness himself. He walked very slowly. It could be described as being very careful, but for him to step into the river of forgetfulness was clear madness. Previously, when they used companion beasts to scout a path, a mythical companion beast had been sucked into the river of forgetfulness without any resistance. For the officer to walk in alone was no different from suicide. The moment the person stepped out, his military uniform seemed to be pulled by some powerful invisible force. It was ripped from his body and dropped down into the river of forgetfulness along with his military boots, military cap, and mask. As for the officer's body, it floated above the river of forgetfulness without falling. However, Zhou Wen and Li Xian were alarmed when they saw the officer's appearance. The officer's body no longer looked like a human's. There was no flesh or blood on it. What they saw was a humanoid gray smoke. As he moved, the smoke ebbed, making him look extremely strange. Zhou Wen knew that this officer wasn't a monster. He had only used the mythical serum created from a special dimensional creature. His body had mutated to a higher level, allowing him to be in such a state. The smoke-like officer's feet had now stepped onto the river of forgetfulness, but he wasn't sucked down. Everyone heaved a sigh of relief. What dimensional creature's mythical serum did this person use? How interesting, Li Xian said as he looked at the officer in surprise. And Shun explained, That's Commander Jia Nong of 413 Task Force. The mythical serum he used was created by a strange mythical creature that broke out of Chess Mountain. His body mutated severely, but he also obtained a very special mythical power. From the looks of it, his strength can restrain the power of the River of Forgetfulness. Overseer, I'll go down and take a look. 
Jia Nong realized that things were as he had guessed. The river of forgetfulness's strange power was useless against him, so he sought in Tianzu's permission. Safety first, and Tianzu said. Yes, Jia Nong answered and was about to fly down the river of forgetfulness. However, he suddenly saw yellow smoke billowing in the distance of the river of forgetfulness. It was as though something was burrowing beneath. Furthermore, the cheering fog was approaching Jia Nong at an extremely fast speed. Jia Nong assumed a battle stance, but in Tianzu was suddenly shouted. Jia Nong return! Upon hearing Antianzwa's order, Jia Nong retreated and left the river of forgetfulness. At the instant he retreated, the yellow smoke exploded where he was standing. A blood-colored palm extended out. Just one finger of the blood-colored palm was more than a meter long. The huge palm seemed to be condensed from blood. With a grab, a terrifying sonic boom sounded in the air. After grabbing nothing, the blood-colored palm quickly retreated to the river of forgetfulness and vanished in the blink of an eye. Jia Nong felt a lingering fear. Although his body wasn't afraid of ordinary physical attacks, the blood-colored palm had only swiped against his body once and had melted much of the gray fog over his body. If he had really been caught, he would probably have vanished into thin air. What was that? Li Xian wrinkled his nose as he smelled a strong scent of blood. No one could answer him because no one knew the answer. The white-haired granny guarding the bridge might know the answer, but she didn't say a word. Finding the three live stone was more difficult than they had imagined. Currently, the only person who could enter the river was Jian Nong, but he couldn't withstand the blood-colored hand. Lu Bushan said with a strange expression. Legend has it that the river of forgetfulness is the dividing line between life and death. There are countless wraiths lingering between life and death in the river. As those wraiths can't cross the bridge of forgetfulness, they can't reincarnate. They can only wander in the river of forgetfulness forever. If a living person comes to the river of forgetfulness, they will pull them down to replace them. From there, they can escape the restrictions of the river of forgetfulness and obtain the chance to reincarnate. Was that blood hand from before a kind of legendary wraith? What you said is a scapegoat in this. You can obtain a chance of rebirth by finding a substitute to replace yourself. And Shun said, Yes, a scapegoat. Could that bloody hand be that thing? Lu Bus Hun nodded. I don't know, but from the looks of it, we can only think of a way to resolve it if we want to find the three live stone. And Shun said, as he stared at the river, Commander Jia, only you can enter the river now. I can only request you make another trip to lure it out. And Tianzhu said to Jia Nong. Yes, sir. Without any hesitation, Jia Nong entered the river of forgetfulness again. This time, he was rather careful, but he couldn't sense the blood-colored hand ahead of time. It was only when Enshun warned him that he could escape in time. When the blood-colored hand appeared, Lu Bus Han and the other officers immediately attacked it. Essence energy of different attributes struck the blood-colored hand, scattering it. However, in the blink of an eye, the scattered sanguine aura condensed again, turning into a blood-colored hand that drilled back into the river of forgetfulness. Chapter 1187 Three Live Stone Everyone was dumbfounded to see their attacks rendered ineffective. And Tianzhu frowned and said, From the looks of it, the blood-colored hand is something like a scapegoat. It has an extreme mean attribute. It's very difficult for ordinary strength to really injure it. Only the most extreme yang forces can do so. Unfortunately, Miss Jane didn't come. Her essence energy art is extreme young. It's the nemesis of these eating creatures. And Shung said with a sigh. Although I've long expected to encounter such a creature, the young type companion beasts we prepared aren't enough to kill the scapegoat. If there's no other way, I'm afraid we won't be able to go down the river to find the three live stone. Lu Bushan said gloomily. Commander Jia, can I trouble you to lure the bloody hand out again? Let me give it a try. Zhou Wen said to Jia Nong. Of course. What Zhou Wen and Li Xian had done was enough to make Jia Nong and company respect them. Therefore, Jia Nong didn't think too much about it. He immediately asked in Tianzhu for permission before heading down the river. Perhaps angered by the previous attack, the moment Jia Nong entered the river, the blood-colored hand rushed out unexpectedly. As it was too sudden, and Sheng didn't have the time to warn them. Just as everyone was alarmed, they suddenly saw a golden light flash. Before the blood-colored hand grabbed Jia Nong, the golden beam pierced through the blood-colored hand. A golden monkey appeared behind the blood-colored hand. It opened its mouth and sucked in the blood mist that formed the blood-colored hand. Like red milk tea, it was sucked into the monkey's mouth. The blood-colored hand couldn't resist at all. The remaining portions of the blood-colored hand wanted to escape back to the river of forgetfulness, but it was too late. Two earrings on the little monkey's ears shattered one after another, turning it into a dark gold behemoth. Golden light shone everywhere over its body. Wherever the golden light went, it dispersed the yellow fog over the river of forgetfulness, revealing a huge blood-colored ghostly shadow. The blood-colored ghostly shadow was neither human nor ghost. Lurking in the river, 
one of its palms had been severed. Truth Listener roared and rushed above the fleeing blood-colored shadow. It opened its mouth and swallowed it as though it was slurping jelly. That's the companion beast that fought DT on. Human Sovereign. Could Zhou would be Human Sovereign. And Jingyu suddenly jolted when he saw Truth Listener transform. He thought of something unbelievable as he widened his eyes and couldn't help but look at Zhou when who was standing by the river of forgetfulness. It wasn't just in Jingyu. Everyone who had seen Truth Listener fight DT on recognized it. After all, Truth Listener's appearance and battle had been too shocking. That was a terrifying existence that could withstand a calamity-grade creature. Even five years later, no human had such a companion beast. No wonder. So that's how it is. It's no wonder that in Netherworld City, even the torture tools and the torture chambers have to obey Young Master Wen's orders. So Young Master Wen is human sovereign. I never expected. Blue Bus Hun said in delight. The way everyone looked at Zhou when changed. If it was only respect before, now, their eyes seemed to be filled with worship. To be able to fight alongside human sovereign made them feel honored. Ajitanin. Is Young Master Wen really that person? Lu Bushun wasn't sure as he whispered to Insheng. If you think so, so be it. If you think otherwise, so be it. Insheng said ambiguously. Lu Bushun was somewhat depressed. He felt his heart itching to know the answer. Meanwhile, over the river of forgetfulness, Truth Listener had already shown its might. Truth Listener charged into the river of forgetfulness. Wherever it passed, the yellow smoke was melted by the golden light from its body. Scapegoats appeared one after another. However, Truth Listener was extremely effective against dimensional creatures like scapegoats. As long as the scapegoats approached it, they would immediately be devoured. It was like a god incarnate. The scapegoats that originally made people feel terrified now gave off a weak and pitiful feeling. After Truth Listener charged around for a while, it suddenly discovered a strange stone erected by the riverside where the smoke dissipated. The stone was 30 feet tall and stood alone near the riverbank. However, it was different from ordinary river rocks. The stone was red in color and its form resembled a baby in swaddling clothes. The stone emitted a faint red glow. Previously, it had been hidden by the yellow smoke and scapegoats in the river and couldn't be seen. Now that it was right in front of everyone, they immediately felt that it was extraordinary. Is that the three live stone? Li Xian asked as he sized up the strange stone. No one could answer him. No one had seen the legendary three live stone before, so they naturally couldn't tell if it was real or fake. Overseer, let me give it a try. Jia Nong sought and Tian's was permission. And Tian's would nodded slightly as Jia Nong flew towards three live stone. With Truth Listener there, the surrounding yellow smoke and scapegoats didn't approach. Jia Nong successfully arrived in front of the strange stone. He extended his smoky fingers that swiped at the three live stone. The white-haired granny had said that as long as they could leave their names on the three live stone, they wouldn't be affected by the river of forgetfulness soup. However, Jia Nong's finger failed to leave any marks on the strange stone. Jia Nong condensed his strength again. This time, he used all his strength. The gray smoke converged into a sharp blade and slashed at the strange stone. The strange stone remained unharmed. It didn't leave a mark. Let me give it a try. And Jingyu wanted to use his temporal powers to leave a mark on the strange stone. He pointed at the strange stone. Although it was only a single point, countless fingers seemed to point at the same spot. This move of his was called water droplet penetration. It used the power of time to turn the attack of a single tap into a continuous attack. Within Jingyu's present ability, he had actually repeated the same tap more than 300 times. However, despite such continuous attacks, the three live stone remained unmoved. It didn't leave any imprints, not even a fingerprint. Although they had found the three live stone, they couldn't leave their names on it. It was no different from not having found it. Everyone looked at Ntianzwa and Zhou Wen. They suspected that Zhou Wen was human sovereign and felt more respect for him. They couldn't help but think of him when they encountered problems. Zhou Wen and Ntianzwa had no intention of making an attempt. Instead, Ntianzwa walked back and arrived in front of the bridge of helplessness. He asked the white-haired granny, Ma'am, how can one leave their name on the three live stone? The white-haired granny said coldly, The three live stone is about three lives. One naturally has to have a past and present life to leave a name on it. Without a past and present life, it's naturally impossible to leave a name on it. Chapter 1188 Leaving Names Do humans really have past lives? Joe Wen frowned inwardly. He didn't believe in reincarnation. Joe Wen had always felt that it didn't matter if someone died. There wouldn't be anything like a previous life or next life. We'll know once we give it a try. Li Xian was intrigued. He ran to the three live stone and made an attempt, but like in Jing Yu and company, he failed to leave a mark on it. It's indeed a lie. How can I not have a previous life? 
I must have been an emperor in my previous life with a huge harem. Li Xian muttered hatefully. And Tianzhu also got the remaining officers to give it a try, but just like in Jingyu, none of them could leave a mark on the three live stone. Everyone felt that it was very likely that they had been fooled by the white-haired granny. However, when it was in Sheng's turn, his finger sank in upon gently touching it. This was different from the previous attempts in which the three live stone was extremely hard and undamageable by any weapon. It was now like sand. And Sheng was slightly taken aback before he casually wrote down his name. After and Sheng finished writing his name, his finger left the three live stone. The name on it flashed with golden light before disappearing. Does this count as a success? Everyone looked at the three live stone and in Sheng in surprise. And Tianzhu also went up to give it a try, but like the other officers, he failed to leave any marks on the three live stone. That doesn't make sense. Isn't it said that all creatures can be reincarnated? Why is Ajitunin the only one with a past and present life, while we don't? We aren't any less real than Ajitunin. Why is he the only one with a past and present life? Lu Bushan grumbled. It doesn't matter if he has a past or present life. What matters is how we cross the bridge of helplessness. Only Ajitunin can leave his name on the three live stone. We can't just let him go alone, right? And Jingyu said. And Tianzhu frowned at the thought. Clearly, he couldn't accept such an outcome. Young Master One, do you want to give it a try too? Lu Bushan asked Zhou Wen. Lu Bushan was eager to know if Zhou Wen was human sovereign or if he just had a similar companion beast. The others also looked at Zhou Wen, wondering if he could leave his name on the three live stone. Although reincarnation was said to be ethereal and unreal, many people still hoped that there would be a next life. It could be considered a form of spiritual sustenance. Zhou Wen thought for a moment and walked towards the three live stone with Yuri in his arms. He also wanted to know if he could leave his name on the three live stone like in Sheng. Zhou Wen extended his finger and pressed it on the three live stone. Everyone's eyes were drawn by his finger. However, when Zhou Wen pressed his finger on it, the three live stone didn't react at all. Clearly, he didn't have a past life. Just as Zhou Wen was about to retreat, Yur extended her finger and pressed it on the three live stone. However, the hard rock turned extremely soft under Yur's finger. Soon Yur wrote the word, Yur, on the three live stone. Could it be that reincarnation really exists in this world? Zhou Wen felt odd when he saw this. Yur was half human and half ghost. But when she first born, it was said that she was the reincarnation of a goo god. Now, she had managed to engrave her name on the three live stone. This made one's imagination run wild. Why was she able to engrave her name? Could she really be the reincarnation of a goo god? In the end, only An Sheng and Yer left their names on the three live stone, but it was impossible for them to cross the bridge to save Ouyang Lan. Everyone was somewhat vexed. Despite knowing that Ouyang Lan and company might be ahead, they couldn't walk forward no matter what. From the looks of it, the only way is to storm through by force. Lu Bus Hun rubbed his fist in eagerness. Everyone returned to the white-haired granny. Zhou Wen knew that it was impossible to barge in. He looked at her and asked, Apart from leaving our name on the three live stone, is there no other way to cross the bridge of helplessness without losing our memories? No. The white-haired granny answered firmly. Everyone fell silent as Zhou Wen pondered for a moment, before suddenly turning around and walking towards the three live stone. Even the antelope didn't dare offend the white-haired granny. Therefore, it was almost impossible for them to barge through. They might as well think of a solution regarding the three live stone. Previously, Zhou Wen had only casually pressed down, so it was understandable that he hadn't left any traces. Now that he was at the end of his tether, and he was bent on crossing the bridge of helplessness, he could only turn his sights back to the three live stone again. As he circulated Terra Great Power, he struck the three live stone, but the outcome was the same. Even Terra Great Power couldn't deal damage to the three live stone. Zhou Wen switched to several different Terra Powers and used all of them, but none of them worked. Demon God Body, Heaven Opening Scripture of the Highest Elder, Clown Mask, Singularity Universe, and Great Brahma's powers were useless. How can I satisfy this condition of having a past and present life? Zhou Wen frowned in thought. Lu Bus Hun and company were somewhat alarmed when they saw that Zhou Wen was still unable to leave a mark on the three live stone despite all his efforts. If even Zhou Wen couldn't do it, there was probably no hope. I don't believe it. Can't I leave a mark on it? Zhou Wen began carving sword pill on his wheel of destiny. Soon, a sword pill appeared in Zhou Wen's palm. He reached out to grab it, and it immediately transformed into a sword. Clang! Zhou Wen held the sword transformed from sword pill and slashed at the three live stone, but things remained the same. However, Zhou Wen had no intention of stopping. He continued slashing at the three live stone again and again. He seemed to treat the three live stone as a blade tester as he constantly slashed at it. However, 
No matter how terrifying Zhou Wen's strike was, it couldn't leave a mark on the three live stone. Indeed, it's just a companion beast of the same species. From the looks of it, young master Wen isn't human sovereign. Seeing that Zhou Wen hadn't even cracked the three live stone surface after slashing at it for so long, Lu Bus Hun began to doubt his previous judgment. Human sovereign slash at DT on was an extremely dominating force. Although the force Zhou Wen was dishing out was powerful, it wasn't as powerful as human sovereigns. Furthermore, the weapon in Zhou Wen's hand wasn't the legendary sword. Unbeknownst to them, the immortal calling sword couldn't be used casually. Zhou Wen didn't care what they thought as he continued slashing at the three live stone. At the same time, he engraved the sword pill on his wheel of destiny again and again. He gave all his ideas a try. Not only did he push his sword techniques closer to perfection, but he also made sword pill begin to change. Chapter 1189 Incomplete Sword Pill Although sword pill was in the form of a sword, its essence was a chi refinement technique. It was a technique that absorbed the heaven and earth energies for its own use. In ancient times, chi refinement warriors pursued chi refinement to strengthen themselves to reach the ethereal realm of immortality. Although he had never heard of any chi refinement warrior reaching the realm of immortality, it was an extension of humanity's pursuit of life. Zhou Wen condensed his energy into a sword. Instead of saying that he was practicing his sword art, it was better to say that he was converting his beliefs into a sword. My mind is on the sword. Life and death are separated by a thought. I only wish for my thoughts to be free in this life. What has my next life got to do with me? Zhou Wen engraved the sword pill repeatedly, hoping to draw it into the shape of a sword. At that moment, what Zhou Wen was drawing wasn't a sword, but his beliefs. The sword was akin to him as a person, his heart. The more resilient his heart was, the sharper the sword. I'd rather be average in an above-board manner than compromise my values. The sword that Zhou Wen had drawn was just and moderate, its blade was straight, in the most traditional East District sword style. The sword was like its owner, and this sword was a reflection of Zhou Wen. However, the sword engraved on the Wheel of Destiny failed to help Sword Pill advance to the Terror Grade. What's missing? What's missing? Zhou Wen reflected on himself. In his hundred years of meditation, he had spent relatively less time on the Qi Refinement Art and Sword Pill. It wasn't because Zhou Wen didn't like using swords, but because the Qi Refinement Art was too monotonous. Just practicing and comprehending summarized the essence of this essence energy art. However, with his body trapped, Zhou Wen could only hypothesize without actual practice. Without being able to practice, he lacked the most basic step, making it very difficult for him to take the next step forward. Thus, Zhou Wen hadn't spent too much time on Qi Refinement. Zhou Wen slashed down again and again, carving the sword pill over and over again. The sword pill he drew was somewhat different every time, but none of them could stabilize the wheel of destiny. Clearly, he hadn't truly found his sword heart. What's my sword heart? Killing? Protection? Acting recklessly? None of them seemed to be the case. Joe Wen realized that he didn't seem to understand himself. He failed again and again. It had been a long time since Joe Wen had failed like this. The previous few essence energy arts had successfully completed a terror transformation, making him feel a little smug. He felt that he would achieve the remaining few essence energy arts in just a matter of time. Does it still not work? The sword pill that had been engraved on the Wheel of Destiny vanished again, leaving Zhou Wen somewhat disappointed. Sometimes, the hardest thing to understand wasn't one's opponent, but oneself. This was because one could see others, but not oneself. Before a mirror appeared, no one knew what they looked like. It could be said that they were their most familiar strangers. A mirror reflects the body, whereas a person reflects the heart. I haven't met a person who can let me see myself for who I am. I'm afraid it will be difficult for me to condense a true sword heart. Joe Wynn's mind raced. He knew where his flaws were, but he had no intention of giving up. He wanted to take another path. Since I still don't understand my heart, can I use other methods to replace it? Joe Wynn thought of the immortal culling sword. Back when he slew DT on with a single strike, he had personally experienced the terrifying sword intent of the immortal culling sword. No one understood the concepts and beliefs in that sword better than him. As Zhou Wen recalled the immortal culling sword, he continued carving on the Wheel of Destiny. Lu Bus Hun and company watched Zhou Wen slash the three live stone countless times, but none of them left a mark. Instead, the sword condensed in his hand shattered again and again. They had lost hope. Overseer, can we think of a way to cross the Bridge of Helplessness without passing it? Lu Bus Hun said as he sized up the River of Forgetfulness. And Sheng shook his head and said, Legend has it that the River of Forgetfulness is the boundary between the two worlds. It's no longer a matter of distance from the world of the living to the world of the dead. If we could cross the Bridge of Helplessness without taking it, there wouldn't be so many wraiths trapped in the River of Forgetfulness. But we can't continue like this. Young Master Wen's sword art is so powerful, 
yet he can't leave a mark on the three live stone. I'm afraid we won't be able to take this path. Lu Bushan said with a sigh. Overseer, why don't I go over and take a look first? And Shun suggested. He wanted to cross the Bridge of Helplessness to find Ouyang Wan and company. Wait a little longer. And Tianzhu said, as he looked in the direction of the Bridge of Helplessness. Lu Bushan and company were somewhat puzzled. They didn't know what Tianzhu was waiting for, but Tianzhu's words were military orders. They didn't dare ask further, and could only continue waiting. Meanwhile, the sword transformed from the sword pill in Zhou Wen's hand increasingly resembled Immortal Culling Sword. The more sword pill resembled Immortal Culling Sword, the more illusory it looked to others. It was so indiscernible that it was close to vanishing. Clang! A strange sword hum alarmed the talking Lu Bus Hun and company. Everyone turned their heads and saw Zhou Wen standing in front of the three live stone barehanded. There was a foot long sword mark on the indestructible three live stone. Following that, they saw Zhou Wen move his palm in the air as though he was holding an invisible sword. As Zhou Wen moved his palm, the fragments scattered from the three live stone as sword marks appeared. Soon, Zhou Wen's name was engraved. The strokes of the two words were like a sword's edge. Every stroke was filled with terrifying sword intent. Just looking at the two words made Lu Bus Hun and company feel a chill run down their spines as they subconsciously took half a step back. What a terrifying sword intent! After snapping to their senses, everyone realized that it was only the sword intent contained in the words. Zhou Wen's name was forcefully engraved on the three live stone. It didn't vanish like in Sheng and Yer's names. It was unknown if engraving a name in such a way was effective. Ah Sheng, I'll cross the bridge with you. Zhou Wen retracted the terror form sword pill and secretly glanced at the information on his phone. Terror transformation, incomplete sword pill, S grade. Although there was something wrong with the name, it was within his expectations. After all, this terror form sword pill was based on the immortal culling sword, not his own sword heart. If it wasn't because he didn't have the luxury of time, Zhou Wen wouldn't have chosen this path. It was safer to advance to the terror transformation stage with a sword heart he could call his own. Overseer, why don't young master Wen and I head over to take a look? And Sheng requested and Tian's was permission again. Does engraving a name like that count? And Tian's would didn't answer and Sheng as he asked the white-haired granny. Just leaving a name would do, the white-haired granny said calmly. And Tian's would turn around and walk towards the three live stone. As he walked towards it, a strange figure appeared behind him. It was a white humanoid armored creature. He floated behind in Tianzhua with a device similar to a rocket launcher behind him. He held a sword in one hand and a gatling-like weapon in the other. He looked like a modern robot. Chapter 1190 Stepping Onto the Bridge Duh! 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 The gatling-like weapon swept crazily at the three live stone as blue flame spewed out from its muzzle. When the bullets struck the three live stone, they drilled in. Rows of bullets dotted out the words in Tianzhua. Old Zhao, you are in charge of commandeering this area. Everyone, stay put and wait for our return. As in Tianzhua spoke, he walked towards the bridge of helplessness. Overseer, Lu Bus Hun and Njingyi wanted to say something, but in Tianzhua stopped them with a wave of his hand. It's an order, and Tianzhua said as he walked to the bridge of helplessness. As he walked, the robot-like creature had already transformed into armor that enveloped his body. What's that? Zhou Wen looked at Ntianzhua in surprise. When the armor enveloped his body, Ntianzhua's figure had already vanished from the eyes of ordinary people. Only Zhou Wen could still see him. Without a doubt, this was the result of his terror transformation. However, Ntianzhua himself didn't undergo terror transformation. Instead, the transformation came from the robot-like creature that was in the form of an armor. If it was a guardian, it would be understandable. However, it wasn't a guardian. There was no guardian's aura. In fact, Zhou Wen had seen Ntianzhua use something similar in the past. It was likely his life soul, but this life soul was very different from before. This difference wasn't completely due to the terror transformation. There seemed to be other factors mixed in. Could it be that Ntianzhua didn't use the mythical serum, but allowed his life soul to fuse with something similar to the mythical serum? Zhou Wen guessed, but he wasn't able to verify his guess. Overseer, I'll go first. You can come up later. And Shang hurriedly ran over hoping to step onto the bridge of helplessness before Ntianzhua. However, a spoon stopped him. The white-haired granny held a bowl of soup in her other hand and said expressionlessly, You must drink the river of forgetfulness soup before stepping onto the bridge of helplessness. Without any hesitation, and Sheng took the bowl and glanced at the billowing yellow smoke in the bowl. He raised it to his mouth and swallowed all the yellow smoke. And Tianzhua looked at and Sheng from the side without stopping him. Zhou Wen, on the other hand, was extremely nervous. And Sheng waited for a while, and after confirming that he hadn't lost his memories, he said to Ntianzhua, 
Overseer, I'm fine. My memories are still intact. Overseer, I'll step onto the bridge first. You can step onto the bridge when I reach the opposite bank without any problems. With that said, and Shung stepped onto the bridge of helplessness and carefully walked towards the opposite bank. Every few steps and Shung took, he would turn his head and shout. However, Zhou Wen and company could only see him open his mouth without hearing anything. It was merely a short distance, but it was as though an invisible barrier had screened his voice. The bridge of helplessness was an arched bridge. When and Sheng reached the highest point of the bridge, his body suddenly vanished as though he had stepped into another world. When and Tianzhu saw this, he picked up a bowl of river of forgetfulness soup and downed it in one gulp. He turned to look at Zhou Wen and said, Don't risk your life. Leave her here. With that said, and Tianzhu walked onto the bridge of helplessness. Zhou Wen didn't let go of Yer. Although and Tianzhu said it for Yer's sake, Zhou Wen still believed that it was safer to keep Yer by his side. Zhou Wen reached out to get the river of forgetfulness soup, but to his surprise, his hand was blocked by the white-haired granny's spoon. What are you doing? Zhou Wen asked with a frown. And Tianzhu also stopped and looked at the white-haired granny. Lu Bus Hun and company also surrounded her. You don't have to drink it. The white-haired granny said expressionlessly as she retracted her spoon. I can step onto the bridge without drinking the soup? Zhou Wen looked at the white-haired granny in puzzlement. Lu Bus Hun and company were also puzzled. Yes, the white-haired granny answered. Why? Zhou Wen asked. There's no reason. You can choose not to step onto it if you don't want to. The white-haired granny still had that dead expression, as though nothing was worthy of her being moved. Zhou Wen was somewhat depressed. If he had known that he didn't need to drink the river of forgetfulness soup, he wouldn't have gone through so much trouble to leave his name on the three live stone. What about her? Zhou Wen pointed at Yer in his arms. The white-haired granny didn't say a word as she handed over a bowl of river of forgetfulness soup. Yer looked like a child, but her soul wasn't. Without waiting for Zhou Wen to say anything, she took the river of forgetfulness soup and drank it in one mouthful. And Tianzhu didn't immediately continue forward. He watched Yer finish the river of forgetfulness soup without losing her memories, before turning to walk to the other side of the bridge. If there's any danger, head back, Zhou Wen said to Li Xian. Don't worry. I'll run faster than anyone if there's danger, Li Xian said with a smile. Then I'm relieved. He turned around and carried Yer onto the bridge of helplessness. To his surprise, not long after Zhou Wen went up the bridge, the antelope and chick followed. The white-haired granny glanced at them and didn't stop them or get them to drink the river of forgetfulness soup. Chick landed on Zhou Wen's shoulder as the antelope slowly followed behind him. It looked like it was on a vacation as it occasionally looked at the river of forgetfulness under the bridge. Zhou Wen was somewhat surprised. He never expected the antelope to follow him. He had no idea what it was up to. Seeing Zhou Wen walk on the bridge of helplessness with the bird and antelope, Lu Bus Hun and company's expressions turned odd. Lu Bus Hun couldn't help but run to the bridge's end. He squeezed out a smile on his fat face and asked the white-haired granny, Well, granny, if they can cross the bridge without drinking the river of forgetfulness soup, can we do the same? The white-haired granny ignored him and tapped the bowl with her spoon. The meaning was obvious. If he wanted to step onto the bridge, he had to drink the soup first. That's not fair. Why do we have to drink the soup when they can choose not to? Lu Bus Hun deliberately said in an unhappy manner. In fact, he wanted to get the reason from the white-haired granny. The white-haired granny rolled her eyes and smashed the spoon in her hand on Lu Bushin's head, smashing his body into the mud. Only his head was exposed like a radish planted in the ground. Do you think it's fair now? The white-haired granny asked coldly. It's fair. It's very fair. Unable to move, Lu Bus Hun could only squeeze out a fawning smile and nod. Zhou Wen walked onto the bridge of helplessness and looked into the river of forgetfulness. The scenery he saw was different from the scene from the bank. Under the bridge wasn't a bottomless abyss, nor was there any billowing yellow smoke. There was only a small river below. The river water was clear, and it wasn't deep. However, beneath the bridge were piles of bones that covered the riverbed. It was like hell. From the outside, it looked like there was no end to the bridge, but when he really stepped onto it, he realized that it wasn't very long. Zhou Wen didn't walk far before he reached the top of the bridge. Taking a step forward, the scene in front of him changed again. Chapter 1191 Six Realms Zhou Wen had heard many ghost stories from his grandfather since he was young. Many of them were about the netherworld. He had heard plenty of stories about Yama's Hall, Lord Yama, the judges, and small ghosts, etc. In Zhou Wen's impression, he would be at Fengdu City after crossing the Bridge of Helplessness. Fengdu City was also the legendary ghost city. Legend had it that the ten Yama kings lived in Fengdu City. There was an earlier ghost arch, Lord of the Earth, who also lived in Fengdu City. However, in myths and legends, his residence was called Ghostly Capital. 
regardless of which legend it was, one should be able to see some legendary eminences and a ghost city after crossing the Bridge of Helplessness. However, the scene Zhou Wen saw when he stood on the Bridge of Helplessness was somewhat different from what he had imagined. There was no Fengdu city or Yama Palace, not even a small temple. On the other side of the Bridge of Helplessness, there were only six huge doors. On them were the words, Devas Realm, Azura Realm, Hell Realm, Hungry Ghost Realm, Animal Realm, and Human Realm. And Shang and Tianzhuo were standing in front of the six doors, as though they were hesitating about which door to enter. Zhou Wen walked over with Yer in his arms. And Shang and Tianzhuo weren't too surprised when they saw Chick and the Antelope coming over. In the past five years, Chick and the Antelope had exhibited many strange phenomena when they followed in Jing, who was impersonating Zhou Wen. Furthermore, when Zhou Wen hadn't been around, and Shang had been in charge of taking care of them. Within Shang's meticulousness, how could he not discover the strangeness of the Antelope? Seeing Zhou Wen walk over, and Shang said, These six gates should be the legendary six realms of rebirth. Legend has it that ghosts will reincarnate when they enter, but it doesn't say what will happen when living people enter. Zhou Wen thought for a moment and said, If this is really the land of the six realms of rebirth and existence, with so many creatures dying every day on earth, this place would have long been filled with ghosts. How can it be so quiet? It's probably just a dimensional zone. And Shang nodded slightly. Although that's the case, since there are six paths, it's very likely that there's a taboo power that corresponds to the six realms of rebirth and existence. We have to be wary of that. Furthermore, we don't know which door Madam and the others entered. If we try them one by one, it will waste too much time. Zhou Wen sized up the six doors and said, In theory, entering the mortal realm door is naturally the most normal choice. She would not choose the human realm. And Tianzhua, who had been silent all this while, suddenly said, Why? Zhou Wen was puzzled. And Tianzhua didn't answer. And Sheng hurriedly explained, Madam's personality is somewhat different from ordinary people. If it were an ordinary person, they would definitely choose the most reliable human realm. However, if it were Madam, she would definitely think of something else. Perhaps she would think an obvious hint like the human realm is a trap, and choose another door. Of course, this is only an example. In fact, Madam might go one step deeper. With her personality, the possibility of her choosing to enter the human realm is indeed very low. And Sheng added, Zhou Wen thought for a moment, and felt that what In Sheng said made sense. From the looks of it, Ouyang Lan was indeed an unpredictable person. The first time Zhou Wen went to her place to eat, she had hoodwinked her daughter. Zhou Wen was truly alarmed back then. Then which door would Sis Lan choose? Zhou Wen sized up the other five doors. His understanding of Ouyang Lan was limited. He really couldn't guess which path she would choose. This? Didn't I just say that Madam has a unique personality? It's really difficult to guess which path she took. And Sheng said helplessly, as he spread out his hands. And Tianzhu suddenly said, Although her personality is strange and unique, she's definitely not the type to act rashly without any reason. She will definitely choose a path that we can guess. And Sheng looked at Tianzhu and asked, Overseer, in your opinion, which path would Madam choose? I'm thinking about it. And Tianzhu answered. And Sheng looked at the doors and said, I doubt it would be the beast realm. Madam is someone who loves beauty so it's impossible for her to have any desire of becoming another creature. The Hungry Ghost Realm and the Hell Realm are collectively known as the Three Evils with the Beast Realm. They aren't great candidates either. I believe the chances of Madam choosing them aren't high. The remaining Devas Realm and Azura Realm seem to be possible. Typically, ordinary people would choose the Heaven Realm that legends foretell good fortune, but with Madam's personality, she might also choose the Azura Realm. What kind of place is the Azura Realm in Legends? Zhou would only knew the name of Six Realms so he didn't understand it in detail. The Azura Realm is a fiendish path. Typically, when one sinks into the fiendish path, it refers to the Azura Realm. However, the Azura Realm is also listed as one of the three goods. The reason is very complicated. I don't understand it in detail either. And Shun explained. And Tianzhu looked at the door of the Azura Realm and said, Azura is spread across the six realms. There's Deva Azuras in the Devas Realm, Human Azuras in the Human Realm, Hell Azuras in the Hell Realm, and Hungry Ghost Azuras in the Hungry Ghost Realm. Azuras are different across the different realms. The only similarity is that Azuras are warlike. It's the same no matter which realm they're in. Ah Shang, you're right. With her personality, she most likely chose the Azura Realm. Furthermore, she can only choose the Azura Realm. And Tianzhu said, as he walked towards the door of the Azura Realm. Why? And Shang asked in puzzlement. Although the possibility of Devas Realm was smaller, it wasn't impossible. And Tians was said without turning his head. That's because she doesn't have a good impression of things with the character Tian after watching a particular battle one in the past. 
She even wanted to change the Teon in my name. So she definitely wouldn't choose the Devas realm. Which battle? Why don't I know? And Shen asked. However, and Tianzhu didn't answer him as he walked through the door of the Azura realm. Zhou Wen was also somewhat curious as to which battle made Ouyang Lan dislike the character. Tian, young master one, let's go in as well. When Sheng saw that Tianzhu had vanished, he called out to Zhou Wen and immediately rushed through the Azura realm's door. Just as Zhou Wen was about to follow him in, he suddenly felt a force pulling at his clothes, pulling him to the other side. Looking down, he saw the antelope biting the corner of his shirt and pulling him to the other side. What are you doing? Zhou Wen asked the antelope. The antelope wrote a few words on the ground with its hooves. Oh Yang Lan didn't enter the Azura realm. Follow me. How do you know that she didn't enter the Azura realm? Zhou Wen didn't believe the antelope as he stared at him and asked. Why do you think Oh Yang Lan entered this place? The antelope asked in return. She was forced to enter after encountering danger. Zhou Wen answered. Since she knows that there's danger and knows that you will definitely come to save her, she will guess that Ntianzua will think that she entered the Azura realm. If she enters the Azura realm, it's very likely that you will face the same danger. What do you think she would choose? The antelope said. You mean that in order to prevent us from being in danger, she would do the opposite and take a path that Ntianzua would never think of? Zhou Wen immediately understood the antelope's intentions and couldn't help but look at the Devas realm. Ntianzua had said that Ouyang Lan hated the character. Tian. It was impossible for her to choose the Devas realm. If the antelope's deduction was right, Ouyang Lan had most likely entered the Devas realm. Chapter 1192 Deva Although this was only the antelope's guess, Zhou Wen felt that it made sense. Since Ntianzua and company had entered the Azure realm, it was a form of double insurance if he headed for the Deva realm. The antelope led the way into the Deva realm as Zhou Wen followed, carrying Yir as he led Chick. The Deva realm's door was like water. The moment Zhou Wen's body touched the door, he sank in and arrived in front of a huge mountain. How big could a mountain be? In Zhou Wen's imagination, the largest was an existence like the Himalayas. But the mountain in front of him gave Zhou Wen the feeling that there was no end or peak. Looking left and right, he couldn't see the land beyond the mountain. Looking up, he couldn't see the top that penetrated the clouds. Then, Zhou Wen realized that he was actually very far from the mountain. It was only because the mountain was so huge that it gave an oppressive feeling, making him feel like he was at its base. With a thought, Zhou Wen used teleportation to arrive near the mountain. However, despite doing so several times, he was astonished to discover that the mountain remained so far away. It was as though he hadn't approached it in any way. Walk over. The antelope rode on the sand. Zhou Wen nodded and carried Yir forward. After walking for a short distance, he suddenly saw a figure fly over. A fairy? Zhou Wen sized up the figure in the air, an extremely beautiful woman. Her clothes fluttered like an otherworldly fairy, but she had the aura of a dimensional creature. She was somewhat similar to the fairy's Zhou when it seen before. There was a strange glow over the fairy-like woman's body, making her skin look moist and crystalline like milk. It's a deva. The antelope rode on the ground. You've really been here before? Zhou Wen asked the antelope. The antelope didn't answer, but the female deva had already flown over. Before Zhou Wen could decide what to do, Chick spat out a golden flame and burned the female deva to ashes. An essence energy crystal dropped from the sky and landed in the sand. Zhou Wen picked up the essence energy crystal and looked at it on his phone. He realized that it was a 64-valued essence energy crystal. Clearly, the female deva had been at the mythical stage. The group continued walking forward and soon saw a few more devas. There were men and women among them. All of them were extremely handsome, and they were mythical creatures. Unfortunately, Chick thought nothing of the beauty. It spewed out golden flames and burned all the devas it saw to death. Two more crystals dropped. One of them was an 80-valued constitution crystal, allowing Zhou Wen to boost his stats. Although he had advanced to the mythical stage for quite some time, his stats hadn't maxed out. Up to now, only one of his stats had reached 81 points. These devas are clearly at the mythical stage. Why do they look so weak? Zhou Wen asked the antelope in puzzlement. Although Chick was very strong, those devas were at the mythical stage after all. It didn't seem reasonable for them to be burned to death without any resistance. The antelope curled its lips and rode on the ground. Weak. In a while, you will know if they are weak or strong. When Zhou Wen asked again, the antelope didn't say anything else and walked towards the mountain. Along the way, they encountered a few more devas which were burned to death by Chick. These devas weren't the fastest nor were they strong. They lined the bottom of the mythical stage, similar to the mythical fake immortals in Deer Terra's pavilion, only weaker. Zhou Wen previously hadn't managed to come close to the mountain despite teleporting several times, but he was now getting closer and closer to the foot of the mountain. Just as he was about to reach the foot of the mountain, 
he suddenly saw a red-dressed female deva surrounded by red flowers. After discovering Zhou Wen and company, the female deva flew over. Chick spat out a golden flame without any mercy. However, this time, Chick's flames failed to burn the female deva to death. She actually dodged Chick's flames. Chick flapped its wings angrily and rushed forward to spew out more golden flames. However, the female deva's movement technique was outstanding. She danced in flight, dodging all of Chick's flaming attacks. When she danced, the red glow over her body flowed like petals. It looked extremely beautiful. When Chick rushed over, it touched the red light petals, causing the petals to automatically vanish like bubbles. The female deva only dodged without counterattacking. She didn't seem to take the initiative to attack. After watching for a while, Zhou Wen became more and more puzzled. This female deva's movement technique was very good, and even on par with Zhou Wen's former transcendent flying immortal movement technique, but Chick's movement technique and speed were higher than female deva's. With them both being at the mythical stage, it didn't make sense that Chick failed to finish her after so long. However, the truth was that the female deva easily dodged all of Chick's attacks, making Zhou Wen frown. This was no longer a matter of movement techniques or speed. Zhou Wen had already noticed that the female deva had strangely dodged Chick's attacks several times in virtually impossible situations. Chick looked like it was about to succeed several times, but still failed. Its ferocious nature was immediately triggered. It raised its head and let out a long cry as golden light emitted from its mouth. Golden flames spewed out like a tidal wave, turning into a surging sea of flames that enveloped a large area, burning the female deva to ashes on the spot. Unfortunately, the female deva didn't leave anything behind. How strange. Do the devas here not hurt people? Zhou Wen frowned in thought. From the battle just now, the female deva hadn't launched any attacks from beginning to end. It wasn't that she hadn't had a chance, but it was as though she had no intention of attacking. This was the first time Zhou Wen had seen such a dimensional creature. She has already attacked. It's just that you didn't see it. If it were any other mythical creature fighting her, this wouldn't be the situation you're seeing. The antelope rode on the ground. She's not at the terror grade. There's no reason why I can't see her attack. Even if she is at the terror grade, I should be able to see her. Wait. Could her attack be the red light over her body? Zhou Wen immediately understood that there was definitely something wrong with the red light. It was only because Chick's physique was too strong that it hadn't been affected. This is just the beginning. The fun lies ahead. After the antelope finished riding, it headed for the mountain. Before long, he saw another deva that emitted a red glow. However, this time, it was a man. Chick went up to fight again. Just like before, the deva dodged the attacks that certainly should have hit several times. It infuriated Chick to spew out a sea of flames, burning the deva to ashes. Chapter 1193 Deva's Ability Although Chick still wielded the absolute advantage, it was very odd that Chick, who was nearly invincible among its peers, found it so difficult to deal with a mythical creature. Although there weren't many devas here, they weren't rare. The glowing red devas weren't a rare species. So Zhou Wen was somewhat surprised that they could fight Chick to such an extent. Zhou Wen had already noticed that the problem lay with the devas movement technique. After plenty of observation, Zhou Wen still couldn't figure out what the strange movement technique was. As he walked up the mountain path, he quickly saw another glowing red deva appear. Chick no longer had its previous spirit. Although the expenditure was nothing to it, fighting glowing red devas left Chick somewhat depressed. It no longer charged forward eagerly. Zhou Wen wanted to figure out what was going on with the glowing red devas movement techniques, so he summoned two golden battle god halberds and made them fly towards the glowing red deva in a pincer attack. The golden battle god halberd was extremely sharp. Its offensive strength was rather good among mythical creatures, but they were just too clumsy. The two golden battle god halberds failed to touch the red flow deva in their pincer attack. At the same time, a strange scene happened. In the battle, red rust appeared on the golden battle god halberd's golden body. Furthermore, the red rust increased, making the two originally golden divine weapons look like scrap metal that had been thrown in a pile for years. Is this the glowing red deva's ability? Zhou Wen's heart palpitated. He had never seen such an ability. Thankfully, Chick could resist this power. Otherwise, the outcome would be unimaginable. Clang! A rusted golden battle god halberd smashed at the glowing red deva, but it missed him. Then, it failed to stop in time and smashed into the mountain wall beside him. The golden battle god halberd snapped and Zhou Wen lost a mythical companion beast. Holy sh asterisk t, what's going on? Now, Zhou Wen finally understood what the antelope meant. It wasn't that these devas weren't strong, but their strength was different from ordinary dimensional creatures. What kind of power is this? Zhou Wen retreated a distance to ensure that he wasn't affected by the red glow before asking the antelope. He was ultimately at the mythical stage. Although he had the strength of the terror grade, 
he hadn't reached the terror grade. It was best to be careful. Before figuring out what the strange power was, Zhou Wen didn't wish to be touched. Clang. Before the antelope could answer, the other golden battle god halberd broke due to the excessive rust. It made Zhou Wen feel the pinch of losing two mythical companion beasts. Although it was relatively easy to have golden battle god halberds drop, and Zhou Wen still had two of them on him, their skills were still pretty good. No one would complain about having too many of the necessary skills in a combined attack. After the golden battle god Halberts died, the glowing red deva flew towards Zhou Wen again. Now, looking at the red glow that appeared to be dancing like flowers over her body, Zhou Wen didn't find it beautiful. He felt horrified. Not daring to let the glowing red deva approach, Zhou Wen summoned Banana Fairy. She blew out a gust of supreming wind, freezing the glowing red deva in midair before she slammed into the mountain wall. Her body was reduced to ice shards, and she died on the spot. A companion egg that suffused a red glow dropped. Zhou Wen was delighted as he hurriedly picked it up and incubated it. A mythical companion egg wasn't enough to delight Zhou Wen. However, with this companion egg, he could know what stats and skills a deva had. It would be of great help to his future plans. Zhou Wen refused to believe that there wasn't a terra grade deva in a place like this. If he could figure out what the abilities a terra grade deva had before encountering one and the way to restrain them, the danger would be greatly minimized. With the injection of essence energy, the glowing red deva companion beast transformed into a red stream of light that rushed into Zhou Wen's body, forming a picture of a fairy on his shoulder. Although Zhou Wen had already received some information from the fairy, he still looked at the mysterious phone's data. He was more used to getting direct data. Crimson deva, mythical. Life providence, deva blessing. Life soul, crimson body glow. Wheel of destiny, lesser deva's five signs of decay. Strength, 63. Speed, 78. Constitution, 62. Essence energy, 71. Talent skill, fairy luck fortune. Companion form, deva robe. After Zhou, when had studied all the abilities of the Crimson Deva, he finally understood why Chick had failed to hit her so many times. Not only was a Crimson Deva's movement technique good, but what was even more terrifying was that it had powers like luck, blessings, and fortune. Although these abilities didn't seem to have any offensive power, their effects were definitely terrifying. As for the Wheel of Destiny ability, Deva's five signs of decay became even more ridiculous when combined with abilities like luck and fortune. Deva's five signs of decay could make an enemy unlucky. Not only would they be unlucky, but they would also age and perish. With the enemy becoming unlucky, while they enjoyed good luck and fortune, it was obvious how difficult it would be for an opponent to hit them. Although this Crimson Deva isn't strong in combat, these skills and abilities are really strong. If skills like luck and fortune can be transferred to a combat pet, it will be even better. Zhou Wen finally understood why a Crimson Deva could sometimes dodge attacks in an unbelievable manner. It wasn't because their movement techniques were good, but because their opponent was unlucky while they were very lucky. The only pity was that the luck and fortune skills of a Crimson Deva were only effective on themselves and wouldn't affect the people around them. Everything else is fine. No matter how lucky she is, she won't be able to dodge area of effect attacks. However, this Deva's five signs of decay is somewhat troublesome, Zhou Wen thought to himself. Legend had it that Deva's five signs of decay was an ominous omen before the death of a Deva. It was also divided into a lesser and greater Deva's five signs of decay. Now, it had become the Wheel of Destiny ability of a Deva. Just the power of the lesser Deva's five signs of decay was strange enough. If he encountered a greater Deva's five signs of decay or a terror great Deva, perhaps a single Deva's five signs of decay would plague them with bad luck. They would be unlucky and die without knowing why. What kind of power can crack the Deva's five signs of decay? Zhou Wen carefully ran through the list of companion beasts he had. Among the few at the Terra Grade, Banana Fairy likely didn't have a promoting and inhibiting relationship with Deva's five signs of decay. Ice Maiden was about the same. Jade Rabbit and the Seven Seas Dragon King were most likely going to be inhibited. There didn't seem to be any power that could restrain the Deva's five signs of decay. Truth Listener was the one most likely to inhibit it. Among Zhou Wen's few powers, perhaps only the heaven-opening scripture of the Highest Elder was useful. Chapter 1194 Terror Deva Zhou Wen planned on experimenting on a Crimson Deva to see if Truth Listener and Heaven Opening Scripture of the Highest Elder were of any use. It was better to try it on a mythical Crimson Deva than a Terror Grade Deva. He continued walking along the mountain path, hoping to find another Crimson Deva. However, after walking for a short while, he saw a female Deva emitting a lotus like golden light flying towards him. As he hadn't seen the gold glowing Deva enter her Terror Transformation, Zhou Wen didn't know if she was at the terror level. He hesitated without charging forward. Instead, he summoned the fiend armored tiger soul general, 
and made a charge at her. Zhou Wen wanted to give it a try. He wanted to see if the attributes of Davis' five signs of decay, luck, and fortune were effective against the fiend armored tiger soul general, a companion beast filled with negative powers. In any case, the jinx's master skill was a sore point for Zhou Wen. He wouldn't feel the pinch even if the fiend armored tiger soul general died. The fiend armored tiger soul general charged forward, brandishing the demonic spear to stab at the gold glowing Deva. Like the others, she did not attack. She only circled around the fiend armored tiger soul general and dodged its attack. However, the golden lotus flower that emitted from her body fused into the fiend armored tiger soul general's body upon contact. It was probably the same as the ability of the crimson Deva. It had the effects of the Deva's five signs of decay, but it was unknown if it was the lesser or greater version. After a while, Zhou Wen revealed a look of pleasant surprise. Not only was the fiend armored tiger soul general unaffected by the gold glowing Deva, but the demonic purple flames in its body became even more exuberant due to the infusion of the golden lotus. From the looks of it, not only can the Deva's five signs of decay not bring misfortune to the fiend armored tiger soul general, but it will also accelerate his strengthening. Zhou Wen observed for a while, and found the fiend armored tiger soul general becoming stronger and stronger. The gold glowing Deva was in a sorry state from the pursuit, with several wounds over her body. Her Deva's five signs of decay didn't have much effect on the fiend armored tiger soul general. Luck and fortune skills didn't seem to be of much use either. They were completely restrained by the fiend armored tiger soul general. Before long, the fiend armored tiger soul general slew the gold glowing Deva with his spear. Unfortunately, nothing dropped. The gold glowing Deva's speed and strength were stronger than the crimson Deva, but it was still within the range of the mythical stage. It hadn't reached the terror grade. Knowing that the fiend armored tiger soul general could also restrain Deva's five signs of decay, Zhou Wen felt much better. He charged forward with the fiend armored tiger soul general and later encountered several crimson Devas and gold glowing Devas. After experimenting, Zhou Wen found that although Truth Listener's evil annihilation was effective against the Deva's five signs of decay, it couldn't completely eliminate it. As for the heaven opening scripture of the highest elder, it could perfectly restrain the Deva's five signs of decay. As long as he activated the heaven opening scripture of the highest elder, the Devas didn't pose any harm to Zhou Wen. This put Zhou Wen at greater ease. Even if he encountered a terror grade Deva, he would be invincible against them. However, along the way, Zhou Wen didn't discover any clues related to Ouyang Lan. This made him suspect if Ouyang Lan had come to Deva realm. Were we wrong? Did Sis Lan predict that Ntianzua would have the same thought process as us, so she did the opposite and went to the Azure realm? Zhou Wen said after some thought. The antelope looked at the mountain path ahead and wrote on the ground. It's also possible. However, we are already here. Don't you want to go up and take a look? You are the one who wants to go up, right? What's up there? Zhou Wen felt that the antelope might not have taken this path to save Ouyang Lan from the beginning. The antelope seemed to know that it had to say something. It wrote, There's something on the mountain that can help Chick complete a terror transformation. Even if the person you are looking for isn't there, this trip won't be for nothing. What is it? Zhou Wen continued asking. I'm not sure if that thing is still there. Let's go up and take a look first. The antelope refused to say anything as it continued walking with its head lowered. Zhou Wen thought for a moment and followed. He wasn't sure if Ouyang Lan had come to Deva Realm, but since he was already here, he decided to continue his search. As Zhou Wen walked, he carved on the Wheel of Destiny, maintaining his terror form to deal with any unexpected situations. With the fiend armored tiger soul general leading the way, he killed quite a number of crimson devas and a few gold glowing devas. A skill crystal dropped from a crimson deva. Zhou Wen didn't immediately absorb it. Instead, he put it away and continued on the path. It was unknown how high the mountain was. Zhou Wen estimated that they had already climbed a few thousand meters, but they still couldn't see the peak. It was difficult to imagine how huge the mountain was. Clang! The fiend armored tiger soul general killed another gold glowing deva, and a companion egg dropped. Zhou Wen was delighted as he picked up the companion egg and hatched it. The companion beast he hatched was called Golden Deva. The Golden Deva's attributes were very similar to that of Crimson Immortal. The only difference was that its life soul was called Golden Body Glow. The other attributes were basically the same. Even the Wheel of Destiny was the lesser Deva's five signs of decay. The greater Deva's five signs of decay that Zhou Wen had expected didn't appear. He continued on his way, and when he arrived at a platform, Zhou Wen's heart couldn't help but skip a beat. He saw a divine altar on the platform. Sitting on it was a Deva. The Deva was clearly different from the previous ones. The glow over his body was black. Furthermore, without using the Wheel of Destiny, he couldn't be seen. Terror Grade Deva. Zhou Wen's heart palpitated. 
He originally wanted the fiend armored tiger soul general to return, but to his surprise, it charged forward as though it could see the terror gray deva. The devas from before didn't seem to attack, but the black glowing deva was different. Just as the fiend armored tiger soul general charged over, he threw a slap. A black beam tore out of his palm and instantly struck the fiend armored tiger soul general, sending it flying back. He slammed into the mountain wall, and his fiend armor caved in. When Zhou Wen saw this, he hurriedly retracted the fiend armored tiger soul general. Although he had the urge to kill it at times, he couldn't stand seeing it suffer serious injuries. After condensing the sword pill, Zhou Wen used the heaven opening scripture of the highest elder and used clown mass to teleport. He arrived behind the black glowing deva and slashed at his head. Unfortunately, the black glowing deva turned his body in a seemingly prescient move and dodged Zhou Wen's strike. Zhou Wen's heart palpitated, but he didn't stop. As he constantly teleported, he thrust out sword pill again and again. Every strike was extremely bizarre, making it impossible to dodge. Strangely, no matter how fast Zhou Wen's teleportation was or how accurate his strike was, it was dodged by the black glowing deva. It was as though he could predict the future. He could dodge any of Zhou Wen's attacks ahead of time. No matter how fast the sword was, it was difficult for it to injure him. Chapter 1195 Another Companion Egg Zhou Wen was alarmed. This was the result of the heaven opening scripture's protection. From the essence energy that was rapidly converted by the heaven opening scripture, he could tell how terrifying the black glowing Davis five signs of decay was. If it were anyone else, not only would they not be able to hit the black glowing Deva, but they would probably have their lives taken by the power of the Davis five signs of decay. None of his hits connected. Zhou Wen's sword technique was already as fast as lightning, but he couldn't touch even a strand of the black glowing Deva's hair. How can I crack the black glowing Deva's luck and fortune skill? Zhou Wen knew that if he couldn't crack it, it was useless no matter how fast his sword was. The opposite of luck is misfortune or bad luck. Speaking of bad luck, Tai Sui should be the best choice. However, Tai Sui's combat strength isn't strong. It's fine against microorganisms, but it probably won't be of much use against a Deva. Furthermore, this is a terror grade Deva. A mythical Tai Sui is probably useless. As Zhou Wen thought, he suddenly had an idea and took out the bamboo blade. Bamboo blade was one of the four gentlemen blades. Legend had it that it was a blade with the curse of misfortune. It was unknown if it was of any use. Now, Zhou Wen could only make a last ditch effort. He didn't have any other solutions. If it still didn't work, he would have to get Banana Fairy to take action and see if an area of effect attack was effective against the black glowing deva. However, after slashing a few times, he failed to injure the black glowing deva. Just as Zhou Wen was feeling disappointed, the bamboo blade tore through the black glowing deva's sleeve. Eh, looks like it's still useful. Zhou Wen was overjoyed as he injected his terror powers into the bamboo blade and slashed at the black glowing deva again and again. Soon, Zhou Wen realized that the chances of the bamboo blade hitting the black glowing deva were very low. It took more than a hundred strikes to hit, and it was very difficult to strike a vital spot. Even so, Zhou Wen was overjoyed. As long as he could touch the black glowing deva, there was a chance of killing him. It was better than nothing. If a hundred slashes didn't work, he would use a thousand slashes. If a thousand slashes didn't work, he would use ten thousand slashes. There would come a time when he could successfully kill him. Zhou Wen's transcendent flying immortal was already fast enough. Coupled with the clown mask's teleportation ability, it was unbelievably fast. Blade beams flashed as though they were slashing at the black glowing deva from all directions. It was unknown how many strikes he had delivered. The wounds on the black glowing deva gradually increased. Although they weren't vital spots, they still affected him. In the end, the black glowing deva's body was covered in blade wounds, suffering a death from abrasions. A unique terror grade creature was killed by Zhou when just like that. All that was left was a pile of white bones. Its flesh had been sliced clean. Zhou Wen didn't wish to be so cruel, but he had no choice. He wouldn't have been able to kill the black glowing deva if not for this strategy. With a clang, a companion egg that emitted a black glow dropped out of black glowing deva's body, delighting Zhou Wen. A terror grade companion egg. Zhou Wen hurriedly picked up the companion egg. He never expected it to come so easily. Furthermore, the black glowing deva's ability was very special. It would definitely be of great use in the future. The companion egg's black glow flowed as though it contained infinite mystery. Zhou Wen didn't hesitate to hatch it. As large amounts of essence energy surged in, the companion beast transformed into a black stream of light that entered Zhou Wen's body. Zhou Wen hurriedly took out his phone and looked at the information inside. Deva Azura, Terror. Life Providence. Like Heaven Not Heaven. Life Soul. Destiny's Return. Wheel of Destiny. Lesser Deva's Five Signs of Decay. 
Terror Transformation Greater Davis 5 Signs of Decay Speed, 94 Strength, 91 Constitution, 93 Essence Energy, 91 Talent Skill, Luck, Fortune, Not Heaven, Azura Transformation Companion Form, Saber So the Greater Davis 5 Signs of Decay is the power of the Terror Transformation. It's no wonder I didn't see it on the Golden Deva or the Crimson Deva. However, this fellow is actually called Deva Azura. That's Azura of the Deva race. Zhou couldn't help but be overjoyed when he saw his stats. His companion form is a saber. If I use the saber transform from Deva Azura to slay other Deva Azuras, what will happen with the augmentation of luck and fortune? Zhou thought as he summoned Deva Azura in its saber form. The Azura saber was a long and narrow saber that was slightly curved. It was pitch black but it suffused a cold glow. It looked cold and mysterious, like the arc of the moon left behind during a lunar eclipse. Zhou Wen held the saber and continued walking up the mountain. He couldn't wait to see if it could restrain Deva Azuras. Soon, Zhou Wen and company encountered another Deva. Unfortunately, it wasn't a Deva Azura, but a Crimson Deva. Zhou Wen slashed out with the Azura saber, slaying the Crimson Deva under his blade. Zhou Wen didn't use much strength and even deliberately held back. Yet, the Crimson Deva was still beheaded in one strike. It's indeed useful. Zhou Wen still wanted to know if it was effective against Deva Azuras. He continued walking up the mountain. At first, he didn't wish to encounter Devas, but now, he couldn't wait to meet them. However, he only encountered some Crimson Devas and Golden Devas. He didn't encounter Deva Azuras. After slaying 11 Devas, quite a number of stack crystals dropped, but he didn't obtain any companion eggs or see a Deva Azura. This left Zhou Wen somewhat disappointed. As he walked forward, he suddenly saw a tree growing on the mountain wall in front of him. Ever since Zhou Wen and company had entered the Deva realm, they hadn't seen any plants. There was sand and mountain rocks everywhere, but not a single blade of grass grew. However, there was a crooked tree growing on the mountain wall in front of him. The crooked tree's roots were embedded in the mountain wall, and the tree's body was hanging outside. Zhou Wen didn't know what type of tree it was, but he could see that there were some red fruits on it. The fruits were about the size of a fist, and looked a little like the fruits of a paper mulberry tree. When the antelope saw the tree and fruits, its eyes immediately lit up. As for Chick, it was even more direct. It flapped its wings and flew towards the tree. The antelope pressed Chick down from the sky with its hoof, and wrote on the ground with its other hoof. That tree is extraordinary. It has already entered the saint stage, and can't be easily desecrated. That tree is what you are looking for, Joan asked. The tree is useless. The fruit on the tree is what's very useful. I never expected it to still be there, but it's somewhat difficult to pluck them. The antelope continued writing. Zhou Wen looked at the fruit on the tree and frowned slightly. If even a calamity grave like the antelope said it was difficult, then it was truly difficult. What are those fruits? How can I pluck them? Zhou Wen looked for a while and didn't discover any danger, leaving him puzzled. There were no devas near the tree, nor were there any other dimensional creatures. If the fruits on the tree were so precious, why didn't the numerous devas not pluck the fruits? Why would they still be there? Chapter 1196 Meru Mustard Seed Chapter 1196 Meru Mustard Seed Do you know what mountain this is? The antelope wrote down a question in return. No! Zhou Wen had no idea what mountain it was. He had never been here before, nor were there any rock monuments at the foot of the mountain stating its name. The terror of being uneducated. Since you know that this is the Deva realm, have you never heard of Mount Meru? The antelope wore a disdainful expression. This is Mount Meru? Then is the mountaintop where the legendary Sakura Buddha lives? Zhou Wen looked up at the mountaintop, but he still couldn't see its end. You sure read too much into things. That's not something you should be thinking about now. It's best that you come up with a way to pluck the fruit. The antelope continued writing. Since you've heard of the word Meru, you should know of the Meru mustard seed. This, I don't think I've taken note of this word. What does Meru mustard seed mean? Zhou Wen really hadn't kept abreast of such knowledge. Mount Meru was something he had chanced upon, when reading Buddhist scriptures. He had only read it as a story without studying it in detail. The antelope was somewhat astounded as it explained. Mustard seed refers to an extremely tiny space. Meru refers to Mount Meru. Meru mustard seed refers to a tiny space that can accommodate a mountain. A storage space? Zhou Wen immediately thought of a word. Something like that. It's mostly that. The antelope nodded slightly. What has this got to do with that crooked tree? Zhou Wen sized up the tree again. That's a mustard tree. The fruit on it is the mustard seed. The antelope answered. The fruit is a mustard seed? Didn't you say that the mustard seed is extremely small? Why is the fruit so big? Zhou Wen found it unbelievable. 
Who told you that the fruit is a mustard seed? The antelope wrote in disdain. Zhou Wen was first taken aback before he understood what the antelope meant. He stared at the fruit and said, You mean that there are many mustard seeds in that fruit? A mustard seed can hold one Mount Meru. There are many mustard seeds in the fruit. If you reach out to pluck them, you will immediately fall into an endless space. You might not be able to escape even if it takes the rest of your life. Then how do I pluck it? Zhou Wen asked. I don't know. If it was that easy to pluck it, it wouldn't still be there. Even a calamity-grade creature might not be able to escape if it fell into the endless Meru pocket space. The antelope said. If you don't even know how to pluck it, what's the point of bringing us here? Zhou Wen frowned. Solutions are thought up by people. You are also considered a person, so can't you use your brain? The antelope rolled its eyes at him. It's not like I want that mustard seed fruit. I'm only here to find someone. Why should I think about it? If you want it, think of a solution yourself. Zhou Wen ignored the antelope and prepared to leave the mountain. From the looks of it, Ouyang Lan hadn't come here at all. Otherwise, it would have been impossible for them to leave no traces when they passed by Deva Azura. Even if they had a way to avoid fighting Deva Azura, they should have left some traces from using their skills. However, there was nothing along the way. If Chick eats those fruits, it can advance to the terror grade. The antelope wrote calmly. Chick has fire elemental attributes. If it wants to eat it, it should be eating fire dragon fruits. Why would it eat something that clearly has spatial attributes? Jowen felt that the antelope was trying to trick him into plucking the mustard fruit. The antelope patiently explained, You're right that phoenixes are fire elemental, but have you ever thought about why phoenixes can constantly undergo nirvana rebirth without truly dying? Phoenixes nirvana and resurrection are naturally fire elemental abilities. What's there to say? Jowen said. From this, it can be seen that you don't understand phoenixes at all. It's too superficial. Fire represents destruction and an end, as well as a new life. However, a phoenix's nirvana can't just rely on the renewal power of fire. The antelope pointed at the mustard fruit and continued writing. A mustard fruit is a mustard seed world. A thousand mustard seed worlds make a small kiliocosm. A thousand small kiliocosms make a medium dikiliocosm. A thousand medium dikiliocosms makes a great trichiliocosm. Look at how many mustard fruits there are on that tree. Three. Jowen said after taking a look at the mustard tree and confirming it. Three mustard fruits represent the 3,000 worlds. If Chick can swallow three mustard fruits, it will obtain the spatial powers of the 3,000 worlds. Only then can it truly obtain the ability to undergo nirvana and be reborn. As the saying goes, there are no rootless fruits in the world. If it wants to undergo nirvana and be reborn, it needs to have some kindling. If Chick leaves kindling in the 3,000 worlds, then it will have the possibility of nirvana and rebirth in the future. The antelope wrote. Is that so? Jowen stared at the antelope, momentarily unsure if it was bluffing him or telling the truth. It's up to you to believe it or not. After all, without the mustard fruit, Chick will probably need hundreds of years to advance to the terror grade. And this is under the circumstances of being sufficiently lucky. If you have the patience, keep waiting. With that mentioned, the antelope released its hoof that was pressing down on Chick. Chick wanted to fly towards the mustard fruit, but Joe and called it back. From Chick's reaction, although what the antelope said might not be true, there was no doubt that Chick wanted the mustard fruit. How can I pluck the mustard fruit? Furthermore, even if I pluck it, as you said, if there are really 3,000 worlds inside, how can Chick consume it? Joe and asked the antelope. You'll need to think of a way to pluck it, but you don't have to worry about the consumption. Three mustard fruits only represent 3,000 worlds, not real ones. As long as you can pluck them, that will cut off their energy supply and the spatial powers will naturally converge. When the time comes, they will only be three fruits. How difficult would it be for Chick to eat them? The antelope had clearly thought it through. Even if it's not the real 3,000 worlds, the spatial powers of the mustard fruits are too terrifying. It won't be easy to pluck them. Jowen thought about how he could pluck the mustard fruits. You wouldn't have had the chance if it was easy. They would have long been plucked clean by the devas. The antelope wrote. Jowen thought for a moment and managed to come up with a solution. Therefore, Jowen said, There's a solution, but I don't know if it will work. Let's give it a try. With that said, Jowen plucked a mountain rock from the ground beside him. He weighed it in his hand before throwing it at a mustard fruit. Jowen was naturally using the sky-stealing sun swapping art. As long as the stone touched the mustard fruit, he could swap them. However, Jowen wasn't sure if this method was effective against spatial-type mustard fruits. Chapter 1197 Mustard Fruits The stone quickly flew close to a fruit. Just as it was about to approach the fruit, it suddenly vanished, similar to when Zhou Wen used teleportation. The antelope didn't lie to me this time. 
The mustard fruit is indeed spatial in nature. There's a huge space inside. The Mark Zhou one left on the stone still existed. He could sense that the stone had been teleported to a special space. I wonder if it will work. Zhou Wen could still sense the spatial label on the stone. He planned on trying the sky stealing sun swapping technique, but he didn't know if he could succeed under the present circumstances. After all, the stone had been sent into another space. It was difficult to say if the sky stealing sun swapping art would work. Clown mask that represented the god fiend era and the singularity universe that represented the sky stealing sun swapping art circulated at the same time, producing a strange resonance. Zhou Wen sensed the spatial label on the stone and used the sky stealing sun swapping technique. This technique combined two spatial terror powers. The instant he used it, Zhou Wen found the fruit undergoing a strange change. The mustard fruit that was originally growing on the tree branch suddenly turned into a fist sized stone. In the next second, the stone shattered and the mustard fruit dropped. Zhou Wen was overjoyed, he had succeeded. He had exchanged the mustard fruit with the stone in the mustard space. As there was no space in the stone, the mustard fruit naturally dropped. However, the mustard fruit had already left the mustard tree. Without an energy supply, the spatial powers within the mustard fruit clearly became weaker. Before Zhou Wen could catch the mustard fruit, Chick rushed out excitedly. Like a golden bolt of lightning, it swallowed the mustard fruit in midair. After Chick swallowed the mustard fruit, it suddenly vanished. However, it immediately appeared in another place before disappearing again. It was elsewhere when it appeared again. Chick seemed to constantly teleport as its figure blinked in and out of existence. It took a while before it gradually stabilized. Zhou Wen heaved a sigh of relief when he saw Chick slowly return to normal. He picked up another stone and used Sky Stealing Sun Swapping to get another mustard fruit. Chick was very greedy as it flew over and swallowed the second mustard fruit. This time, its figure shimmered even more as it constantly vanished and appeared in different spots. It lasted longer this time. Chick didn't completely return to normal. Even if it stood there motionless, its figure would suddenly vanish before suddenly appearing again. Oh no! A terrifying fellow is coming! Quickly pluck the third fruit! The antelope suddenly made a sound and didn't write on the ground. Its expression turned extremely solemn. Zhou Wen also felt that something was amiss. He saw dark clouds billowing over the mountain, instantly darkening the world as though it was doomsday. Almost at the same time, a beam of light tore through the dark clouds. It illuminated the area where Zhou Wen and company were. The light was too fast. Before Zhou Wen could pluck the third fruit, the light had already scattered, brightly illuminating the area. Paradise Domain! F asterisk CKU! I'm not done with life! I don't want to go to the Western Paradise! The antelope cried out as a third vertical eye at its glabella suddenly opened. Its entire body emitted a crackling sound. Originally, the antelope was thin and weak, making it look like a malnourished antelope, but at that instant, its body became as strong as a bull. The horns on its head were snow white and crystalline like curved blades. A sanguine glow spewed out from its vertical eye, turning into a blood-colored barrier that enveloped the nearby area. Boom! The brilliance collided with the sanguine barrier. The latter quaked and abruptly shrank. However, it ultimately resisted the terrifying beam and prevented it from descending. At that moment, Zhou Wen had already used Sky Stealing Sun Swapping to remove the last mustard fruit. However, Chick was still constantly shuttling through space. It couldn't control its body. It tried flying towards the third fruit, but as it flew, it involuntarily entered a spatial teleportation state. When it appeared again, it was somewhere else. After several attempts, Chick failed to approach the falling mustard fruit. What are you waiting for? Quickly take the fruit and run. When that fellow comes down, we will all be doomed. The antelope cried out. Blood tears were already flowing out of its vertical eye. The eye looked like it was about to crack open. The sanguine barrier quaked as it shrank, as though it would shatter at any moment. Without any hesitation, Zhou Wen teleported over and grabbed the falling mustard fruit. Then, he went over to grab Chick, hoping to take it away. However, just as he grabbed Chick, Chick's body automatically tore through space and vanished from Zhou Wen's hand, appearing elsewhere. Zhou Wen realized things were going south. Chick's situation was too unstable, so it was impossible for him to grab it and escape. He made a prompt decision and took out the chaos bead. When Chick phased into existence again, Zhou Wen stuffed it into the chaos bead space and stuffed the remaining mustard fruit inside. After confirming that Chick hadn't tunneled out of it, Zhou Wen fled down the mountain at full speed. Seeing that Zhou Wen had succeeded, the antelope turned around and ran. It ran much faster than him and overtook him in moments. Rumble. However, the brilliance kept targeting the antelope. Furthermore, it became more and more resplendent. It blasted the antelope's sanguine barrier. It kept crackling and fractures appeared. 
The brilliance was seeping in. Struck by such a heavy blow, blood spewed out of the antelope's vertical eye. Its eyeball was about to burst. F asterisk CKU. Do you really think I have nothing? The antelope cursed and suddenly opened its mouth to spit something out. At the same time, it shouted, Supreme Venerable Sovereign, be quick, as if this were a command. Seal. Upon saying the sutra, the antelope spat out another mouthful of blood on the thing it had spat out previously. It was a yellow paper talisman. After the blood spewed out, the yellow paper talisman emitted a sanguine glow. A blood-colored Tao talisman lit up like a lamp. The yellow paper talisman flew to the sanguine barrier and stuck to it like a seal. The sanguine barrier that was about to shatter stabilized and wasn't shattered by the brilliance. Zhou Wen was still reeling in astonishment at the might of the yellow paper talisman when the antelope suddenly rushed over. With a flick of its horn, it sent Zhou Wen and Yer flying. It leaped into the air and let Zhou Wen and Yer land on its back. In the next instant, it galloped forward without any regard for its life. Its speed was so fast that even Zhou Wen felt the scenery on both sides rapidly sweep backward, turning extremely blurry. Boom! An apocalyptic beam descended and struck the sanguine barrier. Even with the power of the yellow paper talisman, the sanguine barrier shattered as a terrifying beam of brilliance fell. Chapter 1198 Azure Realm Pui! 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 The antelope shouted as it spat out three mouthfuls of blood. The three mouthfuls of blood bloomed into three blood flowers that rose up and shielded their heads. Boom! The terrifying brilliance collided with the three blood flowers, producing a terrifying shockwave that sent the antelope, Zhou Wen, and company flying. The antelope's majestic body was already covered in blood patterns as its vertical eye surged with blood. It transformed into a sanguine beam in midair and carried Zhou Wen and Yer out of Mount Meru, heading straight for the exit of the Deva realm. Only then did the three blood flowers shatter. The brilliance continued chasing after the antelope and company, and just as it was about to catch up, the antelope had already rushed to the entrance of the Deva realm and leaped out. However, the brilliance couldn't leave the Deva realm. It couldn't chase after them. The antelope landed on the ground, and its forelimbs went limp as it collapsed. Zhou Wen landed on the ground and hurriedly turned to look at the antelope. He saw that it had already gotten up. The vertical eye on its forehead had vanished, but there was a bloody mark between its brows. Its body had returned to its normal antelope form. Even so, its body was still stained with blood, and blood was still seeping from the corner of its mouth. After spitting out a mouthful of blood, the antelope cursed. That bastard on Mount Meru made me lose a bet. When I recover, I'll definitely storm my way up Mount Meru and capture those turtles and let some blood spill. Zhou Wen looked at the antelope in shock. Its appearance overturned his former impression of it. This fellow used to be lazy and ignored anyone while sprawled on the sofa. Furthermore, it didn't speak at all. Occasionally, he would write a few words with its hooves, looking aloof. But now, the antelope was like a hooligan. It kept spewing out vulgarities. Um, do you need me to treat you? Zhou Wen asked as he looked at the antelope's body. Even Mount Laojuan's nine revolutions golden pill can't treat my injuries. Can you treat it? The antelope was clearly in a bad mood. It glared at Zhou Wen and spat in the direction of the Deva realm's door. Pui! You mentioned a bet. What bet was it? Zhou Wen asked curiously. The antelope rolled its eyes unhappily. It's none of your business. Stay out of it. After a pause, the antelope asked. How's Chick? Did it eat the third mustard fruit? Zhou Wen looked inside the chaos bead. He also wanted to know how Chick was. However, his expression immediately changed from the scene he saw. He scanned the chaos bead several times, but he didn't find Chick. Holy sh asterisk t, Chick is missing. Don't tell me it's still in the Deva realm? Zhou Wen was immediately alarmed. The antelope was very calm and after some thought it asked. Is the third mustard fruit still there? Zhou Wen was slightly taken aback as he somewhat understood the antelope's intentions. He hurriedly looked into the chaos bead and realized that the mustard fruit was indeed gone. The mustard fruit is gone, Zhou Wen said. Then it's fine. After some time, Chick will naturally complete its evolution and return. Ugh. As the antelope spoke, it suddenly spat out a mouthful of blood. Its body staggered and it nearly fell. It looked like it had suffered serious injuries. I have a dragon tiger pill essence here. It has a resurrective effect. Take a look and see if it's of any use. Seeing that the antelope's situation was terrible, Zhou Wen summoned the mythical dragon tiger pill essence. If it wasn't for the antelope going all out, they probably wouldn't have made it out alive. Although the dragon tiger pill essence was rare, there was still a chance of it dropping in the future. In such a dangerous place, having the antelope with such combat strength was far more useful than a pill essence. That low-grade item is useless to me. Keep it for yourself. The antelope glanced at the door of the Azura realm and continued. 
The person you are looking for is probably in the Azura realm. If you want to go, be careful. I'm injured, so I won't join you in the fun. The antelope was straightforward. With that said, it turned around and walked towards the bridge of helplessness to leave the strange six realms of rebirth and existence. As it walked, it cursed. What a huge loss. Sooner or later, I'll scan those be asterisk stars and hang them on a flagpole and use them as lanterns. As Joe and watched the antelope walk onto the bridge of helplessness, a thought suddenly flashed across his mind. Could it be that this fellow's bet was to not speak? Without any time to think, Zhou Wen gritted his teeth and turned to walk towards the door of Azura Realm. Since Ouyang Lan and company weren't in Deva Realm, the most likely possibility was the Azura Realm. The Azura Realm was fiendish, so it wasn't safer than the Deva Realm. It might even be more dangerous. Since there were calamity-grade existences in the Deva Realm, it was definitely the same for the Azura Realm. Zhou Wen only hoped that Sheng and company were fine. Taking a deep breath, Zhou Wen walked into the Azura Realm. The moment he entered, Zhou Wen was immediately given a fright. He saw a cold saber cleave down, almost hitting his face. Thankfully, Zhou Wen was prepared. The Azura Saber in his hand blocked the saber in front of him. Crack! The Azura Saber was transformed from Deva Azura. How could an ordinary weapon compare to a terror-grade weapon? When the blade touched the Azura Saber, it immediately snapped into two. The Azura Saber didn't stop there, as it split the saber-wielding figure into two. Only then did Zhou Wen identify the creature slashing at him a humanoid creature wearing a ghoul mask. It bared its muscular upper body and revealed a strange bird tattoo on its back. The strange bird symbol occupied almost all of his entire back and left shoulder. It looked like a peacock, but it was blood red. As for his lower body, he was wearing a black feathered piece of clothing that resembled a skirt and pants. It was difficult to tell what it was. Kill! A tsunami-like battle cry sounded, causing Zhou Wen's eardrums to buzz. Looking ahead, there were creatures everywhere on the dilapidated land that resembled an ancient battlefield. They held long sabers, and their eyes were filled with killing intent as they swept toward Zhou, one like a tidal wave. Zhou and brandished the Azura Saber, and instantly killed countless nearby creatures, but the other creatures continued charging forward fearlessly. Zhou and slew the aggressors as he advanced, hoping to find and Sheng and company. However, before long, he discovered a problem. The creatures he had killed came to life again. Even if their bodies were diced up, they could automatically reconnect. In the blink of an eye, they were no longer injured as they continued their charge. Strange? The Deva Azura is a terror-grade saber. It can slay even mythical, much less these creatures who don't even have combat strength at the mythical stage. Yet, they are completely fine. Something's amiss. Zhou Wen realized the problem as he rushed forward. And Sheng and company would probably be in trouble if they were entangled by these undying and indestructible monsters. Zhou Wen's number one desire was to find them quickly. With his previous experience, Zhou Wen didn't teleport. All he did was constantly charge across the land. With the Azura Saber in hand, the title-like creatures couldn't stop him. Chapter 1199 Saint When Ensheng and Ntianzue entered the Azura realm, their encounter was identical to Zhou Wen's. Under such circumstances, it was impossible for them to wait for Zhou Wen to enter and move together. All they could do was charge in. And Sheng suspected that Ouyang Lan and company had entered the Azura realm. It was so dangerous here that even if Ouyang Lan and company had really entered, they might have retreated. After all, such a battlefield was too dangerous. There were Azuras everywhere, giving one no time to rest. However, Antienzwa seemed to be certain that Ouyang Lan had taken this path. He kept rushing deeper into the Azura realm. Wearing his armor, Antienzwa was a terror-grade existence. He held a Gatling firearm in his hand, as he crazily swept at the ghoul like Azuras. Wherever he passed, large swaths of Azuras fell, their bodies peppered with holes. Unfortunately, the Azuras stood up again shortly after. Their bodies returned to their original states as they lunged forward again. Among the Azuras, there was no lack of mythical existences, but when faced with Ntianzwa's firepower, their bodies exploded before they could even charge forward. Occasionally, one or two would slip to the cracks, but they were killed by Ensheng. The two of them charged forward and after an unknown distance, they saw a strange altar in front of them. The altar was made of twelve black stone pillars, and on the stone pillar in the middle stood a flag. The flag fluttered in the wind, and there was an anchor symbol drawn on it. However, Antianzwa and Ensheng didn't look at the flag. Their eyes were focused on the stone pillars. A few people were tied to the different stone pillars. On one of the stone pillars was Ouyanglan. The people on the other stone pillars were the Sunset Army generals, who had followed Ouyanglan to Netherworld City. They were chained to the stone pillars. All of them were on their last breaths, and most of them had already fainted. When he saw the whip marks on Ouyanglan and company, and their ripped clothes with blood seeping out of the cracks, 
and Tianzhuo's eyes instantly turned cold. Gatling flames spewed out as the firepower seemed to become even more violent. It blasted the horde of Azuras ahead, turning them into seas. Even existences as powerful as mythical creatures were as weak as paper in the storm of bullets. And Tianzhuo flew up and wanted to rush up the altar to save Ouyang Lan and company. Suddenly, a cold beam of light appeared and shot towards in Tianzhuo's chest like a phantom. The cold beam was too fast and reached his heart in the blink of an eye. And Tianzhuo didn't have the time to adjust the Gatling gun's muzzle. Clang! The broadsword in Tianzhuo's other hand struck the cold beam like a ghost. Sparks flew, revealing the cold beam's true face, an arrow. As the tip of the arrow collided with the hilt, sparks flew everywhere. And Tianzhuo uncontrollably took a step back as the arrow deviated from its trajectory and hit the ground beside him. Boom! A huge crater was blasted into the ground, but the arrow vanished. And Tianzhuo frowned as he looked in the direction of the altar. He saw a person wearing purple armor and a ghoul mask standing on a stone pillar. He held a hunting bow in his left hand with his other palm open. The arrow that vanished appeared in his palm and was gently pinched by his fingers. You're finally here? I've been waiting for you for a long time. The person said indifferently as he looked at Ntianzua. Who are you? Ntianzua asked slowly as he stared at the person. The person had the aura of a guardian, but there was no inkling of a human aura. It was unknown if there was a human inside the armor. Saint! Xiao! The person said calmly. You are waiting for me. And Tianzhua didn't immediately rush towards the altar, but asked coldly. Yes! Xiao nodded slightly. You forced them here to lure me here? And Tianzhua continued asking. Xiao nodded before shaking his head. Partially. You need to die, likewise for them. Why? And Tianzhua wasn't outraged as he continued asking. Xiao didn't answer, but he suddenly laughed. People say that one should give birth to a child like in Tianzhua. From what I see today, you're nothing much. Your mother is hung here by me, her fate unknown, but you still have the mood to chat with me. And Tianzhua's expression didn't change as he looked at Xiao and said, Since you aren't willing to tell me, let me guess. Oh, please be my guest. Xiao looked at Tianzhua with interest. You want to kill us because we investigated the expedition team. And Tianzhua's tone wasn't a question, but an affirmative description. Is that all? Xiao didn't deny it. It wasn't difficult to guess this conclusion. You come from the Holy Land. And Tianzhua continued. Not bad. Xiao nodded in acknowledgement. He looked at Tianzhua with a smile and said, From the word saint I just mentioned, you can confirm that I'm from the Holy Land. This isn't difficult to guess. You come from the trajectory Holy Temple. And Tianzhua said again, unmoved. Xiao was somewhat surprised as he looked at Tianzhua and asked, How did you know that I came from the trajectory Holy Temple? It's not difficult to guess. Figure it out yourself. And Tianzhua said indifferently. Xiao laughed. You are indeed an interesting person. I can't bear to kill you. Unfortunately, you have to die here today. And Tianzhua will no longer exist in this world. With that said, Xiao raised the hunting bow in his hand and knocked the arrow. However, he wasn't aiming at Tianzhua, but Ouyang Lan on the stone pillar. It's best if you don't move. You should know that with my arrow speed, I can kill her before you arrive. If you want her to live for now, break an arm. Then, I can give you a chance to fight me. Chao said. You've already lost. You don't have the confidence to defeat me. And Tianzhua said, as he looked at Xiao. Xiao said indifferently. I just don't like trouble. Is that so? And Tianzhua's hand that was holding the sword suddenly moved. He slashed at his right arm, and severed the arm that was holding the gatling. Clang. The gatling along with the arm fell to the ground together, blood flowing everywhere. Overseer. And Shun was alarmed and furious. Do you still want my left arm? I can give it to you as well. And Tianzhua stopped in Sheng and said coldly. Zhao's eyes narrowed slightly as he slowly moved the bow in his hand away from Ouyang Lan and slowly aimed it at Tianzhua. He said coldly, And Tianzhua, overseer in Luoyang's god of war. You have the right to be arrogant, but you chose the wrong time and place to be arrogant. You even chose the wrong person. Many people have said such words to me, but they are all dead. And Tianzhua said indifferently, Chapter 1200 Xiao. Chapter 1200 Xiao. Is that so? Xiao pointed his bow and arrow at Tianzhua. The tip of the arrow gradually lit up like a light bulb. As time passed, the light on the tip of the arrow became brighter and more intense, like a sun. Sun true body, sun strafe art? And Tianzhua was slightly taken aback. The sun true body was nothing. One had a chance of obtaining it as long as one went to the sun god holy temple. However, according to what he knew, and Jing was the only one who knew the sun strafe art. He originally imagined that Zhou Wen had also practiced it, 
but he later realized that Zhou Wen wasn't practicing the sun strafe art. The crux of the matter was that the sun strafe art was essentially exclusive to the Yin family. It didn't seem like it should be passed on to outsiders. At the instant and Tianzhu fell into a daze, the arrow shot out. It was like the descent of a heavenly sun as it charged at Ntianzua with an extremely blazing power. Ntianzua only had one arm left as he held the broadsword. His eyes were firm and determined as he raised the sword and slashed at the sun. Boom! The sun like dazzling light was sliced apart by the broadsword. The blade collided with the tip of the arrow, and the terrifying light exploded like a hydrogen bomb. The surrounding azuras were instantly annihilated as Nsheng was sent flying by the shockwave. Thankfully, Although Sheng hadn't reached the terror grade, his skills and companion beasts were very good. He managed to leverage himself in the air as he traveled through it, all the while reducing the impact on his body. After the light faded, and Tianzhu stood in his spot with a broadsword in hand. A large area around him had turned into a deep pit as the wrecked Azuras squirmed and recovered. Where did you learn the sun strafe art? And Tianzhu asked as he stared at Xiao. Aren't you good at guessing? Guess, Xiao teased. And Tianzhu clearly wasn't a person, who liked to waste his breath. He slashed his broadsword at Xiao. Xiao stood motionlessly on the stone pillar until the broadsword was in front of him. Just as it was about to touch his hair, his body seemed to warp. Not only did he not retreat, but he charged at Ntianzua. As space distorted, the broadsword seemed to automatically avoid him as it brushed past him. Instead, Xiao used the hunting bow's bowstring as a blade to slash at Ntianzua's neck. The broadsword was clumsy to begin with, and the two of them were too close. And Tianzhua had lost an arm, so he had no time to block. Everyone believed that Tianzhua would dodge, but he didn't. At the instant the bowstring approached, he opened his mouth and bit the bowstring with his teeth, snapping it instantly. Almost at the same time he snapped the bowstring, and Tianzhua slashed horizontally at Xiao. Xiao did a twist and drew an arc. It didn't seem fast, but he dodged the sword's attack. The sword's trajectory seemed to be distorted. It should have been able to hit Xiao's blade, but it slashed past him. The Duga family's movement technique, and Tianzhua said as he slashed at Xiao again without stopping. Didn't you say that I came from the trajectory holy temple? What's so strange about me knowing the Duga family's movement techniques? Xiao's figure moved erratically as he dodged in Tianzhua's repeated attacks. And Tianzhua knew that the truth wasn't as Xiao said. The Duga family's movement technique was indeed from the trajectory holy temple, but what the trajectory holy temple had given them was only the tricks to the trajectory movement technique. The Duga family's present achievements were due to their continuous research on the trajectory movement technique. The Duga family's trajectory movement technique had already been imprinted with their own unique trademarks. Even if he had learned the trajectory movement technique from the trajectory holy temple, it would be impossible for it to be identical to the Duga family's. However, Zhao's trajectory movement technique clearly had the inklings of the Duga family's. It wasn't purely the trajectory movement technique. Your sword art isn't as arrogant as you. Xiao dodged a few strikes before finally counterattacking. As he dodged the broadsword, Frost appeared on the bow that had its string snapped. It swept at Ntianzua like an ice popsicle. The Frost battle aura of the ultimate family clan? Ntianzua's broadsword clashed with the bow. A cold aura immediately spread from the broadsword, forming first on half the blade. Ntianzua blasted the bow away, but Xiao used the bow like a staff in an extremely strange manner. Ntianzua's broadsword had no choice but to constantly clash with the bow. Every time they clashed, the frost battle aura on the bow was transmitted into the broadsword, and traveled through the broadsword up to Ntianzua's hand. His sword-wielding arm was already covered in frost that was spreading towards his body. Now, are you still sure that I'm from the trajectory holy temple? Xiao said as he attacked. Yes, Ntianzua answered very calmly, but his tone was very certain. He brandished his sword and sent Xiao retreating. The frost on his body instantly shattered and splattered everywhere. Ice shards fell to the ground but Ntianzua's body wasn't affected by the freezing. You are actually immune to the freezing forces of the frost battle aura. You shouldn't have revealed it so early. If you had waited a little longer and suddenly attacked when I was close, you would have been able to cause me some trouble, Xiao said as he retreated. There's no need. And Tianzua struck again and again. His sword art was domineering and orthodox. Ordinary people would have some evil aura when their sword art was so domineering. It was just like how Zhou Wen's transcendent flying immortal was domineering. But despite being domineering, Ntianzua's sword art gave off an upright feeling. It was truly odd. Zhao's movement technique was ever-changing, and his moves were varied. It appeared as though he could freely use the famous techniques of the six families, as if he had practiced them since he was young. Even Ntianzua was alarmed. He knew that this was definitely not in mime ability, but something he had truly cultivated with great effort. He could sense that something was different. 
Who is this fellow? And Tianzhuo was momentarily unable to gain the upper hand. And Sheng hadn't reached the terror grade yet. Although his talent was special, and he could vaguely see some shadows, blurry ones. It wasn't much different from not being able to see them. He only roughly knew where they were fighting. Gritting his teeth, and Sheng avoided the area where they were fighting and rushed towards the altar, hoping to save Ouyang Lan and company. Bam! And Sheng wanted to rush up the altar. There was clearly no obstruction, but when he rushed over, it was as though he had slammed into a wall. He bounced back, his face swollen and his nose bleeding. And Sheng summoned his companion beast and transformed it into a dagger that stabbed into the air. There was only a clang, and the hand holding the dagger went numb, the dagger failed to break through. He tried various methods to break through the invisible barrier, but none of them worked. Meanwhile, and Tianzhua and Xiao were fighting evenly. Neither of them had the absolute upper hand. And Tianzhua's figure suddenly froze as he pointed the broadsword at Xiao. Instantly, the entire world seemed to vanish, leaving only the broadsword in the world. Xiao was wearing a mask. It was unknown what expression he had, but his body stopped moving as he stared intently at Tianzhua. The purple armor on his body emitted a golden glow as the light of terror above his head condensed into a crown. Holy Emperor body? And Tianzhua recognized what it was and couldn't help but frown slightly. The Holy Emperor body originated from the Divine Emperor Holy Temple. It had always been the heritage of the Cape family. Your terror powers are similar to nomological powers. They can destroy all evil, but this power of imperial authority should be your nemesis, right? Xiao looked down at Antianzua like a supreme god emperor. 